Wind Ahoy, once again, my friends, it's your friend streamer, occasional lover, Sabaton Liam here, at you once again for some more D&D &D Thursday, how are we, my dear friends, we have Blue Collar Gamer in the chat, we have Pete Senior, we have Skelly Pete, and we have Big Dave, a big ahoy to you all, I hope you all doing fantastic on this day, evening, afternoon, morning or night, wherever you may be. I hope you're having a good one. <coughs> now, enough of this. Let's get to the cloud castle where we're um, currently on. And apparently we have three bosses to fight, so they should be fun. Let's go. wonder how long we can sneak in before they realize I'm listening to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's not crack. It's bone marrow. Yeah, Fine. Bone Those marrow. dragon yeah. bone marrow addicted kobolds. Yeah, see, you say that, it sounds far less likely to get banned. Those I crazy crackers are going to be in I every I haven't actually campaign. used them, but I did think they were funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they're just telling me about them on Tuesday. I'm just sitting there going, this is amazing, and yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, please tell me more. Oh. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, my God, he's back. He me gift. Right, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are continuing with the Cloud Castle Dungeon, Skyreach Castle. Is it really a dungeon if it's in the outdoors? Oh. It's a outdoor dungeon. It's an outdoor it's a dungeon. Oh, Such a nice day. Let's fight in the sun. Yep. Yes. I'm, I'm going to relative. bring up the map. Buy my map, buy my map, buy my map. Buy right my into map. it. Welcome the back to war. Are you right at dawn, last bitches? Session, you boarded Skyreach Castle so that you can fight and destroy the cloud giant Logothus. Oh, actually, first you... off, um, before we begin, yep. um, is there any chance um, take a rest because we didn't, we weren't able to last time? Uh, well, you can't take a rest right out here in the courtyard, so you're going to have to find a place no. to rest. You were starting uh, slightly damaged with the wounds from last time. Yes. We were going to heal, though, I believe. Like, I think it was. We were going to try and heal, but we weren't going to be able to rest. Because we did just assault a castle. Yes. Yep. They're on high uh, alert looking for us. <laughs> yes. And M1, yeah. you were 12 HP down. Well, uh, yeah, that's right. I was down to 1 HP. It wasn't. Uh, oh, you were wasn't... You, you're down 12. You've taken that's 12 okay. damage. Yes. Yeah. Alright, so here's the map. As you can see, the dungeon is quite large. This level, anyway. Yeah, this level of it. Yep. We're in the vast courtyard. Uh, just behind you, you have a tower with stairs leading down to the lower level. You have, uh, to the south, a series of small rooms. And ahead of you is a large mound. Uh, and upon this mound are two towers, and to the north side of it, a reasonably large brick building. Hmm. And we've still got a troll to take care of. <laughs> well, yes. He is over there manning this ballista. He hasn't yet seen you. I've got an idea. Okay. What is your idea, Dan? Um, well, Reaver's got... Ability. Yep. Ability, but I can also try to book my way... Hey, what's the intelligence level of a troll? Uh, these ogres oh, have God. a intelligence score of five. They're not very smart. So, that could play to our advantage. Is there a way that we could try and bullshit our way by saying that we're from the Orc Reconnaissance mission and we're here to investigate the castle? Maybe you may be summon... able to you may be able to bluff your way past the ogres, but there are other more intelligent inhabitants of the castle. Yeah. Well, well okay, okay, along those lines, um ages ago before we started streaming, didn't we manage to convince an owlbear to uh, fight on our behalf? Yeah. Uh, I yes. I think it was also starving. Oh, him in. That owl bear may be difficult to get here, though. No, no, I'm meaning do the same thing, but with the ogre. 
Oh yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. did. Yeah, you but an, our bear's thing is, if it's starving, it is very susceptible as long as you offer it food. We yes. didn't. We didn't uh, offer it food though. We did in actually. The same, in the same we basically let it out and say, about... if you find anyone, you can kill them and eat yeah. them. So. And the same session he's talking about, they did convince an ogre to rampage through the castle and oh, kill okay. all yeah. of the goblins that were there. This is before so, before the everything yeah. happened. This was way back in Lost Minds of Fandalva. Ah, oh, okay. Shall we yes. try and off our way? So how about you head along the north side of the courtyard, check out the uh, brick room up on the north, and slowly make your way towards the tower where the ogre is sure all right if we're gonna do this um since dan's got the cloak of many fashions now um do do something that either um an ogre is afraid of or that can they can ogres respect anything yes Right. Well, they're working for they're working for the cult and the cloud giant here, so they clearly have respect, or at least someone has authority over them. So, what what if Dan changed his cloak to be that of the cult? Yeah, and he took us work. through and pretended that we were his prisoners. Well, the, the orcs are getting, they're <laughs> just paid mercenaries, I, I believe. No, or, or paid mercenaries. Yeah. They, they may be paid mercenaries. They may be working out of their own free will. You are not sure yet. Either that, or, or I could do what um, I did with the group of bugbears and intimidate the living hell out of them so I can I command them. Yeah, yes. but, that, but with their low intelligence, they're willing to strike back and open more problems for us. I'm just going to try and bluff it, and you know, if worst comes to worst, dragonborn him and just... That might work. All right, so let's. Uh... I want to step over. Right. First of all, as you make your way across the across the courtyard towards the uh, small brick building on the northern side of the mound, I would like you all to make a uh, stealth check, please. Well. Uh, I wish you hadn't have asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you add for stealth again? Is that Dex? Uh, Dex, yes. Dex, okay, that's 15. I got an un 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 16 plus 4, so an unnatural 20. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I got an right, unnatural 20. Okay, and yep, that's going to be a pass for the group. Oh, thank God. Okay, so I can <laughs> make, make it Across the courtyard, without the ogre who is manning that ballista, noticing that you were there. Uh, Dan Cooper, at this point, would you like to change your cloak into the purple cloak worn by the Tiamat cultists? I would like it. A little bit tattered, but... Yep. You stand aside for a moment and you transform your cloak turns purple and begins to billow in the wind, and you enter the brick chamber. This unfurnished chamber contains nothing but a horde of ogres sleeping oh. on fire the fur. Oh! oh. Thank, oh. Well, thank heavens we rolled stealth. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's just great. Now we're going to get beaten in this room. Enter the chamber, and you see, within. No, don't like that. No, 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 no. 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 See, oh, five oh. ogres sleeping. You see five ogres uh, lying on uh, mattresses, on piles of fur on the floor. Uh, three of them appear to be asleep, however, two of them are awake, and as you enter the room, one of them sits up, and he reaches for his chain beside him, places his hands on it, and then he notices Dan Cooper in the purple cloak, and he curls up his face in confusion, and he simply says, Uh, uh, uh I'm gonna try to explain it to my block away fast. Oh, I, I am, I am the, the, the cultist. 
Uh, Nautius hey, Maximus. I'm going to die. <laughs> Uh, well, the coach. Okay, I'd like you to roll a persuade check, please. Alright. Part <coughs> oh, is, this is indoors, so I won't summon hey. Bluebeard. Actually. Yep, you can still summon Bluebeard. Uh, yeah. okay, that will be. Uh, yeah, you can do it with advantage, so roll again, please. Because of the cloak. You are wearing the cloak after all. Ooh. Uh, better. Oh, Ogre, <coughs> Ogre scratches his head and he doesn't raise his chain, he just sort of lifts it off the ground and as it rattles, some of the other ogres yawn and begin to stir. Oh no. Of, into bullshit, now's the time. <laughs> one of the other ogres scratches the back of his head and he turns towards the one ogre who accosted you and says, uh, why we wake up now? The other ogre turns to you and he says, Why they not have cloak? Uh, be, be, because... Uh, I, it's in the washing. Me no, we're hiring mercenaries. Please, I like that. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm Tim Matty and he's... No, no, uh, yeah, I yeah, you, you're not a hired mercenary, we are. Yeah. Well, you're hired on Mary. the cult request, I know. Yep. All right. Make another pers make another persuade check with advantage, please. Mm. Oh. Can I roll again? You got it. Yep. Oh, come on, come on. Wait. Do I roll again? Yep. Because you yep, have yep. advantage. Oh, That's thank Christ. The ogre looks at you and then he shrugs and he says. Ugh. Sound legit. And then he, um, and then he raises his hand to the other ogres, prompting them to sit back down on the piles of earth. And he looks at you and he says, Oh, so, boss finally bring more muscle. <laughs> he says, uh, he, Yeah, he does. He does. He's a. Uh... We, we're running a bit low on staff num numbers recently, so we've had to outsource. These are contractors from a uh, forgotten realm. Point to my comrades in arms. And, and he uh, places what? his chain down on the floor beside him, and then he takes a stretch on his pile of furs, and he says, Hmm, me was new once. Me know what it's like. Any tip you want me to give to newcomer? Uh, uh. Yes, what, whatever tips you may give us. We're, we're all open ears. We, we love everything. Just throw it at us. Okay, there seems Pretty to be a idiot. chance to get some information from the ogre. So what would you guys like mm. to ask specifically? Um, are, are there any um, secret doors we should know about? The ogre, the ogre says, hmm, outside in courtyard is secret door to get to lower level without going down tower. And he points out where this door is located. He says, go inside guest chamber and underneath one of the beds, it's trap door lead down to lower level. Hmm. He says, it too small for me or friends to fit inside, but you are tiny. <laughs> um, does he know the location of, um, where any other, others are stationed? Just so like, so we don't, don't run into them because we don't want to overcross where we've been stationed. Very well. He thinks for a moment he's trying to remember. Uh, where everyone else is stationed and then he says hmm you'll see tower outside with big <sighs> up he says that's boss Logothus throne room yeah. he, says, he says you he says 
You want to not go in throne room unless boss was, unless boss is protecting you. He get angry otherwise. Ah, uh, he likes us. That's who pays us. He says, he says also big mound outside with the large, with big tower on top. Inside, inside is where Captain Stillmarsh sleep during day. Oh. Only come out dark. Hmm. Still much, eh? Hey, who wants to go kidnap a captain? Like, thank you. Okay, no, didn't okay. Don't want to fight and kill Captain Stillmarsh. Rather than somebody else. He yeah. shrugged. You recognize Stillmarsh as being the name of the vampire. Mm-hmm. Oh. How, did, how could you not notice yeah. that was sleep during the day? If oh. they're ogres, they're not smart. Um, yeah. I'd like to point out that I never really took much note of the name other than the fact that it's a goddamn vampire. Yeah. So. <laughs> In the background, one of the other ogres pops up and raises his hand as if he's just thought of something. And excitedly, he bobs up and down. He says, oh, oh. Yes, you're in the back. He says, oh, oh, Lady Resmi orders downstairs on lower level. Mm. He says, we're not allowed to go near there. She said, next time we come there, she turn us into handbag. And, mm. uh... Sounds like a classy lady. Was it a good then, handbag, though? He then notices <coughs> Nargle. He then notices Nargle, and he... His mouth sort of falls agape, and he scratches his head, and he says, Huh? You look like Lady Resmere. Yes, I've got that from the townspeople. They said I mm. look a lot like her. He, he, gets laughs, he laughs nervously, he says, Ugh, just don't make me into a handbag and we all good. <laughs> hmm, so it seems like they fear me. With this, the uh, leader of the ogres, the one who first accosted you when you enter the room, stretches his arms and he says, Well, you have good time on first shift. We had shift last night. Gonna sleep rest of the day, and then he leans back on the pile of furs. As you are. Hmm? With this, you uh, with this, you bed the ogres. Good night or good day, and you exit the room. Okay. Uh, at this point, I um <clears throat> turn to Barnaby. Um, do you want to put a little sleep spell through the door so Just they to stay the asleep? Oh, yes, I'd be. He says, I'd be happy to ensure that they have a good night's sleep. And then Bartleby pushes the door open and he waves his hands. And you see one of the ogres look up and yawn and say, Look at little man. He waving his hand. Hello, little man. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. And then he just falls over backwards onto his pile of fur, and all five ogres begin snoring loudly. I I kind of kind of feel bad and don't want to kill any more of them. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for saying. Can we set their furs alight? Well, my orig my original plan was um to ask Bartleby if he still has the oil and um flood the room with it. And I was going to use produce flame. You yeah. ask um Bartleby if he still has the oil, and he says. Of course, chap! I've been carrying it around ever since we burnt out those poor bandits in their sleeping quarters. <laughs> now, before yeah, we set more. fire to it... Oh no, we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> no. I was going to say, I got four oil blasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, we should we should burn them. But, no. um... No. Also, if we did set it to fire, would that... Yeah, that cause would... anybody to Setting come it on to fire it. would probably... Well, the castle is up in the air. It has a barrier of wind surrounding it. The smell of smoke would probably carry quite quickly. In the yeah. meantime, these ogres are, one, uh, in an enchanted sleep, and two, they don't seem to realise that there is an alert on. Yeah, so leave them be. Those guys are fine. And apparently they yeah. fear me. Yes. And they have marked this tower with B for where Blagothus is stationed, and this one with V, that's where the vampire is. Well then. I think we should pay the little vampire a visit, since it's it's still the middle of the day, correct? It is still the yes. middle of the day. 
Yes, it is. There is also a smaller tower on the way there, which you could visit. I say we explore that first on our way to the vampire. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, does anyone need any, any dying need ooh, healing? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Actually, be uh, before... I would take healing. I'm 20 down. Before yeah. we do that, before we do that, can I send Glitterwind to uh, have a look at the top of that tower and uh, have a look at the structure of it and see if we can make any holes? Yeah, that'd be cool. You open your cloak and Glitterwind um, floats out. Yes? Yes, right. I was going to say, what... <laughs> If Glitterwing can tell us what the roof's made out of, if it's made of something like wood, I'll fly Bluebeard up and just rip the roof off. Yep. Glitterwing, Glitterwing, looks, Glitterwing up. looks up at the tower and she shouts, Oh, pretty! And then immediately <laughs> slapping her little wings. Oh, right, Glitterwing for stealth. Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not the best idea, but... <laughs> You know, cute it's enough all the same. It's fine. It's small enough and, you know, it's small enough that it probably won't get noticed. Little wings, little wings take her to the top of the tower where she circles the, uh, circles the glowing blue, uh, pointed roof. And she looks at it and circles it a couple times and then zooms back down towards you, shouting, Ice! Ice! Baby? Ice? Made out of ice. Made out of ice, eh? Ice? You look around and notice that several of the towers appear to have similarly blue glowing roofs, which, if Glitterwing is correct, means they are made out of uh, ice. Huh. Huh. A magical ice? I mean, you have to... Yeah, can we... Um, are, are we able to see the you tops of the tower? You would assume it... Yes. Uh. You would assume that... Uh, you would assume it's definitely magical ice, as it's holding perfectly in place, and it would you wouldn't normally use ice as a construction material. Um, can so we you're use? Basically saying, wait, so you're basically saying that uh, punching a hole in it's not gonna be. Uh, oh, easy. that might be. That might be possible. It. Uh, it's. Is it just it enchanted not to melt, or is it enchanted not to break? Uh. You have no way of telling from okay. here, but you can tell it's enchanted, uh, at least to some degree, at least to so, hold its I was going to say, can we use detect magic to check, yeah. or...? Uh, yes. Would someone like to cast... Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, Alright, you right. cast detect magic. Uh, that's a 17. Yep. Okay. So you detect that, uh, there is a field of, uh, transmutation magic around the tower not just this tower but a field of transmutation magic around the castle in general uh and at this bartleby uh says i can make sense of that and he immediately begins to do an arcana check oh good good it'd be really fun if we could accidentally eliminate one of the bosses before we can get a chance to fight because that'd just be hilarious Bartleby stands up on Nargle's shoulder and he raises his hand towards the tower and he clasps his fingers together as if he's feeling the air and he says, Hmm, well, I do believe that it is a uh, quite normal ice, but it is enchanted to hold the shape of the roof, meaning that we could probably punch our way through it, but we have only a short amount of time to get through before the uh, roof reforms. Uh, now then, so can we melt it? Who's thinking of a dive bomb? I'm just more thinking of melting it. Well, um, Bluebeard would be able to carry the majority of us. Yeah, he just oh. probably wouldn't be able to carry Nargle. But he could carry Dan Cooper, uh, Reaver, and uh, Angus, and Bartleby if he gets off Nargle's shoulder. There is a path leading up to the tower on the side of the mound, so maybe... Uh, oh, we're not looking at the boss's tower, we're looking at the... Vampires. Tower. Yeah. Oh, oh you okay. The oh, no, I thought you sorry. were exploring yeah, the smaller point, tower. We're working on, if it's the middle of the day, we smash that bloody roof, then all of a sudden he's sitting in broad daylight yeah. with nowhere to go. Yeah, that's well, what I was thinking of, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> both the vampire's tower, marked with a V, and this yep. smaller tower, are both <laughs> appear to have the ice... Roof, you're saying if we do smash it, it will reform. It will. 
Mm. Meaning you'll be able to dive vomit with uh, Bluebeard, but uh, Nargul will probably have to run up the path and go into the tower through the door. Interesting. So if we got. How do we feel that this is a plan? Hmm. So you're going straight to the vampire tower. Before then, before then, I do like Molo's idea of having a look at the little tower that the we're in front tower. of. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right. So yeah, I was this... I was talking about the big tower after we looked at ah, the little yeah, tower. Yeah. But so do yeah. you want to oh, okay, we'll... dive on this smaller tower, or do you just want to make your way up? Oh. Maybe, uh, maybe I. I... Yeah, I don't think we'll dive bomb the little tower because no, we if we make a commotion, that. that'll be giving away our position even more. Yeah. And we want to use that element of surprise. Yeah, we, we want to literally have the vampire off guard when we go to punch yeah. the shit out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, my vote for the little tower would be just to go up and just see if we can door. discern yeah. anything through the door. Yeah. You... Yep. Alright, so you make your way up the path. I like how uh, we're now, only now deciding to go stealth after how we basically got here in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only ones who knew that you arrived were ogres. And... Yeah. Right. Basically, yeah, yeah. what we've done is blown up the wall with dynamite, and now we're tiptoeing away from the blasted open wall. Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> Good times. Okay, this tower of pale blue ice is the colour of the sky on a winter's day. Its few windows shimmer like mirrored glass or crystal. The door, as you try it, appears to be locked tight. However, uh, if you would like to have Bartleby levitate slightly up and look through one of the windows, he may do that. Yes. I was going to say, Fairland, we could always get Reaver to try and yep, get in the there, lock. but that works too. Uh, Bartleby snaps his fingers and he begins to levitate off Nargul's shoulder and he presses his face up against one of the windows. Um, <laughs> and you see him you see him press up against one of the windows and he immediately jumps back shouting, Ouch! Cold, 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 cold! And then he leans in his face again, making sure not to touch the glass this time. And he he says he says, Hmm, well, it appears uh Inside, there is, hmm, well, nothing, actually. It appears to be almost completely bare. There's no furniture inside, oh, oh, but there are carvings all over the walls. Oh. I can't read any of them through the window, but, hmm, very interesting. Mm. I don't like that. A small, then. a small thump he lands back on Nargle's shoulder. Yeah, there's nothing of like particular note. Maybe we leave that for now. Then. All right, and um, with uh, the vampire, this is what I'm thinking. We send mm. send me in first because it's during the day. Hopefully he's sleeping alone. I sneak in, and hope if he's in a coffin, I open it. Then I send Glitterwind to give you a sign to dive bomb that area. Hmm. Hmm. You do not wish to pick the lock on this small tower? Um, that, that could be bad. I'm not sure. God damn, Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, I don't know. If it's good or... I, my vote would be get Reva to pick the lock and see what happens. Because well, it might just be there to keep the ogres out so that they don't destroy right. the carvings. Yes. But that that's my vote. But... Mm-hmm. Actually, um, yeah. oh, can, can someone do detect magic? I mean, um... No, um, not um, crap. See if it's trapped. Yeah. Uh, Angus, could you do a perception check, please? Uh, it's uh, 18. The door does not appear to be trapped. It's merely locked with a quite uh, well-constructed lock, presumably to keep uh, the ogres out. Seems safe enough. Yeah, the problem is... I'm remembering watching the um, video of when you went to the altar, and Dale was hinting at stuff. Yep. <laughs> it turned out to be bad anyway, and yeah, seeing as this yeah. is a big thing. Yeah. yeah. You never know. 
Oh, Look, so my vote. My vote is still get Reva to unlock it. Yeah, that's we'll still that. my vote. You hear a female voice whisper, "Leave it to me," and then the lock on the door begins to jiggle as if being uh, manipulated by an unseen force. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. Mm, probably. <laughs> There's a loud click, and then the door, the large wooden door, is pushed slightly ajar. You may enter the tower if you wish. Mm, I'm not oh, going to enter. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll walk in first. <laughs> All right, Milo, Milo enters on his own, and Cooper decides to follow along. Oh Milo yeah, then... and one's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He and said gone. goodbye in the chat because yeah, no one. Only yeah. Time to. <laughs> well, because and I've Cooper... got the screen up, I can't see the chat. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah same. Right. Dan Cooper follows you into the tower. The tower interior is a hollow cylinder about 90 feet high without any stairs or ladders to reach the top. As Bartleby reported, the room itself is completely bare <coughs> save for uh, the stone walls which are covered in a series of carvings, a mixture of runes written in both Dwarvish and Giant. I can read that. I can read giant. Yes, yeah. you can. I mean, I can read the dwarven ones, but you're gonna have to convince me of what's in there before I take a look. Yeah, that looks yeah. like a squiggly line. That's a squiggly <laughs> line. I, like I will read the line. giant stuff. <laughs> All right, I'd like you to make an intelligence check, please. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's not con, so you're fine. Uh, that's a fourteen. Ooh. You read all of the runes written in giant, and you don't read all of them because there's just so many, but you pick a couple runes here and there and read them out, and they all appear to be variations of the giant word for uh, memorial or cemetery, oh. with several, several variations of the phrase rest in peace. And my beloved. Okay, so oh, this is actually just a memorial wall then. Oh, okay. Can so I do see... a quick check and see if I can find Look Officer's son's name mm. in there? See if he's. Uh, yes, I would What's like you to do an investigation if, check. If it's please. not nefarious, I might come in and look at the uh, dwarven ones. Yep. Oh, no, that's a 19. Oh, nice. So, Milo, you look around and. Uh, you do not see, uh, you do not see the name of Blagothus's son, Eisnor, on the wall. In fact, in amongst all of the carvings, you only see one word, Esclorota. What was it, Esclorota? Yes. Meanwhile, Angus, I'd like you to do uh, an intelligence check, please. Alright. Oh, that's an at 20. You read all, of the, <laughs> read all of the dwarven runes, and while some of them appear to be variations of the same phrases, uh, cemetery, memorial, rest in peace, and my beloved, there are a number of them that appear to simply be uh, the signatures of dwarven artificers and engineers, oh. uh, indicating that some sort of enchantment or mechanism was placed within this room. Oh no, oh. this is the burial ground of his wife, isn't it? Yep. Oh, we should can I... not be in here. Yeah, can I um, use my knowledge of giant languages to know Escalado is a female name? Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure yes. that was his yes. wife. It is? Oh, okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty well, sure that was where... his... We have heard. It's... Oh, you have heard of it? I'm not 100% okay. certain with giants, but after thinking about it for a few seconds, uh, you're aware that Esclarotta is typically a female name, and yeah. as such, it can only be his wife or his daughter. Yeah, we probably uh, should not. Yeah, be we. Here. I walk out and leave the place in peace. Yeah, so I don't same, want to same. desecrate the yeah. yep. tomb of the dead. As, as curious as I am about the whole mechanism thing, I'm, I'm not touching shit. Uh, oh, something touch we it. can explore later. Yep. When we It'll have ownership later. of the yeah. island. Yep. You close the doors behind you and quietly descend the mound. And now you're going to the vampire castle. Uh, the vampire yeah, tower. Does anyone want healing before we get going? Uh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. I will definitely take healing. I'm 21 points down, so. 
Alrighty then, in that case I shall go and punch out a regular old... Uh, big money, big money, big money! I was gonna say, I get my uh, usual... Well, I have saved uh, spells for healing. So might as well punch out one of our uh, prayer of healing as I got stored up. Yep! I love this ring of spell storing. <laughs> Okay, twelve, six. That's uh, eighteen HP. That's eighteen HP. Uh, thank you for putting me up to full health. You're 52. welcome. I'm only three health down, so I'm happy with that. I can oh my god, you're gonna die! I'm yep. As you make like, your, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to you make your way health, but that's because you know, tanky yeah, is fine. You... Yes. <laughs> As you make your way around the mound towards the other tower, you notice. Uh, just to the south, a series of room, a series of doors leading to smaller, apparently guest rooms of some kind. Do you wish to check these out on the way? What what, what what time? Uh, what time is it? Yeah, what uh, time of the day is it? Just early to mid afternoon by this point. All right, so we might have time. Looking yeah. through the doors would only take five minutes. I was gonna say, yeah, I'd, really, I'd, I'd really rather take the vampire down while we still have daylight to work with. That is true, mm. but if we take out the vampire, is that gonna raise alarms? Hmm, you don't know. You know what? Fuck it, take out the vampire. Alright. Decide to move on past the uh, guest rooms for now. Oh, uh, Dale, just before I forget, uh, what health did you give Bluebeard? Uh, he's just got the standard hmm. Wibben health. Wibben. Yeah, but um, when you rolled him, did you roll health uh, for him? I didn't actually roll him. I just gave him the just number before the dice. Yeah. The oh, so 110? Rate. Okay, cool. All right. As you round the uh, side of the... As you round the side of the tower, oh, I would like you to make stealth checks, please. Uh... Then... Oof, that uh, is a... Did you, what's my dex at? Uh, this would be great if I could roll higher than a 10. Yeah, yeah. I rolled 14. That's a 15 yep. for me. Hey. Alright. Mm -hmm. Oh, because we're trying to get past the giant in the yep. tower. And that's... Uh, the giant. Uh, yep, the ogre here is at yeah. the top of the tower. Yeah. That's yeah, a ogre. pass for the group. Oh, thank God. Oh, Outstanding. Yeah. There we go with the dime bomb plan. All right. Yes. Here we are. Yeah. But, but we'll get the uh, to the door. All right. And um, we'll go first. We can mount Bluebeard and hover so that we can quickly get to the air. I would say. Yeah. Uh, um, just get out Glitterwin and um, t tell Glitterwin to follow me. And when I say, um, go to the others and dive bomb. She shouts. Yeah! And then flaps behind you. As you, <laughs> as you make your way up the path. Unacceptable! <laughs> Does she understand the word stealth? Is that my nope. question. That is, <laughs> that is her inside voice. Oh god. <laughs> I don't have an inside voice. I'm sorry, I have problems controlling the volume of my voice! <laughs> so, yep. Uh, Nargle, you make your way up to the door <coughs> at the base of the tower, and as you go to press against the door, it doesn't budge. It appears it has been barred or blocked from the other side. Wild shape into a spider. Yep. Wild shape into a spider, making you small enough to duck under the uh, crack of the door. However, Glitter Glitterwing will not be able to get inside with you. Cut. Shit. Oh. Can't can't glitter when I'm blinking, re-blink into existence. Actually, let me see what a pseudo dragon can do. It can do Maybe stuff like and things. May be able to do that. A dragon. Let's see. If she can blink, then yes, she can follow you in. Just checking. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, what? What? Um. Late Lady Mermelade in Twitch. Um, she says she feels kin with the loud character, aka Glowin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, no, she cannot link out of existence. She can go invisible, but she cannot follow you. Mm. Cannot get through solid objects. So All right. No, okay. Okay. Out. Got a plan. So anyway, uh, go go under the door. Yep. Quickly sneak under the door. Ah. 
and just have a look around. Uh, first, before yes. you enter, yes, uh, I will say what you see about the tower because I just described the door. The ancient tower before you appears to be in disrepair. The windows have been sealed shut with ice, and cracks have formed in the walls and rooftop. A balcony of sculpted ice hangs on one side of the tower, 75 feet above. There is a balcony on the other side of the tower. You can see there is another door attached to the balcony. So before you wild shape into a spider and make your way through the door in the base, there is another door attached to the balcony. Huh. All right. Let's have a look at that other door then. Uh, the balcony 75 feet up. So you have, you'll have to, you probably have no way of getting to it. Um, it can I climb up as a spider? Thing. Oh yeah, you can do that, yes. So, now it's quite cold though, I would like you to make a oh. strength climbing check. A with strength. advantage because you have the uh, gloves. Oh yes. Uh, two, two, two. Oh, thank God that's advantage because that's an eight. <laughs> that's an 18, but the first one I rolled was a three. <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. You climb up the side of the tower streaked with ice, 75 feet up until you are on the icy balcony. <clears throat> this door, as you this door, uh, as you approach it, appears to be blowing slightly in the wind. Meaning that it is almost certainly unlocked. Hmm. So you could very quietly bring in glitter wing? Mm -hmm. Yes, I could. There is nothing quiet about Glitterwing. <laughs> well, I mean, you could bring her in quietly, whether yes. she stays quiet is another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, well, I'll do that then. Right. Are you still going to remain in spider form as you enter? Yeah. Yes, for the meantime, yes. Okay, you scurry under the door into the room inside, and behind you going to do a stealth check for Glitterwing. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> well, sure, you hear the door slowly creak, and then you see the rainbow Glitterwing glitter into the room, looking around, her eyes bursting with curiosity, but thankfully <sighs> not saying anything. <laughs> all, all you hear is... <laughs> <laughs> just like physically having her mouth just like biting her tongue, just like... <laughs> inside the tower you see the, <laughs> yes inside the tower you see that the tower once contained four levels each with 20 each 20 feet above one another however all but the highest level have had their floors and ceilings shattered and the staircase that once curled up the inside of the tower connecting its various levels has been shattered the ground floor is now packed with icy debris to a depth of 20 feet, and this is what is preventing the door at the base from being open. Oh. Yeah. The upper level itself uh, contains almost nothing of note save for a save for a bookshelf, uh, save for a bookshelf filled with a series of colourful tomes. Uh, near it, a wooden trunk, and in the centre of the room, a large stone sarcophagus surrounded by four smaller coffins. Oh, jeez, okay, there's more. Oh, of course there's smaller Okay, ones. okay. Uh, one, well, one, one fight. No. first wild shape back into um, my normal Dragon Ball born self. Yep, wild shape back into Nargle form. You feel the, uh, you feel the ground sort of sink under your weight as you transform back into yourself. This tower is in severe need of repair. Yeah, well, we're about to give it a nice little facelift. Okay, so <laughs> I, I open up the door that's already open to let the sun through. Yep. Push it open and the rays of the sun uh, enter and they illuminate the room. Not fully, but enough to bother a vampire. However, there is no activity from the coffins. Good. Good. Okay. Coffins would be closed, so... Yes, uh, they are closed. Uh, Alright, uh, so... Okay, I just gotta mute, mute the phone. So I say to Glitterwin, go out to the others, and on the count of five, 
tell them to dive bomb the tower. Yeah, you might need to find somewhere to move to to keep yourself safe from this. Yeah, you might probably want to be standing in the doorway. Glitterwing nods and then she darts through the open door and you might, you yeah, I was gonna say maybe from... Nuggle should get on the balcony just for safety. No, no. First, yeah. I'm gonna boot open the uh, yeah. the coffin, Thanks. then then yeah. leg it. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, you Fair hear enough. Glitterwing. You hear Glitterwing's voice from halfway down the tower. Get ready and dive, baby! Dive! <laughs> 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 And then Nargul, uh, so you're going to open the stone coffin in the middle? Yep, just um, sort of like boot it open and then leg it. Yep. Okay. Boot open the middle coffin and inside is Lord Stillmarsh. As soon as you open the coffin, his eyes flicker open. And yes. he leaps out of the coffin at you. Anytime, and guys! Getting an attack as a reaction oh, before he shit. before the sunlight touches him. <coughs> Alright, I will roll for him. Please not think this might through. So that's the first nine. Okay. Alright, here comes the attack. Oh, no. oh, right, he okay. misses you once, but he hits you with one of his bites. He leaps out of the coffin and wraps his arms around you and sinks his fangs into your neck. Yeah. You take... Someone's rolling con saves. One. At least it's him and not me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You've already been through this once. Take uh, four points of piercing damage. And then you take 10 points of necrotic damage. Oh, wow. 14 all up. 14 oh, all up. And I would like you to make a constitution save, please. No, oh, what's my co That is a 17. Oh. 17. Okay, you pass. All right. Then. As he opens his mouth to bite again, you <clears> notice <throat> one of the rays of sunlight touch his face and there's immediately a hissing noise as his skin begins to smoke. He begins to shout, Aah! and lets go of you, recoiling back in, recoiling away in fear and pain, and he takes 20 points of radiant. Oh, oh, oh yeah. and that's just from a ray. Yep. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I just, um, Roll back yeah. back to the balcony. Roll back out onto the balcony, and as you do, as you dun, do, the dun, other dun, four, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> as you do, you hear the crack of wood as the other four coffins begin to creak open, Anytime revealing form <laughs> within. Anytime, guys. <laughs> All right. Yep. Meanwhile. The rest of you have climbed aboard Glitter- have climbed aboard, uh... Climbed aboard Bluebeard. Glitter Wings. That would be a climbed sight. Aboard... <laughs> You've climbed aboard Bluebeard on Glitterwing's instruction, and you begin to hover above the mound towards the tower. You command Bluebeard to dive from the roof, and he shouts, Dive! Arr! Dive! Dive! <laughs> he shouts, Arr! Blow that vessel out of the water! <laughs> Says, let's blow that ship out of the water. Mm -hmm. And he begins to swoop down toward the castle. Uh, I would like Milo to do a strength check for Bluebeard, please. Okay, what is his strength modifier? Uh, that's a plus four. Oh, Missy! Yep. Get down! Okay, oh, come on. Is there any, is there any time? That's 21. Oh, damn. Rolled a 17 plus 4, so. Yep. And one. bears his claws and you brace yourselves as. Smash! He begins to pound into the ice, ripping piles off the roof. And then he flaps his wings and. Smash! You bore through it into the tower within. Can I try and guide him to land on one of the coffins that are opening up? 
Uh, yes, you can, but first, <laughs> I would like uh, you and Angus to make on check. On saves, please. Oh, fuck. On saves. You are bursting through a. Uh, that makes sense. Well, that's, that's a 21 for me. Oh, thank God, that's a 19. Oh, hey. oh 20, actually, yeah. because I get plus one because of my cloak. I keep forgetting Ooh, that's that. That's a fail for Bartleby Whoops. and a fail for Reaver, but a pass Whoops. for Dan Cooper. <laughs> Whoopsie days. Hey. Uh, you t take, if you pass, you take two points of damage. Uh, Reaver and Bartleby each take four points of damage as you burst through the roof. Yeah, been worse. Okay. Which coffin would you like Bluebeard to land upon? Um, any, as long as I'm s keeping one vampire out of the fight for now, at least. Like, all right. I mean, if um, the sun's in. Because are they opening up or not? Yeah, they've yeah. all opened yeah, up. Yeah, opened up. Yeah, opened, opened up. up. I say just let them burn, honestly. If it's yeah. Are you remaining on Bluebeard's? Are you remaining mounted on Bluebeard while he does this? I am. Yes. Okay. Uh, if the sun's gonna hit them all, though, then. Because I was thinking that the coffins were still opening as we were coming through, but if they're open, yeah, they're then open. They're open and I'll... Some will... yeah. Okay, well you I'll just. You can still land one of them. You can still land one of them. Slam the vampire back in the coffin, and the blue beard swoops down, and he. Yeah, I might land, land on a coffin. You might be able to get information. Lands on top of one of the vampire spawns coffins. I would like you to again do a strength check for blue beard. God damn, that's a nine. <laughs> it, it landed like it was gonna be 13, and then my dice was like, no, nope. and landed no. on five. Okay, so Bluebeard <laughs> attempts to cram the coffin shut. However, the vampire spawn leaps forward, smashing the coffin lid and, and coming to it land on its feet inside Bluebeard. Oh well. Okay, it was I worth a try. Move party icon out of the way and move the rest of your icons into the room. Yep. I okay. stay on Bluebeard. Yes. So how much sun um, was shining down after that? Uh, there will be enough. When they start their turns, they're going to take damage. Okay, okay. okay. So Milo, you are here. Still there. 20 point, points of radiant damage. Woof. Okay, that's um, a lot worse. I'm just going to put my initiative in the chat because I just got to go do something real quick unfortunately like, uh, I was oh, like initiative. Yep. Yep. uh that is my initiative is three isn't it I got 16 yep three that is 17 three, 17 okay let's see and this 17 Nagul 17 I know what must be done I know what must be done <laughs> Alright, I will roll for the others. Just gonna finish placing the tokens. And finally, Reaver, who is stealth. We'll roll a stealth check for Reaver to ensure that she is able to remain stealth. Oh, shit. I realized something I should have done before we uh, started this fight. What? Yep. I was gonna ask Nagel to take his cloak off. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm before you, so I can still do that. Let's see. Enemy gets 18. Damn it. Bartleby gets 8. The enemy was supposed to go last. Kitty <laughs> gets 20. And M2 gets 14. Alright. Uh, M1 uh, gets 14. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. They are. You did kind of surprise them, so I'm going to get roll again for them with this advantage. And they no, get no. Uh, 15. Okay. So they Excellent. went a bit down. All right. Yeah, First so. up, we have uh, Reaver. Uh, Reaver so immediately, as much as we do. Yes, Reaver immediately makes her way into the center of the tower, where she sneak <coughs> attacks Stillmarsh. Okay, I'm back. Did I miss anything? No, yeah, we're just we're starting. starting. Okay, cool. And thankfully, because we surprised them, they got disadvantage on their um initiative so they're further down the order Woo uh, and on oh, right. on, she stabs out with her rapier and still marsh appears to see it coming he moves his head to the side and she misses oh no he then must roll stealth again to remain in stealth damn 
and she remained. Ah, uh, she got well. Ah, uh, and with this, he knows where she is. She is no longer in stealth. Poop. Okay. Raver's stealth is broken. Okay, next up we have Nargle. Your turn. All right. Uh, well, I guess for my first first action to take off my cloak and many eyes. Yep. And um. Sure. Would any more sunlight be let in the room if I rip the door off the hinges? Perhaps you could try and see. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Right, make an athletics check, please. Uh, what's my athletics at? Oh yeah, that's plus nine, so that is nineteen. You <laughs> grab the door and you you hack at it with your axe and then place your hands on it and pull. And with a grunt of exertion, you rip it off its hinges and hurl it Strong off boy. the balcony into the courtyard Much below. Much drunk. More sunlight begins to filter into the room. And that's Nargle's turn. Okay. My turn? Uh, next, uh, next up, we have... Uh, yes, Angus. Uh, <laughs> I've been waiting for this since the day I got it. Okay. <laughs> I have something very special for you, lads. I pull out my scroll of sunburst. <laughs> Ooh. Right. I'll sunburst. I'll bring it up in the chat. Yes, please do. Hi. Okay. The second I got my hands on this, I knew exactly when and where I was going to use it. All right. I would like uh, Remy and Nargul to please make constitution saves. Mate, I, I, I'm out outside, so would it really yeah, hurt me? Feet zone. Oh, okay. Feet. Oh, I yep. in oh, what was it? Constitution? Okay. Con? Yeah. Uh, that that's, a fail. that's a fail from Reaver and Bartle. 17 <laughs> plus... Uh, 21. 21. Shit, where's my con? Um... I was gonna say 2 18, 19. 19. pays off, it's fine. I believe you have to make one too, Angus, because you're still in the area. That seems fair. That's a 15. All right. Let's roll for the vamps. 15's plus. They're all good. Yay. I have 20. Okay. Phil uh, Marsh has passed. All of this form have not. Well. You may roll your damage. Well, either way, uh, Phil Marsh is still taking 12d6 damage. The rest are taking 24. Oof. Yes. Oof. So he's about right. to get all right, I'm gonna have to do this. Funnily enough, I'm gonna have to do this in the actual chat because I do not own twelve. You know, twelve D six. Twelve D six. If yes. my <laughs> dice would turn yeah. up, I, I do. would. I do. I, say, I think I'm up to nine at the moment. <laughs> Let the sunlight in, bitches. Ooh, thirty six. Right, thirty six. Okay. 30, sunlight filters through the room. Still marsh and like seventy two for everything else. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, for the uh, vampires anyway. Well, actually, it's 12d6 and half. So, still Marsh actually takes uh, 18 and everyone yeah, else... Yeah, but he's also a vampire, so he'd take... Oh, yes, that's right, radius, yes. So, yes, still going about that. Don't, Don't worry, I did the math. Light filters through the room and you hear... You hear five voices in unison shriek and hiss pain. <laughs> Okay, however, Bartle and Reaver each also take 32 points of radiance. Oh. Well, and I noticed that was going to be a backfire. I was kind of hoping this would be like a one-shot deal. <laughs> yep. Did I at least uh, kill the other, vamp the other vampire spawn? You haven't killed them, but you've it severely... took like 72 health. How much yeah, do they but have? They, have, they have 82 health. Oh, uh, shit. And... Well, I have possibly... <coughs> <coughs> and <laughs> then... Uh, everyone who passed, you take 18 points of damage. You are not oh. right. Uh, that's 40, 32. Oh, I'm back down to uh, less than when I got healed. How much was it again? Right. Uh, 18 points 18. of radiant damage. All right. Sorry, uh, I thought, I really, I was kind of gunning for this to be like a <laughs> straight up, like... Hail shot. Mary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, Did Bluebeard have the, to make a save? Uh, Bluebeard, uh, you, you're saving for him because you're on him. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, it's now the enemy's turn. 
Sorry. Okay. The first vampire spawn rushes forwards. Wait, and that's damaged by the sunlight? Just remember they're uh, all blinded. At the end of their turn, they're going to be oh. damaged by the sunlight. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <sighs> they're also blind. All the spawns yes. are blinded anyway. Uh, and this spawn decides to attack... Uh, mm, decides to attack Milo. I'll be right back. Ooh. I'm sorry. With, it, <laughs> with its first attack, it's going to attack with its claws. At disadvantage. It is blinded. And it misses with its claws attack. It then hisses at you and leaps at you, its teeth gnashing. <laughs> And it misses. Oh yay! Hey, critical misses. Yes, it does critical miss. Oh, it means bites itself. <laughs> flies across the room. Flies outside. Oh, <laughs> roll it. I'm gonna roll it. Pretty cool. All right, get a successful attack off on an adjacent character. Oh damn! So oh, oh poor Angus. Attack means it attacks Angus. But Angus is taking uh one, two, three, plus two D6. Okay, Angus is taking He's taking four points of piercing damage. Oh, plus that's just nine points of necrotic damage and Angus you need to make a constant save. No, that's an that unnatural 20. Yep, so you nice. pass. Okay. The second vampire spawn is right next to Dan Cooper. It's blinded. It's the first that goes in with... Dan Cooper dodges out of the way as the vampire misses and attempts to bite him. And again, he ducks as the vampire bites the air and leaps over him. Okay, the third uh, vampire spawn moves towards Reva. Oh no. Oh no, she she's um locked in. Meanwhile, the fourth one goes in and flanks her. Shit. Meaning they no longer attack with advantage. Okay, the first one goes with its claw attack. Oh. And I it, hits have Reva. Over here. it hits Reva. Uh oh, hitting. Dang. Her for he takes nine points of piercing damage, I and the second one mistake. goes in with his claws, <laughs> and oh, it hits. Man. Going to attempt to dodge this attack with her uncanny dodge. He is unable to dodge. And she takes. Another oh, eight shit. points of slashing damage, and then both of the vampires go in, gnashing their teeth. I'm so sorry. And they both hit her. I'm so eight. sorry. Six. Six. Seventeen points of piercing damage, and ten points of necrotic damage. Oh. And now she I'm has sorry. to make death. Save. I'm so sorry. This is her death save. Okay. It wow. is still Marsh's turn. For his I first. Think... For his Wait, first... don't the other vampire spawns take. Uh... Are they well, taking at the, some end of... at the end of the enemy's turn, I'm going to do it for all of them. Boo. Oh. <laughs> well, they can't do anything else, so. Okay. First. He uh, he doesn't regain, his regeneration no longer works as he is in the sunlight, so he doesn't recover any health. Oh, thank God. For his first attack, he turns towards the balcony where he sees Nargle and he begins to speak to Nargle, saying, Oh, you no, 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 no. Turn, turn towards them. You know that the rest of them, the rest of them look down upon you. The gnome calls you a steed, and the dwarf treats you as a child. Why not strike out at them? Let out your inner feelings, Nargle. I want you to make a wisdom save, please. Shit. 
Shit, I, I wish you'd had mindless rage. Yeah. Rage. Yeah, but he didn't rage. Oh, yeah, I'm not rage, raging. Well, we're not raging, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, you're lucky. That's a 20, a non nat 20. All right. You managed to shake. Oh, oh thank for God. A moment, for a moment, the urge does appeal to you to grab your axe and rush in there to yeet your axe at. Uh, to <laughs> slam your axe down into Bartleby's face and then yeet Angus out of the tower, but you shake your head and manage to uh, stop him from turning you against your friends. This makes him rage. And so he rushes towards Angus and Milo. And for his second for his second action, he gnashes his teeth at Milo. God, he's just... He clearly remembers you. I just love the image of him trying to get past the giant dragon at the one metre tall <laughs> halfling yeah, sitting on his yeah, back. Wouldn't Bluebeard uh, get a stack of opportunity there? Well, actually, he is going to go for Bluebeard. Oh, let it, because Bluebeard has HP to spare, I hope. Yes. However, he hits Bluebeard. That being said, he only has 13 AC, so... Yeah. 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 <laughs> takes eight points of piercing damage. Oh, and then he takes oh, plus three, that's okay. sixteen points of necrotic damage. Ooh. And I would like you to make a constitution save. So what was that all together? That was twenty four so altogether, isn't it? Twenty four points of damage, and I'd like you to make a constitution save for Bluebeard. Oh no. That's a nineteen. A, we do not need a vampiric dragon right now. Nineteen. Yep. Uh Bluebeard passes his constitution save. And then for his second Check. He bears his claws and slashes at Angus. Yeah. Oh, me. Is vampiric a curse or a disease? Ah, uh, it's a curse. Okay. Yeah. And he hits Angus. <sighs> of course. I'm going to remove the vampire spawn from my DM screen. There. Okay. Ah. Uh, all right. He swings his claws and you take uh let's see that is oh one d eight plus hey, you take five points of piercing damage angus mm -hmm. and i would like you to do a strength check please no oh, okay uh that's a 19. a 19 let me check the dc Ooh! He wraps his arms around you and tries to grapple you, but you struggle and pull yourself away. Hey, At off. this point, Still Marsh and all of the other vampires take 30 points of oh. radiant damage from the sunlight. The vampire spawn shriek as they melt into ash before your eyes. However, Still Marsh remains on his feet. Even though there is a smell of burning as the flesh begins to okay, boil. Okay, everyone just wail the fuck out of him now, so hopefully he'll buff up. Cause especially since the uh, room's barred, well, the main door to this room is barred, so we can definitely take time to heal while we're here. Okay, it is now uh, Dan Cooper's turn. For God's sake, go and heal Kitty. Mm. Yep. Dan Cooper casts Cure Wounds on Reaver. I think Cure Wounds is a touch spell. Yeah, he's gonna move up and... Ah, okay. Yep. Up. But he will get an attack opportunity from Stillmarsh, but he should be able to dodge that. I uh, also remember anyone who failed their, um... Their yes. wallet was blinded can roll con to try and get yeah. out of it. Yes. Okay. He gets an attack of opportunity from Stillmarsh. Stillmarsh lashes at him with his claws. And he nat 20s on Dan Cooper. Ooh, oh, oh, God. This has gone to shit. Okay, Dan Cooper takes 17 points of piercing damage. And shit. he must now make a strength check. Yeah. And he fails his strength check. Meaning he is, yeah. now, grappled, he is now grappled by Stillmarsh. Stillmarsh as a reaction, decides to bite into him, and he does it with, with advantage <coughs> as his arm 
Rocket is grappled. Well, this is... Fights with Dan Cooper dealing six points of piercing damage and twelve points of necrotic damage, and Dan Cooper is down. Oof. He makes his first. He makes Fuck. his first death save. Oh, this just got turned up. This is the first boss, and we've already down two people. It is Bartleby's turn. Bartleby looks at Stillmarsh. And he says, mm, I should shed some light on this situation. <laughs> uh, please do. Mm. Bartleby looks up at the roof where the fold of the Bluebeard Maid is starting to reform. And he fires a firebolt at the hole. And the flames begin to melt away some of the ice, restoring the hole to its full size that it was last round. Mm. Preventing the hole from reforming and allowing the full amount of sunlight to make its way into the tower again. Uh... Okay, it's Reaver's turn. She Wait. must make her second. Oh yeah, no, it's Reaver then me. That's right. She yeah. Make her second death save. Right. I actually have a go. Hmm? Oh yeah, Milo, you're up. Oh, yeah, I haven't actually had a turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you said Reaver, I was like, okay. Uh... Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Milo, technically, you were meant to go before Bartleby. Uh, so it's oh, your yeah. turn. Gotcha. We'll just say Bartleby took his turn for, before you this time. Yep. Yeah. Um. So you can either attack yourself or get Bluebeard to do it. Yep. And if you attack yourself, you have advantage because uh, still much is smaller than Bluebeard. Attack yourself. Beat the shit out of him. Yeah, I'm going to attack twice. I'm going to do it through here because I don't have enough dice to roll with advantage twice. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> So plus, if you tried using like Bluebeard stuff, he'd probably hit Dan and Reva. That's true. Yeah. Oh no! So also, his stuff is uh, doesn't have silvered whips. That is also true. Definitely use yes. that. So uh, the first number is my chain whip. The second number is my. Yep. So, uh, that's so a one two one two. Basically. Yep, that's a hit. That's a hit with both of them. Yeah. Uh, roll for damage, and you may double your silver whip's damage. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, silver. Okay, so... My silver whip is... D6s. And that's in my main hand, because I know that it is my best chance. So I can add my decks. So I'm just working through it all. Uh, 1d6. Um, so that's 16 damage for 16. my chain whip. Yep. Uh, yeah, for my chain whip. And yep. then that, that's a d21. I'm rolling a fucking d20 for damage. Uh, and then that's uh, I still roll my poison. Uh, he's immune my... to poison. Okay, so that's then 13 damage for my elongated whip. Nice. Yep. Good hit. Would you like to go again? No. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, I okay. would. Okay. No, nah, you don't go need ahead. to attack again. <laughs> I <laughs> didn't realize that I was supposed to roll eight times. <laughs> Please do. Continue rolling. Continue rolling. <laughs> Keep going. Just whip the piss out of him. Just whip, whip it good. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that's a hit for both of them again. Good. You may roll for damage. Double your silvered whip. Damn it! Uh, so that's that's ten damage for my chain whip. Uh, yeah, chain yep. whip, sil silver whip. I should really just start calling it silver whip. Uh, seven, and then seven damage from my elongated. Good hits. Okay, it is Reaver's turn. You must make a death save. Don't have to spend my time healing. God damn it. Passes yeah. her second death save, and it is Nargul's turn. Ooh, oh, man. Rage, please. Oh no! Uh, I already, I, I already have two attacks anyway. I know, but if yeah, but if you mindless rage, then you can't be turned against us. He's and also he... trying to save his rages for the dungeon. Oh, and they only get him back in a long rest. So That's I'll. Right, I'm gonna do on a short rest. That's right. I'll use my move action to um, 
move up to him. Yep, and use my two two attacks just to wail on him with the axe. All right, go ahead. Damn it. That's a nat 20. Oh, I just oh, got ooh. Oh, Yes, uh, roll your could... damage and double it. Right. Could I have used the bonus action to move? Uh, where's my eight? Or oh, no. Uh, no, you but, wouldn't have. Uh, bonus eight. action isn't moving, that's right. No. Yeah. It's a three. It's a four, so... Okay. That is... Eight. Plus... That's 14. 14. Good hit. And right. my next attack. Oh, oh crap, I yeah. forgot to double it. Whoops. Oh, yeah, that's 28. 28. 28. Yeah, that's 28. Right. <laughs> Go in with your second attack. Uh, that, that's an 18. What? Well, plus. Well, it, it's way over 20. <laughs> yep. Alright, that's a hit. Roll your damage. That's an 8. And uh, 7. 8 plus 7 plus 6. 21. 21. Okay. Good hit. You rush in and you swing at him with your axe, smashing it into his melting flesh. He appears to not feel it. He's too busy screaming in pain from the sunlight to notice. But you lop off a bunch of his flesh and smash one of his ribs. Good. Right. Angus, you're up. Now, as much as I really want to hit this guy again, I feel like I need to administer first aid to everybody. So, Ooh, I will distribute Only... Hmm? I mean, Reaver and Dan both still have... Reaver's nearly stable, I just has one more death save, and Dan's still got uh -huh. two death saves, so you could probably get away with not doing it this turn. Are we technically flanking him? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Should I go for heals, or just wail on him? Um... I mean, we've brought Dan back plenty of times, so just wail on him. <laughs> I know, but we also still have, like, two more people to fight after this. Yeah, yeah so you, you probably want to a... save your heals. That yeah, if, if you can come close to killing him now. Oh, probably... Alrighty then. Well, I will happily take my uh, flaming radiant hammer and go to take a swing at him now. Because we're flanking, do I get advantage on that? Yes, you do. Well, that's a 19 first up. Nice. And an 18. Nice. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> Ooh, yep. Ah, uh, that's a hit. Roll for damage. Alright, so we're doing the 2d8 plus fire damage. Does he take extra damage from fire as well? Uh, yes, he does. Okay, so Brilliant. I get... Yes, so I get 4d8, <coughs> but the, uh, the one I roll for fire damage, I'll double, obviously. Yep. Alright. Okay, well, I got, uh, let's see, 40, 15, 15 plus 2, so that's 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, normally, and then for the fire damage, I rolled an 8, so it takes an extra 16, so, let's see. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. So Alright, that's... 17 plus 16, that'd be 35? I believe so. You swing your hammer mm. and smash it into his abdomen. The mm. flames, his cloak catches a light and he, the flames surge through his burning flesh and you notice there's barely anything left on his body. At the end of your turn, as a reaction, he makes a bite attack on you. <sighs> of course he does. <laughs> Worth it. And he misses. You Even better. Hold up your... You hold up your hammer and he bites into the shaft of it. You uh, uh, see uh, uh, one of his fangs shatter and he hisses and <laughs> recoils back. Okay, it's this now his... I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, even with the uh, <sighs> accidental team hit, this is strangely cathartic to just beat the shit out of this <laughs> asshole. To finally finish him off though, don't we need to drive a stake in his heart? I don't know how vampires work. Uh, I, can, I can throw him in the sun. <laughs> As... Uh, what you do is, uh, after he, if he drops to zero points, he will turn into a cloud of mist and go to his haven, which is right in front of you. Oh, okay. Once it is in, once he is in his haven, he will revert to vampire form where he is paralyzed. 
at that point, you can then put a stake in his heart and kill him. Okay, well. That's okay. Good, <gasps> oh my God! Can can we lock it? Lock him in a jar? No. You might why? be able to. <laughs> As, uh, in mist form, that. we can lock him in a jar. But why? <laughs> Do you know how many people would want to buy a vampire, uh, just a vampire lord? Yeah, you want to know how many people would buy them? All evil ones. Yeah, except the that would be good. Except the the gas form can pass through solid objects. So. Okay, no, well no, never mind uh, then. Yes. No. <laughs> Come on, that was a fun idea though. It was. It was fun. Yes. No. Um, something that two people of the party would agree to. No. But then there's no. M2 oh, just first... raining on my parade. <laughs> For his well, first action, he turns towards Nargle, and yeah. under his, as his face begins to melt and drip away, he gives what passes for a wink, and he says, Nargle, Nargle, you know what to do. Make a wisdom save, please, Nargle. I swear to God, if we get this close to killing him, and you decide to pound us instead. Oh, look, it's a net one. No, I haven't rolled yet. <laughs> uh, oh, oh dear. That's a three. <laughs> Oh good. <laughs> Alright, now we're gonna Great. Now we're gonna is, is charmed. And Nargle uh, as a reaction, Stillmarsh gives Nargle an action. And while he is charmed, he while he is charmed, he immediately rushes towards Angus. <laughs> And raises his axe in a fit of rage. Oh, geez, uh, make an bitch. attack. Make an attack roll, please, Nargle. Oh. So this is gonna be uh, how it's gonna go. <laughs> that that's a. You do, do, do. What, what's my axe? That is a twelve. So that's a twenty-one. Yep. Twenty-one. Yep. All right. Roll for that damage, is. please. I love you. That's a one, and that's an, so nine plus six. 15. Ooh, 15. Alright. No, that was his damage, wasn't it? Mm. Yep. 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 And for his for his next action, Dillmarsh decides to swing at Angus with his claws. I'ma die. <laughs> he miss it. He, Ooh. You duck and his claws swing over your head. And then for his final action, he opens his mouth and sinks his teeth and tries to sink his teeth into what he Dude, can find of your me. Yes. And once again, he misses as you dodge out of the way. He takes 30 points of oh. radiant damage. Ah! And before your eyes, his body begins to melt away. His flesh drops to the floor. Um, he... Yep. Sorry, I was just gonna say, is his coffin in the middle of where the sunlight is? Yep. yep. Yes. Uh, if we could stop the roof melting, would he just be in perpetual pain all the time? Pain. Oh. <laughs> we're, it's... Not, we're not. We're not doing. We're not. No, I, I'm Here not. Is... I'm not asking to do that. I was just going. Here is what happens? You notice as his flesh begins to melt away and drop to the floor, and a strange mist begins to rise from it, and then. The sunlight, a ray of sunlight touches the mist, and then before your eyes, the mist begins to dissipate in the sun, and a terrible scream rings throughout the tower. Uh, okay. And then before, before you have a chance to act, the mist is seared away by the sunlight. He's gone? Yes. Huzzah! Thank God, can wow. you rest now, yeah. please? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I... 35 health, that last hit hurt. <laughs> now you may want to uh, stabilize Reaver and... Yeah. Uh... You just break, um, break yeah, out of the chum going, what, what happened? I remember hitting the vampire, then I just blacked out. What happened? <laughs> he just he just look over and see an axe-shaped wound on me going, I don't know, you tell me. Um, Did I do a bard again? <laughs> no, this one was more intentional, but I will forgive it because you won't incend mine. For God's sake, let's go and mop up damage. So, how do we stabilize people again? Uh, just, uh, just heal them. Just heal them in any way you can. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just walk over to them and tap each one on the shoulder, and both of them. Wounds? Yep. No. Um, with an ability that I have. 
Ah, uh, yes, yes. They're the ones. Yeah. I'm not saying that you're going to lay any appended <laughs> through your hands upon them. Yeah. I just, I I just touched them both so that we're not using any healing yeah. spells. Yes. Social yeah, distancing, you please. Reva politely, you just sort of slap Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wake up! Wake Actually, up, wake no, up, wake I up. don't slap him because this time he died trying to save someone else. So, yeah. 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 both of the tieflings, uh, both of the tieflings, uh, awaken and climb to their feet, uh, aching in pain. You may have a short rest in this room. It appears to be safe. Oh. Right. Before I do that, you said there was a, a wooden chest. Yes, there was. Please do. I would like to open the chest. Over, you stroll over to the wooden chest, and inside... ...is a veritable mother load of gold coins. <laughs> at least 2,300 GP piled into Silmarsh's trunk. I'm just gonna write that down for now. We'll work on distributing it evenly once we're done. Yep. Yes, yeah, sounds good, sounds good. Alright, so... Uh, would you like to examine the bookcase? Yes. I yes. Would. Hey, I will have Reva roll an investigation roll. Yeah, sorry about the whole sunburst thing. That didn't work out quite as well as I hoped. Hey, uh, the it fight, was epic. The I mean, the, the fight was... would have lasted so much longer without it. Yeah, the yeah. temptation was so, so I didn't plan on that the second. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad I decided to do the action and just rip the door off the handle. Yeah, that was so good. The fact that it was taking like 30 each turn just made this so much easier. Reva still, visible... <laughs> Reva still visible runs her finger along the spine. <laughs> the and, okay, uh, hold, hold, hold on. Um, Co Coop's Trooper just said in the chat, when do we find the deck of many things? Wait, <laughs> Coop's Trooper? Yeah, in YouTube. Uh, <laughs> never, hopefully. That <laughs> 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 would be nice. She stops at one book with a yellow leather binding and she pulls it out and reads it for a moment. And uh, she then attempts an arcana check to identify <coughs> what it is. She passes, turns to Milo and she winks and she says, here, you might like this. And she tosses it towards you. Oh, and, then blinks out of, and then blinks out of visibility. <laughs> you catch Milo, uh, roll a dex check, please. Oh no. <laughs> Watch me yes. get hit in the face. <laughs> oh, fucking Christ. That's a two. Uh, uh, which two. equals a seven. <laughs> Think first. <laughs> you leap up and grab the book that Reva throws, but it goes over your hand uh, and down on and down oh, into the oh, ruined levels calls. below, Shit. coming to a clattering stop at the icy bottom floor of the tower. Back in the and you'll have to climb down to go and get it. Is that an athletics check? Yes. Let's roll back up for my... Alright, so while the guy's are doing that, I'm gonna use my hit die to... That's get a 16. Take the short rest. Yep, you managed to mm. climb down the side of the inside of the tower. Make your way down to the bottom. Grab the book, make sure to stick it in your rucksack, Three. and then climb back up to the top level. So grab the book, and finally, now that you have it in your hands, you read that's what it says on the title. Six. It is a tome um, of leadership and influence. <laughs> awesome. You spend 48 hours over a period of six days or fewer studying the book's content. Your charisma score increases by two. Okay, I'll roll the 4d8 now just so I know. Write mm -hmm. it yep. down. No, no, Seventeen it's hours. 4D, it's not four D eight. It's forty eight. Oh, forty eight. Oh, yeah. oh, right, right. Okay. Now you are having a short rest. You may spend your hit dice. And I'm up to seventy. I use three of my three of my D twelves. <clears throat> so what what was the spell again uh, that got picked up? It was a book that will allow him to increase his um. Increase his charisma. Oh, damn. Okay, so Reva and Dan Cooper and Bartleby have each recovered 31 hit points by spending eight, by spending all of their hit dice. 
How many did I spend? I spent three, Actually, you know what? I will use more because I've, I've still got plenty of hit dice yeah. left. Actually, wait. Uh, I'll use two more. Wait, wait, wait before, okay. you spend, before you spend yep. more, uh, as you sit down and have a rest, uh, Dan Cooper pulls out his silver tongue dryer and he begins to drum a tune. Uh, meaning, in addition, uh, while you are resting, you each gain one d six. Oh, oh, neat. Is that what, uh, one addition d six for each hit dice we used? Uh, no, just one addition, one d six for everyone. Okay. A hey, quick question, oh, just out of curiosity: yes. Was I the last person to hit the vampire? Uh, yes, you were. Well, in that case, guess who's up to six? <laughs> I'm counting that. Okay, so uh, <laughs> those who were. So the end, the other party members who are under my control have recovered thirty six HP altogether. Yeah, I'm, uh, back, uh, up I'm back up to um, seventy four. I'm ten, ten away from full. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm on seventy one. So that's like two thirds for me. Yep. Okay. Um. Now that you have. Door. Yep. Now that you've had a short rest, uh, you are free to leave the tower. You get up after eating a small meal and you look at the piles of ash on the floor one last time before you exit the tower. You smash your way through the ice at the base and make your way down the path. So as, as we take like one last down. look at the room, I just sort of look back at the pile of ash and go, ah, six, oh, six, well, I suppose I also kind of lay the mass of hurting all those spawns as well because I was the only one that hit them. So can I add those? <laughs> I guess so. Um, yes. okay. What What about me? Because I I got got them all as well. Well, uh, we'll, we'll call it raw. We'll both <laughs> take four each. <laughs> it only counts as one. <laughs> that only counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> so where to next? Uh, I think since we killed uh, the vampire, we should look in those uh the tiny rooms. Little, little tiny rooms. Very well. Okay. Some point Make your way. This is on this level, so at some point we're gonna have to fight that prick. Yes. Uh, I mean, if we can catch him at night if he goes to sleep, but I guess he knows these places. Yeah, he would being... know by now. Yeah, true. Yeah. Make your way yeah. through the courtyard. I would like you all to roll strength, che uh, stealth checks again, please. No, strength That's is fine. I can pass those. Fifteen. Plus Nineteen. Eight, Eighteen. Thirteen. One pass from Reva and a fail from Dan and Bartleby. So it's half a pass. <laughs> Wait, how yep. much was I supposed to roll the pass? Uh, you were supposed to roll 12 to pass. Oh, yeah, I actually passed. Holy shit. Alright, so. Uh, stick, what, did Nargle, what did Nargle and Milo get? Oh, I passed. I got 18. Yeah, I got 18 as well. Alright, so that's a pass for the group. You did not. Uh, you are not spotted by the ogre with the ballista. Okay. Which Wait, one do you want? The beef of Blagothus or the beef of Ballista? Beef of Blagothus. So we know Blagothus is in there as well. Yes, he's in that tower. He's uh, just okay. at the top is where the Ballista is. Uh, okay, so which room which room would you like first? Middle, bottom, or a middle, left, or right? Let's split up and explore all three rooms at the same time. Let's split up, gang! Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> No. <laughs> I would like to kick open the door in front of me. Um, uh, just, just before we kick it open... No, no, I'm going to kick it open. No, can, can we just notice that there may be a barracks to the left? That could yes, possibly have multiple there. people in there that might come running out at a yeah, commotion? Just, we're still trying to be quiet here. KICK IT OPEN! Fine. Don't kick, okay, well... We enjoyed the free heals we go, so we're probably about right. to lose. No, okay, right. I won't kick it open. <laughs> and as you carefully touch the door, you notice it is unlocked and opens without you having to do anything. Oh, thank God. Enter. And Sorry. this appears to be a giant sized guest room. There is a bed, a bedside table, and a dresser, all sized for giant sized guests. Hmm. At the back of the room is a solid wall of ice. However, strangely, there is no window looking out upon the sky outside. Shame. Uh, hey, quick question, what was the book that uh, Reva found for you? Oh, uh, uh, it was the Tome of, Tome leadership, of leadership and 
So Ooh. plus two charisma if I read it. Yes. it oh, it's so take 48. Minutes. Yeah, within 48 right. minutes. So there's nothing in the room? Uh, uh, we would need to it, do an investigation check, I would yeah, imagine. It appears to be, for now, just an unused guest room. However, Angus, with your passive perception, no. you yeah. notice that the icy wall at the back of the room appears to be shimmering. Oh. Can I use produce flame on the ice? Uh, yes, if you wish. Yes, I wish. Cast produce flame, and you throw a small fireball at the icy wall. It touches the ice and fizzles away, and a couple drops of water begin to run down the side of the wall. The wall shimmers as if it's made of fabric for a moment, but remains solid and in place. Hmm. I'd like to touch it. Angus, you walk up and you touch the wall. As soon as you place your finger on it, it vanishes, huh. revealing on the other side of the wall a balcony that looks oh. out upon the sky below. You notice that the balcony is large enough for a wyvern or similar sized creature to land here, perhaps Ooh. meaning that this is a landing platform uh, to be used by whichever guest is stationed in this room. Clever. Most intuitive. Well, um, my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's have a look in the other rooms then, shall we? Uh, would you, would you I like would to... I would say the right one first and the left. Oh, would you like to, um, would you like to investigate this room first? Oh, yeah. that already did. Oh, well, yes, that would probably be a good idea. Investigate. I will get Reva to roll that. Reva quickly looks around and under the bed, she says, she looks under, you see, you see the bed sheets Heart under the bed, and then you hear her voice say, Aha! And then a large leather bag is pulled out from underneath the bed. A giant bag. What's in it? I would like, I would like one of you to, I would like each of you to please roll uh, 1d100. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um... Sorry, just got scared for half a second there, but that's Cthulhu. I rolled a 70. No, oh, I have to do this in here. I've got my D hundreds out. Oh, um, really? What's what? Forty-seven. Forty-seven. Okay. First of all, you find inside the bag a giant-sized pair of old sandals. Uh, they appear to be in quite used condition, and there is an oddly pungent smell wafting from them. Oh, you, you find a large, a large steel shield, giant sized with a dent in it. Oh, so far nothing useful. Yeah, but exactly the final dented shield. But mm. the final thing you find is is three three red dragon scales. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So I would say Deb. one for each of us. Yeah, Deb's on one. <laughs> Where's fire dragon skills? That's to be like fire. Yeah, that's fire. Okay, I'm yep. happy to trade if anyone wants to swap a bronze for a fire. I don't need the fire resistance, but um, I will have the what, what is bronze? Bronze is um acid. acid resistance. Bronze? Oh, bronze is also acid? Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, because yeah. there's there's metallic no, dragons. No, no, bronze, bronze, bronze is lightning. Oh, yeah. No. Okay, so it... bronze oh, wait, and blue no, are both oh, lightning. Wait, bronze and yeah. copper. Copper, copper ah. is acid. Okay, yep, copper is acid. Scale, sorry. Yeah. I would have liked the bronze one, but right. I can't win everything. So... Well, you got red dragon scale. Damn, I shouldn't sorry. have sold it. I was going to say, yeah, well, you got three of them, but <laughs> I, well, myself, I was going to say myself, Kitty, and Dan wouldn't need it, because we already naturally have fire resistance. Um, hey, quick. Yep. Yes, can you way. use red dragon scale to give fire element to a weapon? Ah, uh, no. No, no they're no. only defending. If you use it on your armor... Uh, yeah, they're only defending. Resistance. Yes. Okay, okay, cool. Which is probably something you might like, considering, you know, yeah. who we may face later on. Well, well, if no one else would like Angus's one, I'll take it. Well, I've already, um... 
I was going to say, there's, there's, there's three. So basically, you yeah. get one, Nadal will yeah. get one. I suppose you give the third to Bartleby. Oh, Bartleby. Yeah, yeah. That's a, like I said, like like I said myself, yeah, sorry. Reaver, and Dan don't need it because we already have fire. You hand one of the scales to Bartleby, and he immediate, his eyes light up, and he takes it and stows it away, and then he pulls out uh, one of his books and immediately begins scribbling something down. Angus, make a perception check, please. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, 15. You, lay, you, you you step on your tippy toes just enough so you can see Wait, it. To I'm Nargle's. taller than him. Why would I need the tippy toe? Because he's on Nargle's shoulder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's on Nargle's shoulder. Fair deal. Fair deal. And you can see that Bartleby is scribbling away at uh, the blueprint of his Feywild blood. Oh, field. the Feywild's oh, going to have fire resistance. And, uh, <laughs> and he's written the words in big capitals fire resistance. Well, there goes the heat metal plan. <laughs> Damn <Yes>. it! <laughs> a quick we may search. Have to raise of... the monster here. Yes. <laughs> this is gonna a be quick fun. Search of the uh, two neighboring rooms reveals them to be almost exactly the same, furnished the same way, with the same vanishing ice walls. However, these rooms appear to be completely unused, and there is no bag of uh, giant belongings. Well done. Yeah. Where would uh, you hold like on a to go now? <laughs> well, oh, I guess we should probably check that barracks. Yep. Um, but be before we, know we do that, so we do know there is the secret passage in that room. Oh, is that where the secret passage? Sorry, the housemate yes. just came in and gave me some chips. Um, can I send Bluebeard to fly above the castle just to see where troop movements are? Yep. Actually, yeah, is that actually, I was gonna say, you might want to get something smaller because I feel like if they see a goddamn wyvern, yeah, glitter wind. Well, if he flies out the side building through the mystical wall, then he'll be able to see the lower courtyard and could at least give you a, an idea of what's down there. I mean, technically, we do have um, Bartleby's owl that could do that. Okay, true, fine. I'm just, I'm just, just... saying is. Don't get I was just. Wrong. Bluebeard would be yeah. a good choice, but I'm also thinking if we're trying to stay quiet, throwing a ribbon around the building was might bring some attention. I was more thinking he flies off the side and then flies up really high. <clears throat> I don't know how that, that looks too. He's, it looks like it's a random mm -hmm. wyvern flying around. I guess. Yeah, I don't yeah know. that could. Apparently, they're used to wyverns being here because yeah, that's how they get enough. here normally. All right. right? Bluebeard looks up, he says, Arr, I'll sail around the perimeter. See what treasures be lying there. <laughs> I love him. See if you can find the treasure room. He says, Yar, I'll find where X marks the spot. Oh, oh, then, oh, 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 oh find ye booty. He extends his wings and takes to the air, and you watch as he recedes into the distance. Uh, slowly does a circle around the whole castle. Ooh, I can talk to him um, telepathically as well while he's doing reconnaissance. Yeah. Yes. Reconnaissance. Uh, <laughs> he says, he says yep. Yar, okay. So here's what I'm seeing. Yar, he says, first of all, it looks like we got some sort of stable to the north. Is there some kind of treasure map? Oh, would there be more wyverns in there? He says, he says, Ah, I can see through the window. There be other folk like me inside. <gasps> My God! Can I stealthily tame them all and release an army of women? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> oh, that would be so useful. Okay, that's an idea for later. Okay. Um. Definitely file that away. You okay, see. that's filed away. Uh, okay. Sorry. Continue. You, <laughs> you beautiful he maniac. Says, he says. Ah, I circling around the main gate, and I see the two towers manned by stone giants. And on the other side of the gate, two stone golems. Oh, no. They'd be immobile as of yet. He says, Ah, looks like they probably need some rub in their bellies before they'll join the fight. <laughs> oh, oh, I, mean, I mean, that's how I operate. <laughs> Says, there I see some ogres patrol it in the courtyard, and to the south, through the windows, 
some kind of barracks. Since our, and then I see, I see, yes, it be a mess hall, a kitchen, where they be making <laughs> grub, and the tower leading up to where yous are now, it be guarded by another stone golem. Then back on the upper courtyard, he lands next to you. He says, Ah, my reconnaissance be complete. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Bluebeard. Good job. <laughs> Meanwhile, my poor winged cat has not had so much as a word because no one's tried to speak to it. It's just a cat. I guess. It's just a kitty on my shoulders. <laughs> you may you may call him um, Hazar, but I'll call him Mr. Snuggums. Well, we don't know what his actual name is yet. Yeah. He be called because no one's talked to him. Can I see that other map again just real quick? Oh, um, was there any mail or boxes outside? No, oh, there's no way to get into that stables from the outside, is there? No, no. You'll have to. No. As the only as... way to get there is through the. Uh, only way to get there is through the actual uh, lower yeah. courtyard. Itself. Um, did we look yeah. through the other room with the lots, lots of beds yet? I've been gone in. Oh, yeah, no, okay. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that room to the north. That bedroom yep. that has the shimmering wall, I'm guessing, because it has the same yep. connotation. We can land would, there, can we? Would I possibly be able to land there and maybe sneak across the courtyard if we're still in the upper courtyard at night time? Yes, yes, you may be able to do that. Oh, the boy. You may be able to land Bluebeard on the balcony the ice wall and make your way in through the bedroom. Because then I could sneak across from that hallway door to the unleash, stable. And then just unleash them in the cover of dark. Yes. But that is for when we're finished with the top layer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We shall get to that later. I like where we're going with this. <laughs> where would you like to go uh, we want now? To quietly check the... Uh barracks just make sure there's nothing else there yeah right uh Would as that... you sorry yep. go on no don't worry it was me talking to myself as you approach this room <coughs> uh Angus, i'd like you to make a perception check right. with advantage, dale please. sorry to interrupt uh but yep. um the uh escape from insmith just got dispatched yes Okay, well, I'm really glad you asked me to roll with advantage, because I rolled a 6 and then a 20. Oof. As you approach this room, you hear what sounds like a mixture of snoring and uh, other voices. You hear a mixture of snoring and high-pitched voices uh, speaking in a language you cannot understand. Oh, pitched. And just sort of hold a hand out to stop and go, uh, not... That room's not empty. I'm a wild shape into a spider and spy on people. Very well. <clears throat> Nargle, you wild shape into a spider. Oh, uh, going on rock connoissance. And you make your way under the door, and here is what you see inside. I just have to grab a token. Oh. Because I forgot to prepare this particular token. <gasps> New things? Yeah, new things that I haven't actually used yet. <gasps> uh oh. A cobalt? Inside <gasps> the room, you see uh, perhaps no less than 30 cobalts. The <laughs> what? Each of these tokens represents a group of 10 cobalts. Most of them appear to be asleep. However, some of them are. Some of them are cavorting in the back of the room around a table where they are playing the knuckle bones and dice. Wait. You see them you uh, see them apparently yep. Uh uh Colbots, um do they speak uh what what language do they speak? Uh Draconic. Oh, so I do understand them. Yes, you yeah, it was Angus that didn't Oh no Angus. No. Yeah. Actually yeah I would understand Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well they were they were muffled. <laughs> but okay. now that uh Nargle's gone in, you can hear them in Draconic and they appear to be having an argument. No, 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 no. Your clicky number rocks is rigged. It's rigged, I tells you. 
No, it's not rigged. It's, no, it's not rigged. It's not nothing. <laughs> my, my, my clicky number rock I refuse to play any longer with your clicky number rock. I'm going to use my clicky number rock. One of the kobolds pulls out a leather bag and dumps a pile of dice onto the table. At which point, several other kobolds begin shouting even louder. What are you doing? Now we can't see which clicky number rocks is supposed to have the correct number. Oh, we don't get so many clicky number rocks. At this point, one of the kobolds roughly shifts all the dice away, knocking them off the table, and says, I don't care about no clicky number rocks. I was gonna snort me me dragon bone meal. Oh, no. Dumps <laughs> uh, what appears to be some sort of white powder on the table and begins snorting it. Several of the other kobolds join in. Uh, rather than calming them down, this appears to have the opposite uh, effect and they begin bickering even more loudly. One of the kobolds shouts, Enough! Enough! We're using my clicky number rocks and that's the end of it! And he begins piling all the dice on the ground onto the table. Nargle, what do you do? Uh, I kind of just want to see where this goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know we're trying to take over the castle. It's really fascinating. As, as a couple of the kobolds begin shuffling all the dice onto the table, the kobold who originally got out the dragon boat meal holds up a hand to stop them. He says, no, 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 no. Don't you understand? With knuckle bones, you can't use that many clicky number rocks. <laughs> At this oh, point, one this. of the other kobolds reaches <coughs> onto the table and he says, well, then if we can only use one, I vote it's this one. And he <gasps> shoves a massive dice that's almost as big as him onto the table. The table groans under the weight, and then all of the other kobolds begin shouting, No, no, no! You're gonna wreck the table! Ah, ah, Blagosus will have our hides! They immediately grab the large dice off the table and begin shoveling everything else off the table, <laughs> bickering amongst themselves over who's going to pay. Who's going to pay for this uh, irreparable damage? Um, kobolds are rather cowardly, cowardly aren't they? Yes, they, they also are. walk at dragons. All right, I got an I got I I, I got an idea. For, I'd like to while uh well I'm still watch I'm um, crawl, crawl back out as the as the limb speeder. Yep. And um I I I, I tell the guys just to stay back in one of the other rooms. Just stay hidden. Wait, what? Just 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 go with it. Just go with it. Would you like Would you like Bluebeard to back you up? Oh oh no oh no oh no I'm fine. Okay. Um, remember. Cause I look, I look like the person who, who they're serving, yeah. and I have the, the helm of uh, spooky helm, yeah, the dread helm as like well. Lady Resmia. Yeah. <clears throat> so you, you guys just go hide in another room. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I All right. I have this. I'll just wait outside. <clears throat> All right. The rest of you retire. The rest of you go into one of the nearby guest rooms and you just watch through the open door. Hmm. So we just, on again, so just let me go with this? Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, and yeah, um, I'm, I'm out, can out, I... out, outside the door. Alright, what, what were you going to say, Marlon? Um, I'm a bit apprehensive that the barbarian just come out so excited, so what I'm going to do is tell Bluebeard <clears throat> just to be sitting on the roof ready to intervene if something goes wrong. <laughs> he's, inter he's not going to interfere. But if something goes wrong, he Blue might. Bluebeard nods and he says, Yeah, I be at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> and then he flies up on perches on top of the roof of the kobold barracks. Alright, so wild shape back into my barbarian form. Yep. And um. And then you stroll in. Oh no, oh no, no, no. At fir first, I'm going to get the Dreadhelm to like do, do its thing. So... Eyes glow red. Eyes. Oh no, I'm not entering the room. room. I'm not entering the room. I'm booting the door oh. down. Oh, yes, okay. <clears throat> Make a strength check, please. I mean... Uh, that is a nat 20. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you, the door the takes out 20 of the kobolds. And <laughs> <flies across> the <laughs> <room>. <laughs> knock, knock, knock motherfucker! Just <laughs> you step forward and smash your axe into the door, breaking it off its hinges. You hear shrieks from inside as you step into the room. 
the 20 or so kobolds that are sleeping have awoken with a start and they're just sitting there staring at you with terror in their eyes. Meanwhile, all of the other kobolds at the far ends of the room turn around, uh, looking at you with their hands filled with a mixture of dice, uh, knuckle bones, and bags of white powder. Yeah, uh... one, of the kobolds, one of the kobolds, the one who... Uh, the one who apparently is the owner of the giant dice <clears throat> steps forward and he says, Ah, uh, l l l Lady Resmere, uh, 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 please forgive us. Uh, we, we, was, we was just playing a, a, a harmless game and uh, we, we, we let it get out of hand, but we won't let it happen again. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Make, make an intimidate check, please. With advantage? Oh, it's always with advantage with the speak with the dread helm. I feel like you should get extra advantage because these things are probably shitting themselves right uh, now. Uh, and that's uh, ooh, one sec, one sec, one sec. Uh, what's my intimidation thing? That's uh, seventeen. Actually, no, no, I, I forgot to add my normal charisma, so that, that's seventeen plus three. That's nineteen. Yeah. All thirty, not twenty. All thirty kobolds, all thirty kobolds yelp in shock, and then <clears throat> the kobold behind the one who was speaking to you steps forward and he pushes his friend forwards and he says, ah, "It's it was it was Beacon who made all the noise. He 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 wanted us to use his big clicky clacky number rock, and when you roll it around, it makes too much noise." He taps the table and he says, "Look." Look, the furniture is is groaning under its weight. Uh, if you must punish someone, punish a deacon, please. Hmm. <sighs> I'm gonna punish punish one of you, all right? Now, first, give me all your gold. This is punishment. We, I want you to be fucking working, not messing around. I feel like we should be using them to try and fight someone. Oh, oh no, I'm getting at it. I'm getting at it. Okay, well, you go do your magic. I have to. Make, my own. make uh make an intimidation check with advantage again. Again. <laughs> oh, doo -doo -doo. That is a nineteen. They once again all shriek. One of them shouts, uh, yes, 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 my lady. And they begin rum they begin rummaging around the room uh, for all the valuables they have. And then they pile them all into a big bag, along with the large dice, and give it to the one known as Deacon, who shuffles shamefully over to you and drops the bag at your feet and says, Here he, 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 you go, my ladies, and please, please, I would be very much appreciated if, if you don't bite my head off, please! I heard you start dribbling acid just to put the living fear of God into him. He shrieks and runs away back to the opposite side of the room, where the other the other kobolds push him back into your direction, and one of them says, No, 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 you don't come over here if Lady Resident is gonna punish someone, she's punishing you. <laughs> do you do you look what do you look and see what's inside the bag? I do. I was gonna say the rest of us just listening to this conversation going, what uh, I'm guessing is it interconic or is it just Yes, it's so all interconic. So everyone else is I mean, sitting there, I'm listening to this going, Luke is translating to me. Yeah, Dan yeah I'm Cooper translating to everyone understand. else going, Well, this is interesting. You open up the bag and inside is twenty-seven gold pieces. Not much for 30 kobolds, they're clearly not paid very well. The only other thing of note is the gigantic dice, which, on further inspection, just appears to be a vaguely cube-shaped boulder with numbers through the Aww. 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 They're crackheads, but they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're marrowheads. Oh, okay, they're marrowheads, but we they're cute. Like for this way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you little fuckers want to make it up to me? There's a troll by the ballistas who's been acting up. I want you to go take care of him. Deacon right. shuffles forward and he says, take care of you mean? You mean punishes? I, I, I grab him by the throat and lift him up. What the fuck do you think I mean? And just start soft, uh, well, digging my claws into his neck, but not enough to pierce the skin. He shrieks and immediately begins squirming, saying, Yes, my lady, yes, my lady, anything! 
Uh, I'll put him down. Good. And after that, everyone come back to this room and do not leave. They nod and in unison, they all make their way out of the barracks. That rushing was actually handled a lot better than I thought it was going to be rushing off. I told you I had a plan. Courtyard, rushing off across the courtyard in the direction of Brooke Gothis' throne room. That being Zero, said, though, it's probably going to pace a lot of them, right? Uh, uh, is there anything in the room first? <laughs> uh, no, they've given you all of their valuables. The oh. only other things of note in the room are a pile of smaller desks at the foot of the gambling table and a bag of, uh, and a small baggie of white powder. Hmm. I, I take the white powder. That I can... <laughs> Oh my god, he's gonna get high and drink marrow. <laughs> okay, uh, how big's the bag? Uh, about as big as a kobold's head, so about a handful for you. Handful of drugs. Dragon marrow. So, if those kobolds actually fight that ogre, they're gonna die. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's see if Logothus doesn't grind them into pace. So I oh, they might be able to they might be able to take down at least that one ogre before they get pasted. <laughs> All right. So uh, I just go back into the other room, going, "Yep, that's all sorted with now." I just sort of smile and go, "Well played, my lady." <laughs> oh, oh, you cheeky dick waffle! <laughs> hey, you put an axe in my chest today. I want that one. That's that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Alright, we're... No, did you say there was dice in that room? <laughs> well, I would more say a boulder with numbers on it. Yeah, yeah but, but they were playing with smaller game. dice, weren't they? You got more right. copper and you examine the smaller dice. And you I take all the dice. <laughs> you notice they're actually not dice at all. They appear to just be stock standard pebbles with numbers written. <laughs> I take all of the dice. <laughs> Which certainly lends credence to that one kobold's assertion that these clicky number rocks are rigged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many pebbles would there be? Like uh, about about twenty of them. Twenty kobold. Uh, yeah. Dale. Uh, a number of. Yep. Uh, before I implement one of two plans, uh, are there yep. actually in-game effects to the drug? Ah. Uh, Yes, I will add oh, no. effects. And and what I what? It, I will make it. Uh, I will make it increase your. I will make it increase your strength. Oh God! But it will actually it will increase the damage you deal, but it will make your attacks less accurate. Ah, uh, makes sense. So you have to roll with disadvantage, but if you hit, it does way more damage. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Okay, I'm well. gonna open up a museum of dice. Because <laughs> <laughs> I still have those dice from my very first session with you guys. Yes. Mm. Also, I'm going to sit here and open them going, some of these had letters on them. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that a small number of them, no more than three or four, appear to either have letters written on them or nothing at all, and one of them appears to be a Scrabble piece. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the fable Q. Q on it. <laughs> I'm glad we both went the same letter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we've somehow, you've somehow passed yourself off as a lady, commanded all the kobolds to give them everything that they own, and then go get to beat the shit out of an ogre, which I'm sure will end perfectly well for those little Well, uh, I'm gonna say this is uh, purely racist, because I'm a black dragonborn, and she's a black dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to um, be fair, there's not I'm... really much difference between male and female dragonborn. Yeah. No. Uh, only, the only difference is down there, you kind of have to look to see it. <laughs> Hold on a sec, just let- oh my god, you're a boy. <laughs> Man, yeah, what a boy! At that. Most of them were just like terrified that you were going to. <laughs> oh my god, Narkle, you were female this whole time, we just never looked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might have known, but I'm not telling anyone else that. <laughs> no, not one to uh, judge. <laughs> Angus, I would like you to make a perception check, please. Oh god. <laughs> uh, that's a 19. Just to find where the trap door is. Uh, you notice one of the beds, the one closest to the gambling table, 
as uh, as you were told by the ogre, uh, appears to have a wooden trap door underneath. Oh yeah, the trap you door. The bed, you push the bed aside so that you can and fully reveal the trap door. Well, it's big okay. enough to allow it's big enough to allow each of you to get through, except possibly Nargle, who might have to squeeze a bit. Watch out. Yeah, there you go, problem solved. <laughs> so are you going to use this method to get downstairs? Are we doing um, that again, or are we going to play Blagothos a visit? Uh, which one's Blagothos? He's the... Uh, he's the giant. giant. Yeah, he's the giant. He's, he's the only thing left upstairs now. Uh, I, I say let's deal with Blagothos, because um, those other giants yeah. won't be... I mean, those other ogres won't be waking up because of the sleeping spell. Keep in mind... But uh, if you do take on Blagothus, there is a more than reasonable chance that he will immediately be, be able to summon whoever's downstairs to his aid. Oh, oh okay. Then. Well, then. never mind then. <laughs> can I initiate my plan to try and sneak in and send out an army of women? Yes, you can do that. The only so problem is that is yet. breaking up the party. Yes, but can I? Way... Oh, sorry. Gone. Either way, you're both going downstairs yep. for the moment. Yeah. Unless you, you can take on Blagothus, I'm just saying that Blagothus will for sure mm. raise an alarm. Ah, uh, yeah, let's go downstairs. Alarm. Yeah. I was going to say, but if we're fighting him, wouldn't you be too busy to actually... He's not going to be alone. He's going to have servants in the room with him. Damn it. Um, with any luck, some might be dead. <laughs> some if, might be. If, um... Oh no, but then it will be in combat. I was gonna say, if the rest of the party um, goes down through the trapdoor and starts a commotion, would I get advantage on like stealth to try and get into the stables? Uh, no, you wouldn't actually, because okay. you'd be approaching from a different direction. Any commotion would draw attention away from you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Would I be able to You'd be able to do that. Yeah. Would you like uh, to... But the problem like is to be in combat, and then I'll have to spend each turn trying to tame all the fucking wyverns. Oh! Yes. Um, okay, okay, actually got an idea, actually got an idea. Um, if yeah. if we cause a commotion up on this area, would, would it make um, some of the people rush up to the top area? Uh, probably not, because oh. the upper courtyard is far enough that anything going on up there probably can't be yeah. heard down below i mean i was gonna say if it could have been heard then we would have already had people oh, show yeah, up while we were fighting that first group okay yeah okay fair enough anyway i got your commotion covered creature cannon <laughs> um yep. can i try mm. sneaking um and maybe nagel sends glitterwing with me and if i fail my sneak attempt glittering comes up and warns them to come down and help me not die. The trap door. <laughs> oh no, I'm, yeah. com I'm coming down with you. So mm. pretty much we're all going downstairs. Yeah, yeah but, but I'd, Milo, I'd be... Milo wants to ride downstairs on um, oh, Bloom yeah, Vineyard yeah, yeah, and yeah. land in a different spot than you. Okay, so uh, yeah. where, if, do, where does the trap... If I was taking anybody, I'd take Reva with me because she could scout yeah. ahead. Where, where does the trap, trap door uh, lead out to? It leads specifically to, I will mark, uh, this room here. Which one? I'll make that, I'll make that uh, thicker for the, uh, Yeah. Right. This room here. Oh! Oh, well then I wouldn't need to fly down because we'd all come out at the same place anyway. Yeah. Whereas, mm. whereas Remy wants to go and land here. So we're not that far away from each other then. No, no, no we're not. May as, may, well. As well, may as well go down the yeah. trap door and I'll get Bluebeard to meet on the balcony. Very well. And, the balcony. and depending if yeah. there's nothing in this area, my plan is to slowly open one of these one of those doors and release uh, one or two of the gelatinous cubes for the ogres to take care of what you do your thing. Yes. Well, one, one gelatinous cube might not be able to take care of all ogres. As I said, one what? or two of them. I said it's all of them. Yeah. Um, are you talking about the downstairs ogres or the upstairs ogres? The downstairs ogres. 
Oh, yeah, that might be fine. Keep in mind that there are also two stone giants and two golems that may activate. Well, so far, as I said, this would be a distraction for uh, Molo to yes. rescue the Wyverns and hopefully get them on our side. Yep, all right, but first go downstairs and work it out when you get down there because you might yeah. have other options. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? All right. So you descend down, you open the trap door, and below below you can just make out uh, about 70 feet below at the bottom of a long tunnel you can just make out the site of what appears to be a bedroom or guest chamber far below all right all right uh i would like you all to make uh uh dex checks please um i still have 50 feet of hemp and rope Oh, yes. I just make a rope, uh, tie it, and... Uh, yes, so you may all make dex checks with advantage, then. Oh, thank oh, Christ. I rolled 17 first, it's 16. Oh, thank God. Okay, that's 17. <laughs> but... I was going to say, could you imagine if I fell, you'd just get this whole thing of the fully armored dwarf going down this thing, just going... Do <laughs> 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 you hear something? My oh. second roll was a nat 20. My first roll was a 2. Ooh. So... <laughs> That's a group pass then, as you make your way down the. I passed! Yay! <laughs> so that would get rid of my rope, wouldn't it? Yes. Yep. You, unless awesome. you go back up to the top and. Un, un that's okay, I've got rope. I will put yeah. a question mark I've got with rope. retrieve next to it. That's okay, I've got rope as well. I've got. So. Yeah, so have I. Everyone's got you rope. Your damn, what is with you and your damn rope? <laughs> have. <laughs> Here's your rope. <laughs> Oh, that brings back bad memories because I can't watch it because my, none of my players are American! Well, I can't help that. I can watch it. <sighs> damn one. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that uh, I'm not make, American. <laughs> you make your way down into the chamber below. Oh, a large God. rug covers the ice floor just inside the door of this ten foot high room, which is lit by a brazier of hot coals. A large bed rests in one corner, which is where Nargle and Dan Cooper drop down onto. And a desk in the other. Resting atop the desk is a handsome iron-banded chest, secured with a sturdy padlock. Ooh. Stand in front of the desk, with her back turned oh, to Oh no. You. Oh dear. Is. It's what? We just stumbled upon boss number three. Crap. Standing in front of the desk, her back turned to you at the moment, is Lady Resmia. Oh no. Dragon. Well. Beside, beside her, sit. Beside her, are one perched upon the desk, and the other perched in the corner of the room. What? Two small black Right. Oh. Oh dear. Huh, okay. <laughs> As you land on the icy floor below, it creaks a little, and Resmia turns in your direction. Oh shit. Crap. She reaches for the great sword on her back and then looks at looks each of you in turn. Her eyes linger upon Nargle and <coughs> anger, and she says, Hmm. Ah. The tavern keeper's servant had informed me that there was a black dragon born and a dwarf doing their best to intrude in the I thought it was only a matter of time before you arrived. She seems to speak with an air of familiarity but also the words drip with malice at the same time huh. so clearly she will be coming so you've been expecting us then she says yes indeed the tavern keeper when you entered to have a drink uh, he sent somebody up to the castle to inform <coughs> me. I had specifically put the words out a black dragonborn in the company of a dwarf uh, might be arriving. Uh, our living 
challenged friend Stillmarsh informed us passed on the descriptions of all of you. But it was specifically the two of you I was interested in. And what a weird chopped liver! And what's so special about us? What exactly? I was gonna say, what exactly makes us so special? She brushes her hands aside at Milo's comment, and then she looks at you both, and she smiles, and she says, "Look at you there, Nargil. Your skin, your scales, as black as mine. Your draconic features, clearly visible. Surely you have, uh, surely you have realized." Have little in common with the dwarves. I got just grip my axe and go, what exactly are you saying? She reaches for her great axe and says, Well, 14 years ago, I released a clutch of eggs. Only two of the younglings hatched and survived. And, well, my duty being to Tiamat and the cult, I pledged both of my younglings into her service. One of them I raised as my son and trained to fight to presume to one day carry on my work. The other I deposited amongst the I deposited in the vicinity of who we thought might be one of our major enemies in the future. The Dwarves of the Storm Horn. No. She smiles and she says, Tell me, Narco, you've never once had the urge to. You've never once had the urge to strike down all of those dwarves, those uptight, those uptight priests of Moradin, rods up their backsides, sneering, upon, sneering down at you, talking down at you like a child. You never once, never once felt that rage boiling up inside you. You never once felt the urge to cut them all down. Never. Angus was a, is a brother to me. The rest took care of me. Now who exactly are you? And how do you know so much? She says, hmm, shame, shame. I thought that, I thought that you would grow up raised by those dwarves and you would be consumed by hatred and that one day we would have an ally waiting for us amongst the dwarves of the storm horns but it appears all this time you you actually grew up you actually she chuckles and says you actually treated yourself as if you were a dwarf this whole time ignoring the wishes of mummy dearest I, at this this moment, I just drop drop my axe and just sort of in shock, just fall to my knees and was going, "Are you saying what I think you are?" He says, "Well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's not as if it's not as if our kind are particularly common these days. Surely you wondered where you came from. Surely you realized that you can't have truly been." from the storm horns, that somewhere out there you had family, siblings, potentially, parents. She says, she beckons with her right hand, she says, and, well, you are my son, so I am, I am offering you one chance to turn upon your, she snickers and says the word flashback, comrades. She what, sorry? And, she, she says the word comrades with such venom. She says, I'm offering you this chance to turn upon your comrades and join me by my side, just like your brother, wherever he may be. Wait, I have a brother? She says, yes. He was raised in service of the cult, raised as my own, and one day will be my successor. But right now... His exact location is unknown. We sent him upon a quest of discovery to better himself, to put him in more of a position to serve us. And as of yet, he has not returned. He says, so, Nargul, come, take his place by my side. We shall bring Tiamat into this world and 
crush both the giants and the dwarves, and live in paradise under the service of our god. I uh, put my hand, uh, get get up off my feet and uh, put my axe back in holster on my back or whatever it is, and um, I just start moving towards her. Um, just so sort of very slowly. While this is all happening, can on I be your shoulder? Yep. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, can I be communicating with Bluebeard <clears throat> to try yes, and get him to come through the bedroom that we were originally gonna come in and try and how would a live and sneak? It wouldn't sneak. It would. Yeah, it would. Yeah. It you wish to still send him anyway. I... No. You're ruining the story. I'd, like, I'd like <laughs> yeah, to say a few just words. Background stuff. In, in the behind you, you see Dan. I'd, I'd like to say a few words, words, if you don't mind. Yep. Just no. I'll do what Dan's doing oh, first. Yeah. But... Dan Cooper slowly backs away, and you see him muttering something in Infernal under his breath. Uh, his Ever, ever present smile seemingly gone for the moment. It appears somebody in the team has the potential to be even more of an arc. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> on Nargle's shoulder, uh, Bartleby is simply staring at Resmia, transfixed, and he simply whispers, Hmm, most in interesting. Most interesting indeed. I take Bartleby off off my shoulder and just put him on the bed, and just keep place, keep keep slowly walking towards my mother. You place Bartleby upon the bed. He has almost no reaction whatsoever. He simply continues staring at the scene playing out before him, whispering, "Oh, most interesting." Being <laughs> walk towards slowly towards Lady Resmia. Angus, what do you do? Obviously I have a very uh, solemn expression on my face as I look to Lady Resmia and just go, all these years we've cared for this one, I've often wondered what would happen if I ever came across the one who approached him. I've spent a long time wondering how this one would go. And yet, I only have one thing I need to say to you. Thank you. Whatever your intentions may have been, having this one here in our lives, raising him, training him, has been one of the best moments, one of the greatest offerings I've ever seen. She looks at you and she thinks for a moment, and then she just smiles and says, Ah! And here I was thinking that you would bring him up with his heart tainted with hatred. You sick. <laughs> uh, I, I just saw um, you... Oh, I'm sorry, I'll let you, you finish your thing. I was going to say, if you clearly hmm. think that, then you don't know crap about dwarves. This one was received with open arms as the of Morad and himself. Trained him each and every day to bring him out into the world. I could not be more proud of to see the lad who stands before me. Do we treat him like a child? Of course, he's only 17 years old. That's a the ocean before. But we raised him with respect. We raised him to be strong. Whatever his decision might be, whether he goes with you or not, in our hearts and minds, he will always nargle hammer for the storm horns. Uh, if I have to fight him, then I will do so as a heavy but solemn. She looks at you, and then she looks at Nargle, and once again she smiles, and she says, How touching! How utterly touching! Nargle Hammerfall. And then she beckons towards <coughs> Nargle. She says, Come, join me, my boy, and we shall crack your real name, Nargle, the Chosen of Tiamat, son of the Black Dragon Speaker. As she says that, I um move, move close to her and just um sort of. Uh, I'm actually start, start well 
Nargle's actually starting to cry and uh, wrap, wraps his arms around her and like when my when my arms are fully around, I was going, like, uh, take out my claws. I will never betray my brother and just slice down down the back of her neck with my claws and push her back. All right. Damn. Make, make a wisdom check, please. Wisdom. That is a net yep. twenty. Yes. <laughs> words are compelling and you can't help but deny there is some sort of family bond there but you fight against it you wrap your claws around your neck and then you say I would never betray my brother and you strike you clench your big your claws into her neck, no need to roll to hit because this is a hit you deal 10 points of damage to her She stands back, shrieking, and she says, <sighs> she hisses, a hiss that is almost indistinguishable from the one you've all heard Nargle make many times. And then she says, so be it. She reaches for her great sword. Everyone roll for initiative, please. Well, damn, did this get exciting or what? That is 21. Uh, 18. 18 for Milo. Hey. How much did Nargle get? 21. Not, not gonna lie, M2, I kind of got a bit teary with what you were saying. Hey, I spent a week on that speech. You're welcome. <laughs> One. Let's see. Ooh, Bartleby did okay. 14. Hey, you doing, Milo? What'd you think of all that? That was pretty cool. <laughs> was yeah, not expecting yeah. it. I'm sorry to have interrupted in the middle of it, but I was just trying to see if I could get bluebeard to be behind the door ready to burst in when the fight started yeah. <laughs> all right we're ready to go i'm going to queue up some music because i think this fight deserves music yep yeah. <laughs> uh, okay before you before you do that i'm just going to grab a drink now i need to up my game for my speech god damn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah all this week all we've been at work is we sort of ran this idea out on like monday between the three of us <laughs> and all this week at work, we've been sitting there you know, rambling off different ideas for characters. I've had that speech. You want to know why I haven't made many characters this week? That was... That was <laughs> Rise. All right, I am back. Okay. All right, Nargle. You are, you are up first. That makes a lot of sense considering you know, what just happened. Yeah. All right, so, of course, I'm just going... I will never... Betray my brother and just rage. Rage. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. And then you get your two attacks. Well, uh, well, I g guess um, the my for my bonus action, I declare my mother as my mortal enemy. Oh shit! Yep. Oh, right. wow. Is she considered a giant because of her size? Uh, no, she's a medium. medium. She's a medium humanoid. Fair enough. Just checking. Wow, this is this is intense. All right, all right. Roll to hit right. with your first attack, also, please. Also, really digging the music right yes. now. Yes. Also, is... you only get you only get one attack because you use your first action to rage, and then you use your bow up, and you get two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you get two yeah. attacks. Yeah. Because yeah. roll that... to hit, please. Go right. nuts, kiddo. All right, that is a seventeen. That's a hit. Roll for damage. All right. Um, where's my D eight? Six. Oh, pardon me. Three. Okay. Now, now I need to do calculations. So, eight. In one way, I'm happy we two, went down this one. Two, In the other hand, I'm not happy two, that we didn't go through. Six. Yeah. <laughs> now <laughs> we're gonna get our asses kicked. All right. <laughs> so, so that is tw uh, twenty-five to begin with, and I'm I'm just ra raise it up. I will never betray the dwarven kind. How dare you abandon me! Backside on this plan. <laughs> Wasn't expecting the brother though. Did not think that was going to be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to yeah. be interesting. All right, yeah, sneaky that dip off. Yeah, the sneaky yeah. bastard kept that one hidden from all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Ah, uh, yep. So you first attack. You grab your great axe and you swing at her. She attempts to parry you with her great sword. Your two weapons locked, and then you kick forward. Slodging her great sword and slash down with your axe. 
she grunts in pain as blood begins to pour from one from underneath her scales. Make your second attack. Walk it all up. Oh my god, that was almost a nat 20, but that's 19, that's um 30 anyway. <laughs> Still. That's a hit, roll for damage. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Is it 31 hit? <laughs> you, you say that as a joke though, but looking at the monsters yeah. later on. Yeah, uh, right. Eight, plus eight, plus six, plus two. That is 28. I kind of feel Ooh. like the rest of us. I kind of feel like the rest of us should just leave and let these two fight it out. Yeah. Do we really have a place Once for this? I might, but not. You raise your axe and she swings down at you with your with her great sword. You parry it, and then as she stumbles from the blow, you swing your axe at her again, hitting her in the same spot. She grunts in pain and takes takes a step back. It's the end of your turn. She takes a reaction. Oh and she swings at you with her great sword. All right, I'm gonna roll. Right, here we go. Uh, swings at you with her great sword, and she hits you, oh. dealing. Let's see. Ooh, okay. 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 So first of all, you take. Uh, eight slashing damage, and then you take 14 necrotic damage. So, eight necrotic minus... As she, she swings her great sword at you, and you attempt to parry it with your great axe, but she lashes out with her other arm, knocking it out of the way, and stabs her great sword into you, smiling. Okay, it's Reaver's <clears throat> turn. Reva attempts to cast a color spray. Strike true, strike very true, please. All right. Casts it at second level, and roll. See a spray of. Color burst forth from mid air. 42 points of uh, points. And one of the drakes is immediately blinded, but the other is not. She then rolls to maintain her stealth. Oh, and wow. <laughs> Super stealth. Yeah. At the end of her turn, Resmir takes another action. God damn. I, she raises her left hand. And fires a caustic bolt at Angus. Caustic bolt? Yes. Shit. Ranged spell attack. Uh, and Angus, your AC, I believe, is 19. Um, yeah, because I'm not using the shield at the moment. Shit. This is her spell attack bonus. Holy shit, 13. Woo! This one to hit you. Caustic bolt hits you, and you take. As a green bolt of acid flies out of her hands, it hits you, and you take 16 points of Ooh. acid damage. Okay, now it is the enemy's actual turn. Oh god. First, the, uh, what First, the first guard drake flaps forwards towards Milo. Oh, crap. Yay. And it gnashes its teeth, trying its best to bite him. Twice. Uh, one bite once and then hit with its tail. Okay, so it comes to bite you once, Milo. And it hits you. You take nine points of damage. Then it lashes its tail in your direction. Uh, do you want to move the um, map over a little bit? Everyone, everyone's on the right side of the screen. Oh, yes. oh, oh yes. nat 20s. Fuck. At nat 20s. Oh, shit. Take... Oh, 2d6 plus 8. Take 
17 points of damage, Milo, and I would like you to make a strength check, please. How much did I take, sorry? Uh, 17 points of damage, and I'd like you to make a strength check, please. It's bad. Who is it bad? One and strength. 13 plus 3 plus 1, so that's 17. Hail hits you, almost knocking you off your feet, but you manage to stay standing. The second Drake flies, takes to the air. It flies forward, perching on the chair next to Angus. That's the blind one, yeah? Yeah. This is the blind one. And he misses. Matt Wunning. Oh, cool. Let's see. Oh, happen. lucky you. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm sorry my opponent is blind, I can't help that. He gets to he gets to roll a normal attack against someone next to you, so that is... Oh no. no hey, hey. As, a reaction, as a reaction, Bartleby casts shield, boosting his AC to 18. However, he is still hit. He mm. takes... Fuck it. Bartleby takes nine points of damage. He immediately shouts, Ouch! Okay, the Drake makes his second attack, lashing I'm at you. I'm curious as to what Bartleby's intrigue in this whole matter is, because he seemed. He's just very curious. He just ah. likes interesting developments. Fair enough. Um, and you jump as the tail sweeps under your feet. Nope. Mm -hmm. Down low, rub low, too right. slow. Hmm. For Resmir. Resmir's first attack, she swings at Nargal with her greatsword. Oh! And Nargal, you easily parry her blow with your greatsword. She pushes, and then she opens her mouth, spewing forth acid breath across the room. Oh, shit. And it's like everybody to make dex saves, please. Then the drakes. So that's a nat uh, 20. Yes, but the drakes are immune to acid, so... <coughs> and uh, I'm just resistant, aren't I? Wait, what, are yes. we, what am I rolling for? Everyone's making con checks. Oh, con checks. Oh, check. con oh, check. I, I, I thought you said dex. Yes, I, I, looked, I remembered breath, no. damn it, breath weapon is con usually, just like yours. It's 21 then, thank god. I got yeah. an unnatural 20. There you go. Yeah. It's because it, uh, you thought it was a dex check, not a con check. That's why you passed. Okay. <laughs> uh, everyone except Dan Cooper passes. Bummer. Okay, so that is... Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, roll. D8. Uh, Dan Cooper takes 34 points. Oh my god! Everyone except Nargul takes 17 points of acid damage and takes 7 points. She then... Oh. and she then smiles and uses her third action to swing her great sword at Nargul once again. This time she hits. Oh dear. Okay, so first Nargul, mm -hmm. take, take five points of slashing damage, and then you take uh, 22 points Ooh. of necrotic damage. Not oh, good. Okay, it is now Milo's turn. Yeah, I'm down to 28. <laughs> I'm down to 12. Oof. 48? Mm -hmm. So clearly I'm doing healings on my turns, not actually attacking. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Uh... It's fine. <laughs> um... Okay, well, as a bonus action... Because I... Oh, no, it's as an action. Yep. Oh, shit. I was going to cast Hunter's Sense, but it's an action, and that would be my entire turn. Yes, unfortunately. Um... Damn it, that makes that ability really hard to use. I guess I'm attacking the wyvern in front of me. Yep, go ahead. Roll to hit, please. 
Um, so I got a nat 20 with my chain whip. Yep. And I got an unnatural 20 with my elongated whip. All right, uh, that's two hits. Roll for now. damage. Uh, roll for damage and double your nat 20 damage. Oh, damn. Metal was... Chain whip was 1d6 plus a dexterity. But uh, eighteen damage for my chain whip. Yep. And my elongated whip, Jesus, uh, is D8. Uh, elongated whip is my offhand, so I don't use dex now because I changed my thing to. Yep. Okay, so that's. Four, five, and then one D eight. Wherever I put that, there it is. Uh, seven, seven damage with my elongated seven whip. Seven damage. Nice. You lash out with both your whips. One of your whips striking the drake's wing, and the other one wrapping <clears throat> around its neck. You pull. It chokes, and then goes limp. Damn. Yes. Oh. At the end of your turn, Resmir makes an action. Um, that was an attack, so I actually oh, yeah, get another attack. That's right, you do get another one. Go the, uh, yeah, I'm going for the I'm going for the other one. Yeah, I thought right. they had a lot more health than that. Yeah, no, yeah. they're well, I'm drinks, right. uh, sort of on the uh, smaller end of the. Uh, they're line. only CR. They're only CR three, so yeah, they're not. Really uh, not really they're mostly there to annoy more than actually. Yeah, but they did a fair amount of damage to me. That's why I thought yeah, that was Yeah, it's because he, so he got a nat 20. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's a nat 20. God damn it, that's a 17 for my chain and a 11 for my... Alright, No, chain... sorry, that's... Yep. 17 okay. for my elongated and 11 for... Uh, 10 for my chain. Okay, your elongated whip hits, your chain does not. Okay, so... D8 again... That's 10 damage. 10 damage. Okay, nice. Lash out with your elongated whip, striking the drake's wing. It hisses at you in pain, drawing back. And then at the end of your turn, Resmir raises her hand and fires a caustic bolt at Angus. God damn it, lady. I'm <clears throat> now deathly scared of dragonborns. Angus, you hold up your... <laughs> Hold up your hammer and you hit the caustic bolt like a baseballer hitting a baseball. <laughs> disrupting it and causing it to splash in midair, hitting the floor and melting some of the ice. Nice. Okay. Hey, <laughs> it is Dan Cooper's turn. <clears throat> Dan Cooper looks at oh. La looks at Resmir and he says. Back looks, at, looks at Resmir and he says, Hmm, you're gonna wish you didn't hurt me, lady. Not that you're <coughs> anything like the ladies that I've been with in the past. <laughs> 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 Fucking bards. And he casts, hellish, casts hellish rebuke on her. Oh, yeah, oh god. Yeah, that works. It's been a while since he uh, done vicious mockery. Because it's only a cantrip, so it barely does anything at this point in the okay. game. Yeah, that's fair. Um, okay. She's gonna make a dex save. She pass. Let me check. Damn. Res uh, she does pass, but it's okay. She's still gonna take half of what he deals. His DD10 damage. Still takes seven points of fire damage. And she catches a blaze. Oh, nice. I'll take that. Then at the end of Dan Cooper's turn, she takes an action. She casts, raises her hand, and casts darkness on the room. Oh, fuck. oh no. Shit. Not darkness. Whatever we do. Wait a minute. I can still fucking see. Suck it. So can I. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, 
only Narvel couldn't see. Everyone else is blinded because we're in yeah, darkness. It's, it's no, an unnatural I darkness. My hammer, which actually oh, causes yes. magical light, yes. so I can still so, see. Milo and uh, Milo mm. and Dan Cooper and Bartleby and Reaver are all blinded. I was okay. gonna say, would Milo be able to see because he's with next to me, or no? No, it only it's works for you. Yeah, fair enough. It's, it's Bartleby's turn. Bartleby stands up and he says, "Well, you're certainly an exam, not an example of Mother of the Year. I'll say that much." <laughs> Damn, I didn't know wizards could cast vicious mockery. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> and he is going to cast haste on Nargul. Ooh. Ooh. Swing for days. So, so, so what exactly does haste do again? <laughs> Basically, it doubles your um attack so you can make him one turn. Oh. For like next, oh. like, it's like five turns. Oh. Or you have next like minute. You have you get plus two to your AC, have advantage on deck saving throws, and you gain an additional action. So that puts me to 22 AC then. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. At the end of Bartleby's turn, she swings at Nargal with her great sword. Oh. And she... The blow what? is stopped by your great axe. She swears in draconic as you deflect her blow, your two blades lock together, and then you pull your sword away, and she stumps. And she stumbles, unsure of what big. to do. Hmm. Angus, your turn. Uh, well, first I'm gonna. I'm guessing heal time is good time. Heal time is fun time. Alrighty, Please. well, that's another stored uh, prayer of healing then. And that's uh, fifteen. What's it? Uh, Twenty-one for everybody. Oh hell oh, yeah! Well, that's, that. good. that's good. Thank Bartle you. And back. better yet, no, no, better yet. I can't help but notice that Nargle's AC's up. It'd be a real shame if someone went, Hey, have a shield of faith on Moradin. Ooh! Yeah. So, Lady, you picked the wrong so family to mess what, with. that would be 24? 24. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you messed with the wrong clan. Alright. <laughs> uh, and then, at the end of Angus's turn, she raises her hand and fires another caustic bolt at him. Seriously, oh. how many of those damn things do you have, lady? Empty more to come. Oh, no. <laughs> Makes sense. <coughs> the only spell she has. And she hits. Bugger. Okay, <laughs> uh, you take... Uh, uh, and just... Roll down, sorry, I've got all the monsters all on one tab, so I yeah. have to keep What's her name? Between. Lady uh, Resmir. Resmir. R-E-Z-M-I-R. Are you looking up her hit points? <laughs> I'm looking her up to look late. I'm not looking up her hit points. I just... She seems very interesting as, like, a... Um, yeah, gameplay yeah. standpoint. Yeah. So, um... You take 16 points of acid damage. Oh, damn it. Okay, Bartleby, you're up. Uh, sorry, Nargul, you're up. Mm. Mess her up. Do you not. Like, you get, man, you Wait, got, like, what do you have? Like, you four get four attacks. Four attack. now? Yes. Yep. Just roll, roll for days. Do not hurt my brother. That is a with my thing. That is a eighteen. That's a hit. Roll for damage. Hmm. I would say if you're smart, you just roll like four d twenties at once, and then just determine your hits after that. Yeah. Alright, no. can I, can I, no, oh yeah, next attack I'll do, okay, so that's yeah, four, like, yeah. eight, 3D20 after that. yeah, right, so, four plus eight, Lady Resmir doesn't turn up on Google, two plus two, uh, that's because she is in the module, uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, and that's, that's 24 damage, 24 that's damage, talking yes, about. Uh, like a boss leader. That's a good hit. Uh, Remy, go to 5e.tools <clears throat> and you can find her on there. Thank you. And then look in, yeah. Um, Alright, Nargul, you swing with your great axe, striking her. <clears throat> you hear something crack as she hisses at you. Roll your next attack. Uh, that's uh, three three attacks left. Or... Yeah. Okay. Roll, roll three d20s. And then add all your bits and bobs after. Okay, so that's... Ooh. I believe that's three hits. Yeah, that's three hits all up. Solid. All right. To do all your damage all at once. Okay, let's... Oh, Jesus Christ. Um... Crap, how am I going to do this all together? Shit. 
Uh, you gotta roll these. Yeah, I was basically gonna say, I mean, you can roll them separately if you really want, but you also have to whip it. Uh, yeah, Three okay. attacks, obviously, have to add your strength. I roll. Attack damage plus your hated enemy thing. I roll. Uh, so three attacks, that's two D8s, so how many D8s would that be? I'll want to do that separately, wouldn't you? 68? Uh, 68. Uh, uh, 68. 68. Yeah, 68. So that's 33. Uh, okay. Oh, strength okay. times 3. <clears throat> you hated enemy times 3. Okay, uh, so let's just see. 33 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 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 uh, 65 well slamming your axe smash 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 he falls to the ground and then kneeling there she looks at you anger in her face she raises her sword and then, so on the blade of her sword, a mouth opens, and it simply says, This is why I hate axe. Wait, what? The sword's talking? Yes. Oh. Wait. She um, looks at the sword. She looks at the sword, and she smiles, and then she climbs to her feet. And as a reaction at the end of your turn, she shouts, Eat my steel! Go eat my steel! I brought you into this world, and I'll take you out of it! Interesting. I will never accept you as my mother! I'm swings curious about the sword, though. She swings her great sword at you, and... The... 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 Oof. And that's a miss. Um, that's a miss. <laughs> that's a miss. No, can't be a twenty-four. She bitch. slams. She slams down her sword, and it hits the shield of faith bubble, and it won't go any further. And she says, "Die, die, die!" And then you hear the sword shout, "I'm trying, mistress. I can't <laughs> get it. Right. I can't do it. <laughs> don't have the power. I'm a sword, not a milkman." <laughs> okay, it's Reaver's turn. Reaver, Take him, Drake, raises, yeah. Reaver, Reaver raises her bow at the other at the guard Drake next to Angus and fires. And she hits. Wow, even in the dark she manages to get a sword shot. Good for her. Well done. Eight plus. And get her sneak attack damage. Damage level 8, 4d6. Sneaky, eight. sneaky. Deals 17 damage to the Drake. Oof. One of her arrows hits it right in the eye. Dead. It shivers once and dies. Excellent. The end of her turn. Resmir swings her greatsword at Nargle once again. Oh my god. Alright, hold on. We have Musadorf in the chat now. My dear Dave, hey, maybe the know. dragon lady is the missing link to the Pangean moose. Oh, my <laughs> God. Hey, Thank you, Wait, how did I get here? Mm. <laughs> Anyways, with the bloody moose. <laughs> and she hits. Wow, she hit. She still managed to somehow hit Nargle. Good for her. Oh, damn. Hey, hey look at the health, Nargle. Nine points of slashing damage, and... 74 minus 9. 10 points of necrotic damage, so 19 points altogether. I am on 55. Yep, huh. alright. Milo, you're up. I am not within range, am I? No, unfortunately. You'd have to move up a bit. Uh, much, you could probably move next to me and then you'd be within range of you. Yes, okay. then you'd be is that a bonus range. action or is that. No, that's an actual uh, action. That's a move action, yeah. Uh, then attack. just hit with the elongated whip instead of the um chain. Oh, no, the well, now I'm within stops. ten feet. Now I'm within ten feet, aren't I? Yep. No you yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I'll attack with both weapons, but I only get one attack turn. 
Alright, go ahead, roll to hit. Uh, that is a... Why is my Metal Whip rolling better than my Elongated Whip today? <laughs> That's a 17 for Metal Whip and a 14 for my Elongated Whip. Okay, Metal Whip hits, Elongated Whip does not. Damn it. I mean, still good, but... No, D6. Uh, that's nine damage. You lash out one of her whips as she goes to take another swing towards Nargle, and you make her withdraw her sword. She looks at you and hisses, and then raises her hand and throws a caustic bolt in your direction. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And she hits. Bugger. You take. Oh. Okay, take... Oh. Take 15 points of acid damage, Milo. That's okay. Hey, it is now Dan Cooper's turn. That's the problem with whips, even if they're magic, they still don't do an overly large amount of damage. That's okay, <laughs> that's why you have the whip in there. Yes! Yep. Dan Tim. Cooper steps forward, and he says, Ah! I can't tell either of you apart! Time to fix that! And he casts Polymorph on Resmia. Huh. Oh. Okay. Hey, he's going to make a wisdom save. She fails! Oh. Resmia poofs out of existence. And in. Hang on, let me check. Okay. Oh! No, she's going to use her legendary resistance and shoot up that save. Yeah. So the polymorph fizzles out of existence, leaving right. her with more legendary saves. And at the end of Dan Cooper's turn, she swings, she hurls a caustic bolt across the room at him. And she hits. He takes. 17 points of damage. He buckles over in grievous pain. Okay. It is Bartleby's turn. Bartleby looks around. He says, Mmm, this seems like a familial dispute to me. And he casts resilient sphere on himself. Because <laughs> he has to heal. At the end of his turn, Resmir swings her greatsword towards Nargle. He reaches up and deflects it with his great sword. Hey. Hey. Okay, Angus, you're up. Alright, well that sword seems to be quite the chat in a box. Let's see if we can't get it away for a moment. And I cast heat metal at it. Alright. That's good. Uh, 2d8, that's... 13... Oh, ten. she takes 13 fire damage then she on if, uh... And then she's gonna make a constitution save. The, the sword begins to heat, and then the sword itself begins to shout, Ouch! Hot, 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 hot! And... Manages to... She manages to maintain hold of the sword. She turns oh, toward good. it. She Which turns means she has disadvantage on her next attack rolls and yes. ability checks. Yes, nice. she does. She turns towards it, and she says, Don't you be cowarding out on me now, sword! And then at the end of your turn, he swings the sword as if to demonstrate a point right at Nargle. Advantage. Disadvantage. I like Nargle that. easily deflects it with his great axe. Okay. Nargle, you're up. I've had enough of this! <laughs> I have had enough. Roll 40, oh. 20. Yep. Yeah, they all. Hit. Ooh, that's. Uh, oh, that's a hit. Hit. That's. Uh, oh, yes, that, they all hit. Yep, they yep, all hit. All four hit. Damn. Roll damage for all four. Damn, damn, how much damn. do you do to attack? Uh, like, how much do you get? My my uh, mithril great axe is plus twelve. Yeah. And her armor class is only thirteen. And I missed with a fourteen. Oh, wait, no. 
Oh, wait, no, I was looking at the wrong thing. Her armor class is 14, so... Okay. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Okay, so... Oop. Damn it. Roll... Oop. Roll... Uh, how many D8s? Uh, eight D8. Eight. Eight D8. Yep. D8. Alright, so that's 43, and I've already added up all my plus and bonuses and whatnot. So that is... Uh, let's see... Uh, 43 plus... 32 plus... 24... That is 99 damage! Jesus! Step forward! Christ. You step forward! And you raise your axe, getting ready to deliver one tiny <coughs> blow. What is the last thing you say to your mother? Mm. I will never recognize you as my mother. These dwarves have been her family more than you could ever be! Hey! Yeah! And, and then you swing your sword. She opens her mouth to say something and then raises her great sword to block, but she's just a fraction of a second too slow. You knock her great sword out of the way and then bring your axe down onto her neck. You push it down and further down and then slice off her head as her head comes off she screams ah! the gates of jesus as we make Jesus. our way to heaven uh, all right. into flame yep uh sorry one second uh, i just got a follow up uh non racial bear unders underscore eggs thank you so much for the follow all the time to jump on board yep body her body begins to immolate before you and burn as her screams from her dissevered head fill the air. And then, ah! As she screams, her body melts, turning into north with a pile of ash. Uh, uh, wait, oh. so she turned to ash? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that, okay, well, because uh, I was going to um, skin her. No, I was going to skin her scales. What should be? But at this no, this point, I just drop. The only rem the only remnants of the only remnants of her are a pile of ash and lying next to it her great sword. At, at this yeah. point, I just drop drop my axe, drop to all fours, and just start crying. Mm -hmm. I come up behind and just put my hand on his shoulder and goes, "I'm sorry that had to happen, boy. You did well." I'm gonna guess that when she died, the darkness disappeared. Yes, it did. Yeah. How could a mother do that? I don't know, lad. I just don't know. After all these years of trying to find a place where I belong, this is what happened! How are you trying to find a place where you already have one? Oh, I just turned to Angus and, um... From the size comparison, I almost accidentally bowl him out over giving him a hug. Just in golf. <laughs> yeah, just in golf, you. <laughs> I you did the hammer full name crowd then. <sighs> you mind if I have a look at that sword for a moment? Yes, now that the role plays over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've had our, we've had our you... nice touching family moment. Yep. You grab, you walk over to the pile of ash and you pick up the sword. As soon as you pick up the sword, the mouth opens and it begins shouting, Filthy hands off me, you goody two shoes! Now, that's not something you want to say to a man who can melt you down to scrap, is it? Ah, humbug! I'd like to see you try! Ooh, you know, ooh. technically, I was gonna say, technically, heat metal is still active, so. <laughs> Alright, um, how, how, how would, would this affect him, um, like, um, fully extending nail and just rubbing it up and down the blade. Ooh. Yeah, just take that nail and just scratch it like a goddamn, like, nail on a chalkboard. You've seen what I can do to my own kind. Ouch! I was gonna say, you might as well claim ownership of this thing, considering, you know, you're the one who defeated its owner. He well, says, well, if I have to be used for the purposes of shutter, good. 
then at least I can take solace in the fact that the person who knows what they're bloody doing. Do you have a name, sword? He says, I do indeed. Has has a roan. Has a roan? I'm going to bring it up in the chat. Please do, because yeah. this thing's intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cause uh, okay. Um, oh. as soon as she said talking sword, I just met, uh, pictured Roger Rabbit. Oh. I'm, doing the <laughs> I'm going to bring it up. I'm gonna take a screenshot of it. And... Uh, okay, I like that. One. Okay, leave it up. Oh, it's legendary. Oh my god. What? How do you? No. Oh, oh god. Damn it. Just, oh, oh, oh. Just. Uh, god damn. I'm gonna put it in the chat so you can see what it does. I mean, you've got it up on the screen right now. Yeah. Oh, do I? Yes. Yeah, yeah you do. Oh. <laughs> God, I realize you can see that. Yes. Wow. Speech. Yes. Oh, oh what's nethering? Yes. Uh, hey, it is a sentient, <clears throat> neutral, evil greatsword. It's capable of speech in common and netherese. It's the language of the ancient netheral human empire oh even if you aren't attuned to the sword you gain a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls with it if you are not attuned to it you deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage when you hit with it if you are attuned to it its bonus increases to plus two and its hit deals an extra 2d6 oh. necrotic damage Jesus. it has word. four charges to cast spells while you are holding it in your hand you may use it to cast detect magic detect evil and good or detect thoughts. Interesting. While you are attuned to it, any creature you hit with it can't regain hit points for one minute. Oh! They can make that a I DC like. 15 constitution saving throw at the end of each of their turns, ending this effect early. It's a heavy weapon, meaning that it has disadvantage if anyone other than a medium character attempts to use it, and it is two handed. Yeah. So wow! Well. God, I mean, I'm just gonna drop it in it's... 5e rule, so it's there. Damn! Yeah. You just got yourself a goddamn legendary sword, because, you know, you needed that. Uh, I mean, it's technically, I suppose it's technically your birthright, so... Hmm. Yes, it's technically his birthright. The brother yeah. is still interesting. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, Dale, you cheeky dick waffler, brother. Yes. Where he is, we do not know. Okay. Now that combat is over, you may safely examine Resmia's chamber. <sighs> All right, you then. I'm just gonna write the name of this great sword down. Uh, yep. I guess we'd get on. Reaver to do an investigation. Yep. Uh, I'll get Reaver to do an investigation ship. <clears throat> oh. Can I, um, will the drakes give me anything if I skin them or harvest something off them? Uh, their scales don't have the same potency nah. as dragon scales, but you could very possibly, uh, make something out of them. Yeah, a nice pair of boots or something. Like an entire, like an entire drake's body would like be equivalent to one dragon scale. Yeah. No. Actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll write What colour are they, then? Oh, yeah, they are black. Black, 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 black. So that would be yeah. acid? Yeah, acid. Yes. Into acid. Uh, I will take one, then. I'll take right. the other uh, one. Make, uh, both of you make dex checks, please. Make, uh, actually, both of you make survival checks, please. Wow. Effily skinny. That was a natural oh. 20. Oh, I, I rolled a 19. <laughs> I rolled a natural 20, no. so mine's 25. <laughs> yep, okay, so you can each add one drake skin as you carefully harvest the drake skin from the drakes without damaging them. One black drake skin. Reaver has a quick look around the room and she reports that the only thing of note is the large wooden chest on Resmir's desk oh, that seems to be locked. I will uh, make. There you go, two, two yes. bosses down. I yep. actually think we so can now you, that now, you can, now you can take on Blue Bothers if you want. Um, mm. Okay, so. I uh, need more health for that. Yeah. Reaver, 
Reaver points out that the only thing of use in the room appears to be yeah. Resmir's chest, and it appears to be locked. Crack her open. All right. Reaver steps forwards, and as she inserts her lockpick, there's a click and a hissing sound from the chest. Reaver must make a deck save. Oh, ah, no. shit. Ah, shit. Oh, <laughs> no. as, an, as a poison trap, which was extremely well hidden, activates and sprays Wyvern poison at her. Fuck. You should she uh... takes... Is she poisoned? She takes... Takes 25 points of poison damage. God damn it. Oof. She grunts in pain and then waits for the pain to wear off, waits for the poison to drip away. In the meantime, Dan Cooper stands forward and attempts to pick the lock. We'll do it again. Uh, we just got a question in the uh, Twitch chat by um, Pascal Samako. I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. How much does a greatsword weigh according to D&D? Let's see. Uh, yeah, about that. It, there's no exact value, but it would be about that. So there Although you go. this one is particularly heavy. Yeah, because it's a legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a. It's a. It takes a strong. Hmm. It takes much strong to carry. Much strong. What you are? You and your twenty-four bloody AC. Although you're gonna be real tired one. Well. Uh, at uh, how much? How long does your um shield stuff last for M2? Uh, that is an excellent question. I'm just go and grab them. Because I know the haste would be over. Uh, ten minutes. All right, so. And considering we're probably gonna have to take a small rest. So yeah, so back down to twenty. Go any further, you'll be back down to you by then. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh. All right, uh, Dan Cooper steps forward, and as Reaver winces in pain, he unlocks the chest. Inside the chest is a veritable hoard of treasure. Already? The thing is, uh, inside the chest, you see mixture of gems and jewelry including a set of matched peridot stones on a gold chain a silver torque with dragon's heads six moonstones a set of loose pearls and other precious gems and old coins altogether the hoard is worth about three thousand gp all right so we've picked up right. uh, no, five thousand so far yeah, 5,300. Yep. I'm keeping score, don't worry. Yep, so that's Lion that go, get... goes into Bartleby's bag of holding. Yep. Lying at the very bottom of the chest, underneath all the tr is a small ceramic mask painted oh. black. Oh. Oh. So I wanted to check on what that is. Yeah, uh, I'd cast to de detect magic. Uh, it is indeed magical. Bartleby says... Ooh, now that's interesting. You've been saying that a lot lately. <laughs> he says, indeed. He said, he says, not every day you get to go aboard a flying cloud castle. The architecture and the magic and all these wondrous items. It's, well, what can I say? It's very interesting. <laughs> as long as you're having one... a good time. He says, oh, oh, the academic mind. It's a marvel. <laughs> This is at this adventure. You do realize we just killed his mother. Could we maybe have like five minutes to just decompress this? He says, Oh, hush. Now go get carry. Just flew into a blind rage. All right. I, I, at this point, um, I just want to throw one of my javelins just just not at him, but enough to like get trapped on his hood that, and it flies and get, he gets stuck on a wall. He says, Ouch. Okay. Point taken. Points taken. Note it's a for... rough day. Maybe we talk about this later, eh? Note for note for future reference. The dragon kin do indeed exhibit strong familial bonds. Okay, so what was the he mask? Examined, he examined the mask, and it 
is. I will bring it up for you. Please do. This is a Ooh. black dragon mask. Oh. Damage is all from Draconic Mastery Dragon. Oh my god! Okay. Hmm. Swarm's mask. Oh shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This thing? Yep. This horned mask please? of glossy ebony has horns and a skull like mean. The mask reshapes to fit a wearer who is attuned to it. While you are wearing the mask and attuned to it, you have the following properties. You have damage resistance to acid. If you already are resistant to acid, you gain immunity to oh. acid. While you are wearing no armor, you can add your charisma bonus to your armor class. If you have a breath weapon that requires a rest to recharge, it regains a recharge of six, which means you just have to wait six rounds. You gain dark vision if you don't already have it. You can speak and understand draconic, have advantage on any charisma checks against black dragons. You have one leg once per day legendary resistance where if you fail a saving throw, you can choose to succeed instead, and you can breathe underwater. My god. <laughs> My god. I fight you on that one. I kind of need something for water. But you can, he can now give you his gloves of climbing and swimming. I could. You could. To put in IV rules. How I, I, I want to say that we can't give Nagel another legendary, but that is kind of built for him. Mm. I know. I, it's, <laughs> it's kind of bullshit. It, we have to think, though, this encounter was made for him. Um, I understand. And this is an end game. Like, this is the it's end game dungeon, dungeon for this a different. Is supposed to be the end of the dungeon. Yes, that's I just. Fucking Two crazy! items in five minutes, both perfect for Nargle. Yes. Ah. Oh my so, god! What would you like to do with this item? Well, I would have to get rid of my dread helm for it. Yes, you would, unfortunately. Uh, which means you'll have to go back to the old standby of Kujo growling at people. Well, I, I still have pretty good intimidation anyway. <laughs> I mean, yes, if you, you don't do. need that, uh, that that dread helm, I might have a look at it if you don't mind. Uh, if you have, oh, so I'm just I'm just having a, um another squiz at it. If you have a breath weapon that requires rest, he yeah, gains it... a recharge of six. So I could use my acid breath uh, six times in a fight. Uh, no, no, it just means no. you can use it and then you wait five turn, uh, six turns. Oh, six you turns. Use okay. it again. You don't have to rest. Oh. Mm. So basically, you could use your breath attack. Every encounter, <coughs> yep. until yes. we have to rest. Uh, yeah, instead of once a day. Oh my god. So what are we doing? I mean, if you don't need, I mean, I'll take the uh, the the boots of swim, the stuff you have of swimming off your hands, and if you don't need the bread help, we take that unless somebody else wants the uh, bonus to intimidation. Uh, I wouldn't mind that because I have proficiency and intimidation that's Actually, yeah, really the only idea. reason why all right well if you want to take the helmet off him i'll take the uh is it gloves of climbing and swimming uh, or... i think it's clubs oh, no. it no 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 it is yes it is all right well i'll take the, the gloves and you can give <sighs> milo the dread helm and then you can that means i have to get yeah, more gloves okay. For Milo, while you were wearing the, uh, while you were wearing the dread, not boots of, <sighs> while you were wearing the dread helm, uh, you gain advantage on intimidation checks, and, uh, Angus, while you were wearing the gloves of swimming and climbing, climbing and swimming don't cost you extra movement and you gain a plus five bonus to athletics checks made to either climb or swim all right so let's do that then i'll get rid of the dread helm and the gloves i just have to buy yes. myself some more gloves that's a plus five to athletic uh, or or mm. uh climbing or swimming there we go finally they came up. what's behind this mask another dragon 
And that legendary and the resistance. Dread Helm has no AC. Just making no, sure. No, just yep. gives exactly. you advantage on intimidation <clears throat> checks because it makes your eyes glow. Yep, cool. All right. All right. Uh, that appears to be everything in Resmir's room. <sighs> Do we want to take a short know, rest? You don't know why she was uh, gathering all this treasure. Indeed, you don't know why they keep. You saw that they were collecting treasure and wheeling it to the <sighs> castle, but you still don't know why they were gathering all this treasure. Yeah, I suppose that'll be a question for later. Now, yes, you can are we have taking short rest. Us now, or what are we doing? I will let you know that if you do take on Blagothus and somehow beat him, then the stone giants and the ogres that remain in the employ of the castle <clears throat> may shift their allegiance to you as the new commanders of the castle. Will they be summoned to the fight? I know that's metagaming, but... They may be. They may be, goddammit. Any who survive... Any who survive... Uh, Except for the stone golems. The stone golems have no way of reaching the upper courtyard because they're just too big. If I was to release the wyverns, would they be causing too much of a distraction for people to, for reinforcements to arrive? Perhaps. Perhaps. Alright, so now I have immunity to acid. Um... Well, we're taking a short west anyway, aren't we? Yep. Yep, uh, I'm going to use my last four hit points, four hit dice. Same gear. So now I can see uh, a dish um, 60 feet. Right, no, yep, you no, gain dark vision with the radiance, 60 feet, or an additional vision. 60 feet. Yeah, oh. and you you've, you've already, yeah. You already your, cloak, your cloak already gives him, oh, but yeah, light and dark vision aren't the same thing. So yeah, it's just dark vision. It means if you take your cloak off, you could still have dark vision. And yeah. I gain blind sight. What's blind sight do? It means that when you are blind, uh, you suffer no disadvantage. Oh, so so if uh, someone casts a sun spell that would normally blind me because of the cloak, I don't get blinded. Yep, you don't get blinded. You have blind sight. Oh, if nice. you are blinded, you can attack normally. Yeah. There you go. And, and I can see why this would be made for me because you've written in my brother and he would be a black dragon. I have advantage on charisma checks with black dragons. Yes. I was saying it was built for you because of the unarmored thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my uh, charisma modifier is only three plus three. That's yeah. still plus three to your armor class. Yeah, yeah, only if he takes his armor off, though. Yeah. And, Isn't uh, he only wearing the cloak? No, I'm wearing armor. No, oh, armor. you're wearing, you're wearing armor. armor. Oh, yep. yeah, he's right. Wearing armor. I'm wearing. Sorry, I thought armor. you were unarmored for some reason. No, no. That's oh, unarmored okay. defense for. Barbarians is usually good, but by this mm. level, it's better to wear armor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay. the champion's armor is the one that I can cast mortal, mortal enemy onto someone. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. want yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. That makes sense. Now I completely forgot that you wore armor. We may as well go for another. We may as well go for another hour and see if we can get Blagotha. Okay. Uh, if that's so happening. Leave, um, how's everyone looking for help? I am fifty-five. I'm just going to use my last three hit die. Uh, to... Yeah, I used my last hit die, and I'm up to 43 out of 55. That's my D12. Uh, do you want me to throw? Do you want me to go one more round of heal? Five. I'll take it if you're giving it. Um, but I, I will be right back because I'm gonna feed yep. Missy. And as as remember the additional. Remember the additional one D6 that you get from Dan Cooper's Ooh. Song of Red. Oh, yeah. oh, I'll roll yeah. that before I leave. Oh. Uh, plus five. Which was a six. So <laughs> 49. So I'm on 77 currently. Okay, I will be back. So do we want one more Randy healing from me? Or... Uh, yeah, sure. Alrighty then, I'm gonna use my last stored, uh, per healing. No one try to get killed while we're fighting Blagothus. Uh, that's 13 plus 6, 19 more. Nice, that is me at full health. Good for you. Okay, so I'm gonna try right... <laughs> Nagel's mum's sword. <laughs> so what? No. What is the actual damage of this? Ah, uh, it's a great sword. So two d eight. Okay. But then you get like an extra d six of necrotic until you become attuned to it, which then becomes two d six. D eight yes. plus one d six necrotic until you attune to it. D six. 
I'll just put mm. neck. Yep. Uh, talking sword. I mean, good lord, you're just yep. being extra nice to me t yeah, but today, are you, Dale? <laughs> I am, but there is still more. There is still more stuff to find, mainly yep. in the chamber. I was gonna say, I believe, I believe you're done now for gifts, because goddamn, yeah. you weren't that low. Why like, you throw you? like I know it's meta gamey, but now that you've killed the vampire and Resmia, all the other rooms on the lower uh, don't really have much of note in them except random enemies. Uh, so what and what exactly does random. detect thoughts do? Well, except well, I guess. Uh, you cast it on someone and you can read what they're thinking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while you tune this weapon, any creature you hit can't regen hit points for one minute. That is useful. Oof. Uh, that would have been useful against the vampire, but you know, that's a thing. Not that it really matters, we can't burn his ass alive anyway. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to say that in my D&D file. <laughs> <laughs> This has been a pretty successful attack so far. I mean, it has been that ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, that's just brutal. You just kept dealing more and more damage as the fight went on. Uh, yeah. I, I was an angry boy. What's good reason? I, I will, I will let you win on a secret. She did run out of HP um, at the end of round two, Ooh. but I wanted Mark to be the one to finish her off. Oh yeah, yep. no, I, I gave it more. Yeah. Uh, if uh. I decided to go all sad and roleplay and whatnot, but my original one was look over her body. Mother. Mother, I crave violence. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, your original, the, the one you went with was fun. Though. Yeah. That was fun. As far as roleplay goes, that was, that was magical. Yeah. Okay, so what's your plan now? Uh, uh, what's the attack bonus on it, by the way? Sorry. Uh, the attack bonus is the same as your, same as your giant slayer axe. Okay. Um, so, wait, is that before or after it becomes attuned to it? Uh, it... after it becomes attuned. Just yeah, so remember it's plus one and... currently, and it goes up to yeah, plus two plus once. Two when he's attuned. Alright, so yeah, it will be useless to use at the moment, but after I'm attuned it will be good. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, right, and you're about, right, to, right, you're about to fight a giant, so you may as well use the giant slayer axe. Yeah, I wasn't going to plan, plan on using it until it got attuned anyway. Yeah. So, I might as well just doing? write 2d6 right. necrotic damage. Uh, you yep. Take, I was going to say, you can take plan? an extra, uh, extra... Yeah, for uh, another heal. Oh, oh sorry, you cut out, out then. Yeah. I've got the extra d6 as well on top of that. So, it's 19 plus... Okay, you can take 22 health more. Oh, well, considering I only needed 6, but thank you. Well, it's more for the, the whole party, which is great, because I'm back up to 19. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ah, back in the game. Yep. Um, right. I want to know where all this magic is stored. Uh, where oh, the items are stored, sorry. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get to that once we take care of our last yes. little... Uh... Yeah, I know. Yeah, so do we want to try and free the Wyverns, or are we going to just grab to beat this? I... Uh, the problem is, if I succeed, it's a very quick thing. If I fail, it's a fight with at least... Six oh. or seven enemies. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, that there being the problem. And any additional enemies that may be in any. Oh yeah. Room. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So we might as well deal with the, la the last giant. And hopefully, yeah. uh, people will be either dead or injured from the um, twenty cobalt. Hmm. Yep. Mm. Oh, you could you could have maybe Kitty and you could have maybe Reaver and Dan Cooper assist you in in the stealth check. Hmm. Um. Well, Kitty's probably a good idea because I'd help her give you a massive advantage. He, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I'll try it. Right. And if this goes wrong, guys, I am incredibly sorry. That's okay. I already blinded everyone to. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I can release all the wyverns, that's just going to be fucking epic. All right. Let's be honest. <laughs> the, 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 the scroll of sunburst was always going to be here at the top. You make your way through the castle courtyard and out. Make your way through the castle entrance hall and then out Perfect. into the courtyard outside. Downtown, walking past. Reaver, <laughs> Reaver, Reaver, Reaver grabs you by the hand and begins to lure, begins to lead you around the outside wall. 
would like you to make a strength check with advantage, please. Well, I already rolled a 19 okay. plus 3, okay. so that was it. good. Yes. <laughs> yep. I rolled that right as you said that, so I decided I'll use that. <laughs> it leads you over to the stone building, which you, which uh, Bluebeard recorded was a wyvern stable of sorts. Go to push open the wooden doors, but you find that they are locked. No. Reaver steps forward <laughs> and leans over and begins to pick the padlock free. She succeeds. There's a click. And then you push the doors quietly open and enter. Inside are two wyverns. A copper wyvern. Oh. And a second red wyvern. Right, they immediately well. begin straining against their bonds uh, as you enter, trying their hardest to get to you. Really underfed. Oh. oh I, do I still have rations or not? Yeah, we would still have uh, rations. Yeah. yeah. Um. If I use rations and make an animal handling check, does that do anything? Uh, if you're using... Uh, Okay, if you use rations, if you're going to offer them food and an animal handling, you yep. may do it with advantage. Hey! Okay. I will do that for both of them, because I still have a fair few rations, because Angus keeps us fed. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so you want the... And so does uh, Reba. Uh, Hi. Do you, want, do you want the red one, or the copper one? Uh, we'll go the copper one. Uh, is the cop... Whichever one's closest, I guess, because... Right, copper one. Yes. All right, go ahead, roll your animal handling check with advantage as you offer him a piece of your rations. Uh, 21. Okay. The wyvern immediately calms down. You hand him your ration and he eats it in one gulp and then begins to purr. Meanwhile, Reaver steps forward and as you keep the wyvern tame, <coughs> you begin to unlock his bindings. Yes. As you click and then the chains that drape the wyvern are pulled away. Get the other one, let them loose. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's let them the plan. Guys. We'll go back upstairs. Yeah, yeah that's the plan. Because I want to stop as yeah, much yeah, reinforcements, stop reinforcements as possible. Yeah, cause as much havoc downstairs when we go upstairs and deal with the boss man. Yep. And with advantage again, because uh, I'm offering you, food. Uh, yep. Uh, animal check with advantage again, yes. Please do. That one is a 24. Ooh. You step towards <laughs> the red wyvern as he strains to get to you, and you hold out the ration and then stroke his neck, and he settles down and takes a seat on the floor like an eager dog. Oh, <laughs> I want forward. another pet! <laughs> <laughs> unless, we're, unless you're sharing with the rest of us, no, you've got one. This is a quick <sighs> click. And Reaver pulls away the chains, binding this wyvern. I mean, I have spell slots. Can I make two animal uh, friendships? <laughs> no, you can only have one at a time. Damn both it. of the wyverns, both of the wyverns are standing to attention. Yep. Now, you have a choice. You can either command them to go immediately, or perhaps you might like to tell Bluebeard uh, to tell them to break free on his signal. Ooh, that's a good he, idea. Because remember, can, he, if you do it now, you might... Yeah, yeah I want to... If you yeah. do it now, it might be hard to get back across the yeah. courtyard. I, um... Instruct Bluebeard. Um, when I give the signal, big body... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. Tell these ones to... break free and cause a massive distraction. If Bluebeard. they do, there'll be plenty more rations. Bluebeard says, I... When we hear the bell toll, we loose the cannons! Hey, uh, Dale. Yep. Uh, we've been doing the Giant Slayer Axe completely wrong. Have we? What? On, uh, on Giants, it's uh, an extra 2d6 damage. Oh, okay, well... Have we only been we doing 1d6? Mm -hmm. uh, when you hit a Giant, this Giant takes an extra 2d6 of the weapon type and must succeed on DC... DC 5th... 15 strength, or 4 prone. 
Okay, well, we'll keep that in mind. We have been doing the full prone, we just weren't applying the correct damage. Yes, no, oh, I, I okay. just thought, thought I'd uh, have a look at Oops, it. Yep. I would like Milo to please make a stealth check with advantage again as Reaver leads him back across the courtyard. Is six, so that is a 16. Fantastic. Oh, thank make God. Make back across the courtyard into the hen entrance hall and you gather in Resmir's room once again. You look up at the big chute in the roof that leads up to the kobold barracks and you realise that it's not going to be incredibly easy to climb back up there. Shit. At least not for you. Bartleby <laughs> looks up and says, oh, this is easy. And then he snaps his fingers and begins to levitate up the chute. I wild shape into a spider and just climb up the wall. Yep. So the rest of so Remy and Angus are gonna have to make climbing. Ooh, checks. Actually, actually, can I help them oh. out? Can I help them out? Um, pull up uh, the rope yeah. and tie my, my, my the end of my rope onto it to extend it. Ah, okay. You may make uh, climbing checks with advantage if you, if he does oh, that. Oh, good. I can use that plus five automatically. Yeah, right with that. <laughs> yes. Uh oh, I got a net twenty. So nice. that's fine. Yep. And when and I that... get up the top, I retrieve my rope. Yep. Of course. Well, we... you wait, you wait yeah, you after, yeah, after Angus comes up. Hey yeah. guys, guess what? <laughs> snippy, snippy. <laughs> no, I'm cutting the rope as soon as I get up. Yeah. <laughs> Angus takes his time, but he does eventually uh, get to the top. <gasps> and as soon as he reaches the top and you re-emerge in the kobold barracks, which are suspiciously empty, <laughs> Remy leans over. Just very much and... red in the face from hauling by, like, you know, 200 <laughs> pounds plus the, you know, like, have me have a hundred pounds of gear with me just up the last like <laughs> dwarves are not meant for rope climbing right. I mean, leans forward and unties the rope and pulls it up and his own rope from Nargles and hands Nargle his rope very well okay so you are ready do you wish to take on Gothus straight away or would you like to check out his Check memorial out his again and see if we could figure out what the uh, mechanism was. Oh my god, yeah, let's do that. Uh, I guess if we can find out about his wife, we might be able to talk him down. But that being said, my racial trait is that I just want to kill him. And he did kill dying. his son. He did kill his yeah, son. We're not, we're not really he did kill his son. Get backstory on this one. We just want to go. But we, yeah, him. we just want to go fuck him up. But we, we might can, get, we can we might get have all the time in the world after we... But we might yeah. get something to help us in the fight, though. <laughs> I mean, we already have weapons that are fantastic against giants. Like, <laughs> we've got weapons causing havoc downstairs to remove any reinforcements. You sent a literal army of kobolds <laughs> to cause havoc beforehand, so he might be at least scratched up. I, I think we've got as much of a foothold as we need. Alright, we can do it after then. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Alright. You make your way to Blagothus' tower, and then you enter. I'm gonna bring up another map. I've got a map for the inside of the tower. Ooh. I'm, I'm guessing this place is big enough for multiple painted. enemies. <laughs> I'm guessing this is just going to be painted red because all the kobolds <laughs> have died. Yeah. Send like, check, not, please. As, as you approach the tower, fair, well, I wouldn't have been thrilled if this is a plan, but then again, I wasn't involved in it, so, you know. <laughs> as you approach the tower, you notice. Uh, a handful of kobolds, kobolds, broken, dead bodies lying out the front, <laughs> uh, joined by a dead ogre. I'm just huh. going to remove a couple of the mooks from the. Oh, they did good. Yeah, they hey. died the way they lived, screaming and flailing. <laughs> <laughs> Following the trail of blood to the door, you brace yourselves. And enter. Okay. I... Three, two down, one to go. Okay. The walls, the walls of this room are sculpted with icy murals depicting cloud giants riding birds. An enormous 
An enormous bed with a headboard of ice sculpted to resemble clouds is on the second floor dominating the room. Bare furs are heaped upon the bed and two large wooden chests rest at the bed's feet. A blue-skinned giant sits across from you in the entrance in a large throne sculpted out of ice or crystal, while two ogres sit nearby combing his snowy white hair. The giant's hulking the morning star leans against the side of the throne within arm's reach. This, it appears, is Vagothus. As you enter, he looks <coughs> up bored look on his face and he says hmm I presume you're the ones who uh, inspired that little rebellion amongst the kobolds yeah, I believe this is your moment to speak Mr. Uh... <clears throat> Mr. Nigel mm -hmm. oh, sorry I got a mouthful of ham and hams <laughs> ah. yeah no I had some before mm. peanut <laughs> yes, that's an that... interesting thing to say to the giant. What? That's an interesting oh. thing to say to the giant. <laughs> 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 Sorry, this one got in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still sort of like um, sad and blunt with rage. Is like, you made me kill my mother. Wow, he shrugs. you're really good at giving blame to people. He shrugs and he says, Well, you may not realize it, but you did me a favor. I was thinking of ways I might get rid of Resmia and accumulate the treasure for my own purposes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like, the ground, ground ahead of me is just sort of melting away with the amount of <laughs> acids that's just coming from my mouth. <laughs> He's just, he's just an angry boy. <laughs> he, he looks up at you, he says, he says, you have slain Resmir, and you have got rid of, you have gotten rid of that damnable vampire. Although you were causing trouble, and your intrusion into my castle was more than a bit rude, perhaps. I am honorable enough, and you have done me a favor today, so I will entertain any questions you have. Give me one reason why I shouldn't kill you. I got a good question. Nice simple one. Yeah, you know, for someone who acts honorably, why exactly would you kill your own son? His eyes grow wide and he says, Preposterous! I would never kill Ignor! Really? Because that's not what he told us. I'm wearing his armor. <laughs> he says, oh, I yeah, step to the front guy. and clear view, clear view, you see, the and just pat my chest and go, huh? I was gonna say, perks of being a, 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 a having a ties with beings on the other side is occasionally they do talk back. He smashes his hand on the armrest of his throne and he says, So you've been to the temple of the Old Father, then? How do you think we go here? He says, fine. He says, I'll own up to it. I wish things had turned out differently, but when the old father stated that I would not be worthy of greatness and that a shadow lay before me, I fell into a fit of rage. My own son saw fit to try and defy me, and it came to blows. He bows his head, he says, I regret that my son had to perish, but... I reject the old father, and I reject his claims that I shall never be worthy of greatness, never worthy of ascending upon the ascending up the hierarchy of giants. And so I set out to forge my own path. Oh, if yeah, you regret your son's death so much, why isn't his name in the, in the memorial? With whatever her name was, I forgot what it was. S. I was gonna, I was gonna ask her, do you think she'd feel about that one? Yeah, maybe ask yeah, that one. And how exactly would your dear departed wife feel about your actions? I can't imagine she'd be too thrilled with your choices. He says, do not mention her. 
He says, it is for her and for my son that I do this. The old father deigned that my family was not worth any, anything no. or fortune No, or he claimed standing. that you weren't worthy. You took it out on your family. Didn't the old father say that he saw his the sun rising? Hmm. Yes, Isn't he that... saw that the sun. He saw that the sun uh, may have a, may achieve glory, but he mm. himself had a dark path ahead of him. Yeah, hence, hence, hence where I said, you know, yeah, you were told you weren't worthy. You took it out on your family. And as we've learned today, we are very good at handling family business. Mm. He simply bristles in anger and he reaches for his morning star and stands up. Bartleby raises a hand and says, uh, Forgive me, forgive me, uh, Cloud Giant, sir. Uh, before we come to blows, uh, uh, just one more question, if you wouldn't mind. He looks, stares at Bartleby red in the face <laughs> and his eyes narrow. And he says, if, if you wanted to achieve glory among the giants, why did you throw your lot in with a cult of Tiamat? That's what I don't understand. That's an excellent question. Looks, Legothus looks to the side and he thinks for a moment, his hand fingering the morning star's shaft, and he says, He says, Yes, I know. He says, If. He says, <laughs> He <Children>. says, <laughs> He says, Hmm. <sighs> by this point, by this point, the ordning had been broken up. The blue dragon Imrith had already uh, disposed of the Storm King and thrown giant kind into chaos. <clears throat> if the old father would not allow me to ascend to glory that way, I thought, well, well, I would do it my own way. And so I sought out Imrith and her cult, and I pledged allegiance to them. She placed the half-breed Resmir in my employ. Resmir, the dragon speaker, the the one who the one who was Imrith's second in command, and we were assigned the task to gather as much treasure as possible, as much treasure as we could get our hands on, so that when Imrith would perform the ritual to summon Tiamat, we would offer all of the treasure as an off increasing the chances of Tiamat breaking through from the nine hells. Hey, so you're a coward and a thief. That's it, I've had enough of this. Angus, heat up his weapon. He smashes the, he smashes the throne once again. He says, I am not a traitor. My plan is to rise through the ranks of this cult. Enough so that one day I would be in a position of power. Enough to get rid of Resmir and assume her command over these Cultists and these ogres. If you so really I... think, hmm, I, that's all grand, but if you really think that a dragon cult is going to put a giant in any form of actual power, you are about as dumb as you are thick. Hmm? He says, You are wrong. They fear loyalty. They, f they fear more than they are loyal. I would make them fear and do my bidding. And then with this cloud castle and the resources of the entire cult, Against me, I planned to march against Imrith, becoming the hero of giant kind, ascending to the top of the ordning through my own. In well, bravo. Your basic plan is to stab each and every person in the back, and you can't figure out why the old father wouldn't pick you for greatness. You deserve You're a damn coward. And you won't be making it past today. That you, des much I can promise you. you deserve one thing, and that's my axe in your face. I'd like to cast heat weapon on his morning um, stuff. Before, just just before that, um, are these ogres part of the cult, or are they? I think like... they're just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just when Dale said these. Uh, cult followers. I just want to know if the ogres are part of the cult. Like, were they under the dragon's command or not? That's a good question. Mr. Dale? We seem to have lost him. Our yes. accusations have stunned him into silence. <laughs>
I actually think he stopped talking halfway through his speech. Ah, there we go, sorry. Oh, there we go. there we go. Okay, uh, so the ogres are not, they don't actually belong to the cult. They're just oh, under okay. the command of the cult because Resmir was paying them. Um, meaning uh, that the giant. That now that Resmir is dead. Meaning that the giant's plan was essentially to get rid of Resmir and the vampire and use all of the accumulated treasure to pay the yeah. army of mercenaries. So, why is that? plan involves stabbing everyone he works with in the back, so he is a damn coward. Can and, I? Uh, I would very yes. much like you to hit and you, you, can... and you, you still have the feeling in the back of your head that even with all the treasure of the cult and the cloud yeah. castle and all of the mercenaries before him, he probably would still not have stood a match for Imri. Yep. Can I, um, try and do an intimidation check on the ogres and tell, and basically say, yeah, boss is dead. We've just killed two of the three bosses on this island, and we're still coming for more. Do yeah, you really, you really want, want to fight? Want us? to die for this coward? Do you want I some? I will yeah. allow you. To, I will allow you to do that in as your first action in combat. Do you want? Okay. Some, oh, okay. Cool. Do you want some u uber you know? intimidation? Have have Kujo that looks like a direwolf. <laughs> <laughs> he begins to swing around his morning star. I will allow you to heed it in your turn, Angus. Hey, now roll for or an... my actual turn? The actual turn. Uh, oh. Roll for him, please. That Talk. is... You didn't, really get the... you didn't really get the drop on him because you talked to him and he's kind yeah. of set up talk and launched into combat. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Well, I guess Whoa. 16. 16. I okay, we're, we're going to have to re-roll M2 because I got 16 as well. Right, I got 15. You got 15. Uh, that is a 17. Uh, 13 15. this time. So you go before Eight. me. But I go before my low. Yep. Alright. So uh, Alright, so... Arrange this. Okay, uh, so my low can go at 15. <clears> so <throat> Did I have Angus to attune 15? the helmet? Uh, no. No, no. Fire no, no attunement. <laughs> no advantage. I might have had to have banged it around a little bit while we were... <laughs> <laughs> to make it fit. At the oh, moment, sure. it's hanging over my shoulders. <laughs> oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> No, can, can yeah. we just, can we just, it's like a child wearing a full nice helmet. That's adorable. Let's leave I, it like that. I, I look like a head with legs. <laughs> that is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Which would somehow make me even more intimidating. Yeah, I'm just really. a giant glowing head with legs and whips falling out from the neck. Damn. <laughs> okay, so Reva is question. up first. Makes sense. With her first action, she makes... Yep, Reaver is up first with her first action. She makes an acrobatics check. Oh yeah. She just passes, climbs up onto the, climbs up up on top of the staircase. Clever girl. And then fires her bow at Blagothus. Clever girl. <laughs> and does she hit Blagothus? No, she misses. <laughs> unfortunately. How much did she roll? Uh, she rolled uh, eight. Eight. She rolled uh. 13, so she didn't make it in time, unfortunately. Fair enough. Uh, there's, there's, Next. Uh, rid of Redsmere, she's no longer needed. <laughs> she did. Okay. Uh, next up. Wait, does, uh, let me check if uh, Blagothus gets an action. Uh, he does. He gets an action. Box. And his first action is to fire a... a are to cast Shatter on the group. Oh, god damn it. Mm. Oh, that's lightning damage. I can do that. It is. I thought, I thought it was electric, great. sorry. Lightning, electric, All right. lightning, same thing. Okay. I would like uh, everyone to make constitution saves, please. <laughs> the only that, did bit. someone say constitution? <laughs> that, I rolled a 19, so that's 23. That, that I is, rolled a 7. <laughs> that is a 19 for me, too. <laughs> At least I still only take half damage. Fail for both Dan, Dan. Fail for both Dan and, Mar and Bartleby, so only Argyll and Angus pass. Okay. Technically, mm -hmm. technically, so did Milo the, the half damage. Yeah. Yep. Okay, my. Uh, okay, so Bartleby, Dan, Bartleby, and Dan Cooper each take twenty-five. 
Angus, Milo, uh, Angus, Milo, and Tanagul, you take 13 points of damage. Enough. Four, minus right. Next up is Dan Cooper. Huh. Dan Cooper. Uh, let's see. What will Dan Cooper do? Dan Cooper steps back so he's away, as far away as possible from the rest of you. And then he fires magic missiles at Lagothus. Pew, pew, pew. Excellent day. <laughs> and he is firing. Oh, he is firing five magic missiles. Oof. Just sitting here and doing my best Michael Bay impression. Just. <laughs> he has 15 points of damage as the missiles surge forth from his hand, smashing into Blagothus. Blagothus gets a reaction. Bugger. He casts. Fly on himself. Oh dear God! Oh, what now? And oh, that's to levitate up insane. into the middle of the room. Well. Oh. That's All right. Thing. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, Nagul, you're up. All right. For my two two attacks, for the first one, I'm going to expend all four slots and cast a uh, wall of thorns around him. Don't you have to be in a train for that thing? I can still do it because I have the All ring. Right. Oh yeah, you do have to. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have to be in trend oh, form to cast well, spells. Oh, I did not know that. Faster. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kick his ass. Well, so yeah, that's Ooh. for my first action. Ah, uh, the it's ten feet high. Ah, uh, he can just fly over it. Keep in mind. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's right. circles. It has that's, twenty that's, foot that's... diameter and up to twenty feet high. I was gonna yeah, say, you... that's if he passes, right? Okay, okay, um... Yeah. You can make it taller, but it won't be as big. Couldn't you just use Entangle to, like... Yeah, I was about to say, I'll just, I'll really just, uh, use one spell, one charge and do Entangle. Alright. E. L. Right. No. Uh. Okay. Vines lash out of the floor and try to grab him. You... He's going to roll a strength check. Ah, oh, shit. shit. Oh! He fails. Oh! He fails and is held within the vines. Okay, Markle. Okay, okay, um... I'm gonna let the Sprutus have a turn. What? Right, Sprutus stuff. Hmm. I feel like there was a lot of other things we could have possibly done at this point, but sure. Spooders for hey, the sacrifice. Spooders can do can do damage, but most most importantly, they can cast webbings. Yes. Well, that's a good plan. And that's your turn. Okay. As an action, Lagothus casts lightning bolt. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 but he's entangled. How can he do that? Uh he just can't move. I can't find it. No. Oh. Oh, fine, let's get this over with. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Can I yep. do something? Can I do that thing we talked about? Is that not going to work yet? You don't have the shield yet, though. <laughs> I have a shield. <laughs> I have a shield. <laughs> Yippee whippy. You want it to. Um, yeah, that? make your deck saves. This one doesn't do what you want it to. Make deck saves, please. I hate you. <laughs> 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 Man, that's a two. I really hate you. This is okay. fuck off. That's an eleven. Oh yeah. No, ten. Yeah. Uh, that is a seventeen. Oh, you don't. You don't have to do one, Nargle. Is... You're fine. Oh, okay. Milo and Milo and I Angus take half both take twenty-seven there. points of damage. Ooh. I take half because of lightning resistance. All right. So oh, half yeah. of twenty-seven Angus is twenty-four. Is is fourteen. 14. Oh, 14, not 24. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. All right. Uh, let's see whose oh, turn 30, is next. It is, it is the enemy's turn. Oh, of course, uh, it's the enemy's turn cool. before me. First, the, <sighs> first, the spiders, all three of them Webbing. move up. Web them, web them good. Web them, my children. I hate it. Okay. I hate it so much. First spider moves to the north and it casts webbing all over the ground underneath Lagothus. The second one rushes up to the side, while the 
third one also rushes up to the side of Logothus, and they both flank him. He's entangled in the vines and the webbing. They then go both bite at him. <laughs> and, Ooh. uh, let me check. I think they both hit. Yes, they both hit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at the spiders mm -hmm. actually contributing. It's nine points of damage, and he must now do a con save. Ooh. Which, he, which he passes. Oh, damn. Okay. It's now Blagothus's turn. Press he is entangled. And webbed. He's going to make, <laughs> yep. He's going to make a strength save to try and break free of the entanglement. And what is it? A de which he, oh, shit. He passes. Yeah. And then he levitates above the webbing, escaping from it. So, oh yeah, that's right, because he was floating and he would have fallen into the web. Yes. So, he how, 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 how... The middle of the room. I think, levit is levitation concentration, like, can we knock him out of levitation? Yeah, it's concentration. He okay, levitates so basically just towards... hit him really hard and he'll, he'll drop it. He levitates towards Nargle and then attacks with his Morning Star. And let me see. Need to hit on that Morning Star. He hits! Oof. You take. It's 16 points of damage. He then. Swings at you again with the same morning star. And this time you block it with your axe. Okay. The two ogres rush forward. One of them towards one of them towards Dan Cooper. Will the spider get an attack of opportunity yeah. as it goes past? Yes, it does, so I'm gonna roll for it. Yay. So yeah. how how and big it, how big is the web uh, the webbing on the ground by the way? I'll mark it. I'll mark it. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah. this area is okay. Webbed. Yep. Um, the ogre swings around his chain whip and lashes it at Dan Cooper. He hits Dan Cooper. Dan Cooper takes. And Cooper takes 15 points of damage, and he must make a constitution save, which he fails. Oof. And Cooper is choked unconscious from the ogre's chain. God damn it! <laughs> the second ogre rushes forwards, and he holds out his chain in front of him, and charges at Angus. Oh great, yeah, go for the- <laughs> go for the dwarf. However, mm. Angus, you knock the chain out of the way with your hammer and step to the side. Okay, it is Angus's turn. Well, I'm not particularly thrilled at the uh, piece of shit throwing lightning bolts around, so I'm just gonna lob my hammer straight at his head. Alright. He's up. in range. Uh, roll with disadvantage, please, because he's got a significant height advantage. Be right back, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> I think disadvantage of just throwing it at him, shouldn't that hit? Yeah, you're throwing it, but you're still going to try and hit him. You're still going to aim at him. He's up in the, he's high up in the air. He's like 30 feet off the ground. So disadvantage, you said? Yeah, you've got to roll with disadvantage. Oh, well, yes. I wish you hadn't have said disadvantage, because one of those rolls was a 20, the other was a 16. That's still a hit. Roll for I damage. Know, but... Okay, and obviously I'm doing the two-handed throw against the giant with the flaming yep. hammer, so that's 5d8. Yep. 5d8. Plus strength. Uh, 8, 15, 22, 24, 27. I did 29 points of damage. 29 points of damage. Ooh, good hit. You fling your hammer and into the air. It sails action, up 30 feet. Uh, yep. As I say, bonus, as a bonus action, I'll uh, cast another Shield of Faith on. Yeah. <laughs> I might go on myself this time. All right, I'm back. Uh, yep. All right. Um, you throw your hammer thirty feet up in the air. It sails up and then collides with Bogotus's stomach, and then 
falls back down and you catch it, and then you cast Shield of Faith on yourself. At the end of your turn, Glagotha swings his Morning Star down at Nargul. Yep. And he hits. Yep. Oh. Nargul, you take... Take 17 points of damage. Okay, uh... Milo, you are... Milo, you are up. Okay, I'm going to yell at the ogres. Yeah, please do. I'm going to yell at the ogres, try to intimidate them. Um... Yep. We have just right. come here from killing say? two you of say? your three leaders. From two, killing two of your three leaders. We just mm. survived your first fucking attack. And now we're here to slaughter this fucking coward. And you really want to fight us instead of him. Roll intimidate with advantage, please. That was a 23. Ooh. Yeah. Both, uh, one of the ogres, the one standing over Dan Cooper, looks at you, and he ponders for a moment, he scratches his head, and he says, Me side winning too, and then he turns towards Blagotha. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Next turn, if you like, you can try to convince the other one. Okay, well, with the same shout. Oh, no, it's not yep. my turn anymore, because that wasn't an yep. attack. And yeah. it's the end of your turn. As an action... <clears throat> Lagotha swings his morning star at Angus. I'm guessing he's gonna oh. be 21 because he's strong as fuck. Actually, could I just use my bonus bonus action to cast Slayer's Prey on Lagothus? Just so that I can cast it now. Oh yes, sure. <clears throat> ah, he hits! Fuck it. Angus, you take 24 points of damage. Yeah. It's Bartleby's turn. Here we go. Shit. Bartleby is going to try his hardest here. Bartleby looks up, looks at Blagothus in the sky, and you see him counting, and he says, Hmm, hmm, oh, I know, fireball! <laughs> he sends a fireball, he sends a fireball hurling into the air far above any of you. Okay, boy, Gothus has to make a deck save. He gets it with advantage, though, because he's in the air. Uh, Wait, didn't he get knocked back to the ground with the hammer? No, he's still in the air. Okay. Uh, but he fails his deck save. Hey. And so, Bartleby hits him with the fireball. I'll be right back. He takes 39 Jesus. points oh. of fire damage from the fireball. Bartleby rushes his hands together and he says, Ah, I never fails to work. <laughs> <laughs> at the end yeah. of at the end of Bartleby's turn, Lagothus uses a reaction and casts Shatter. Oh. Oh. Fuck. I would like uh, Nargle, Angus, and to make dex say I would like yes. Well, that Milo is Angus. That is a nineteen. <laughs> Roll one for Bartleby. That is a seventeen. A oh wait, no, it's saving throw. Sorry. So that's. Yep. Uh that's a... Shit, that's uh. Fuck, 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 fuck. Nineteen twenty. Nice. That's a fail for. That's a fail for from Bartleby, unfortunately. How are we doing? A deck save. Yep, doing oh, a deck save. He's doing lightning again, isn't he? Shatter. He's, he's um, spamming shatter. shatter at you as a reaction. Oh. oh, well, it's okay. I passed then. Okay. Uh, Milo, Angus, and Nargle, you each take 10. Bartleby take takes 20. Shatter's electric, isn't it? Yes. So I take 5 damage because I've got the yes. resistance to it. I'm down to 28. Okay. I'm loving this armor. It's, it's Reaver's turn. Fires her bow at the at the goblet. And she hits. That's one, two, eight plus four D six plus five. 
deals 15 points of damage as her arrow flies into Philogothus's chest. She then makes a stealth check to try and remain hidden, but she passes. Okay. At the end of her turn, Philogothus raises his hands and he casts... Uh, let's see. He casts shield on himself giving him a plus five bonus to ac oh what until the start until the start of his next turn jesus fuck oh, me okay uh nargul you're up oh yeah it's 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 rage time this is not going entirely yep, well. rage <sighs> And, um, I'm, I forgot I had this, I'm going to have my last potion of greater healing. Yep, go ahead and I only have, it. like, one more, I only have, like, one more prairie healing. Stop. And how, ha ha um, what's, how many dice for greater healing? Let's see, item, potion, greater healing. Uh, 4d4 plus 4 hit points. 4d4, where's my d- Ah, let's go. Ugh, one, two, god damn it, two, that's eight all up, ugh, I want it to up to the, and I still have one, one more thing, don't I? Yep. Okay, 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 um, yep, I'm gonna, um, yep, axie, 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 axie! Are you in rage? He's in rage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, he's in the air. You won't be able to use your axe. You'll have to. Oh down shit! Down. Uh, uh, mm. What if you mm. take the you know what? I'm dragon bone right. marrow? Because when you're, ra cause when oh. you're range, uh, raging, you have a really high hit to attack. Anyway, you might be able to afford to lose some for extra attack when we finally bring him down. Yes. Although, uh, I don't think I could do it. I'm only at 38 hit, hit point. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna acid, um, use my acid breath. Because that, right. that will oh. hit him. Yeah, you do have a range. Yep. Okay. He's gonna make a con check. He failed his check. Go ahead and so roll that's the damage. 3d6. Yep. Uh, oh, that's 9 plus. Calculator come at me. Nine plus six. That is fifteen. Ooh, good hit. Plus he now has lingering to acid. As he hovers yeah. above you, you hiss and open your mouth. Setting out a glob of acid in his direction. Taste my mother, you fuck! <laughs> okay, um, you you need okay. acid to throw your javelin if you like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Ooh, ooh, wait, 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 all we, all we could, all I could just fuck him up even more, and make him poisoned as well, because I have poison spray. Ooh, yes you do. Yeah, go for it. Alright. Hell, poison <sighs> 266, I've got to look it up Spend myself. hand, he must succeed on a constitution save, let's see. Fail your poison hand. He failed, go ahead. Roll your one d twelve. Oh, d twelve. Uh, okay, where's my d twelve? I had you a second oh, ago. Wait, wait. Actually, it's two d twelve because you are at fifth oh. level. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I was using the d twelve out earlier. Where did I put it? Oh, right there. Ugh, two. And that's a twelve, so that's sixteen. Sixteen. Ooh, good hit. Okay. A really good concentration. Mm. Yeah. You then extend your hand and a cloud of fog, green smog extends for <coughs> here with lots of cough in the air. Okay. So now At he's poisoned and acid damage. <laughs> yep. Good. At the end of your turn, he looks down upon you and fires a lightning bolt <gasps> at all of uh, that will hit all four of you. Oh shit. So I would like I'd like you all to do all do dex saves, please. Uh, that is a what's my dex? Dex, 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 dex. I hate, I hate lightning bolts. I got fourteen. My dice, my dice just. Uh, mine is fifteen. 
Yep, that's a pass from Bartleby. Okay. I hate lightning bolt. My dice automatically just make me better lightning bolts. Okay, Angus and Bartleby take 26. Nargul and down. down. Remy take Oof. 13. And Bartleby is also down. So that's one death save that Bartleby Fuck. has failed. Okay, make your first death save, Angus. I uh, pass. Alright. Okay. Well, damn, I was going to use a healing spell on my next turn, but now I'm just not like you're on Oh, and you're before me as well. Yeah. Fuck. Yep. And you can't even use heat metal anymore. Nope. Yep, it's Dan Cooper's turn. Dan Cooper is unconscious, but he's going to make a con save to try and wake up. What up? Mm -hmm. Let's see. You hear Dan Cooper groan and move his body a little bit, but. At first, he doesn't appear to stir, but then he climbs slowly to his feet. And he casts. And Cooper rushes forward. Mm. Rushes up to Angus. And he casts Cure Wounds. Oh, cool. Yay! Sucks. And then, at the end of Dan Cooper's, yep, at the end of Dan Cooper's turn, Lothopper swings at him with a morning star. Just at me getting up, doing. I never thought I'd be getting saved by the likes of you, but let's take what I can get. Here we go. He hits Dan. He hits Dan Cooper. Dan Cooper yeah. takes. Oh, wow. And Cooper takes 27 oh. points of damage. Oh. And Dan is down. God damn. Oh. Fails his first death save. Oof. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Actually, wow. actually, damn near killed him, got himself killed to save me. Okay. When, when Angus. you play Dan, he's actually a decent person. <laughs> Angus, you're up. Well. Might as well return the favor. I'm going to use my uh, last save spell in my ring to cast a fourth level prayer of healing. So, uh, hopefully, this is a good one because otherwise, that's. Uh, yeah, I'm yep. Throw it here. And, ooh, that is. Uh, so, this says. Uh, eight, 16, 18, 18, 18, 18. 31 HP. Oh. oh! That nearly brings me back to full health. Nearly. Yeah, I'm on like 37, but as long as we can keep wailing on this piece of shit. I'm on 69. And, Dan uh, and Hart will be at fine. I was going to say, I can quickly throw a, uh, I believe I've only got one left. Heat metal. No, I've got two. I'm going to quickly throw a, uh, another shield of faith on uh, Nargle. Ooh. Yep. Good choice. Since he seems to be taking most of the brunt of this. Okay, as at the end of your turn, as an action, Blagothus uses his last third level spell slot oh. and fires a lightning bolt. Oh, oh. oh. fuck sake, I hate Blagothus. That is an 18. I passed! That oh, my God. God. It's a pass oh, from Dan and a fail from Barnaby. I've got 11. Oh, fuck. Okay, 13. Bartleby, Bartleby takes 26. Everyone else takes 13. God okay. damn. All right. Okay, that dice is going in jail. <laughs> Back to my metal dice. It's yeah. now the enemy's turn. Lagothus' shield wears off. He goes back down to his normal AC. Yeah, the one yeah. ogre that you have convinced to join your side gnashes his chain whip and rushes towards his former master. Yes. Please, and we, just, we need something. We need anything we can get. Bring him point. down to the ground. Mm. Yeah, so that's a good plan. Mm. Well, Gothus knocks the chain out of the way oh. of his morning star. Well, crap. The I second, don't like that morning star. The second owner, the second ogre, gnashes his chain and charges in your direction, making an attack Did against Milo point? and Angus. Oh. Oh, why did I go down to 13? I want 33. Uh, see if you get hit first. Ooh. He hits both of you. He hits both Milo and Angus. Well, you got 
Uh, actually, let me see. What is he? Actually, no. He hits just Milo. Outstanding. Oh, Sorry, Milo. Milo, you take 17 points of damage, and you must make a dex save. Uh, that's... Then you're me, because I stuck at dex saves. I'm back down to 14 health oh, after two hits. Jesus. Uh, and that was a dex save, did you say? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we should have seen that this was going to be the more difficult of the fights. That's a 15. That's a pass, isn't it? Oh, you thank god. You pass, you are not not oh. prone. Okay, Milo. Milo, you are what up. What about the spiders? Oh yeah, the spiders. Oh, yes, the spiders as well. <laughs> I got the spiders. Well, they can't get to Blood Gothus, so all <coughs> they can do is gang up on this other remaining ogre. I, I oh, mean, my, 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 um, my plan was kind of sound um, to web him, but unfortunately I no, didn't know he could yeah, fly. I, I admit, yeah, I admit it would have been a good plan if he hadn't it flown. Flight wasn't a thing. Yeah, I was not expecting a giant to fly. It's like a, that being said, he's a cloud giant. It's like watching Dark Side go. The second oh. spot. Spider webs the area underneath Blood Gothus. Oh, yeah, and just other... bring him down would be fine, but no, he seems to just not. not the have will of a god to mm -hmm. keep his concentration. Both of the spiders, yeah, yes, both of the spiders fail to touch, fail to pierce the ogre's skin. Okay, Milo, you are up. So, okay, well, the um, the other ogre. <laughs> basically, using the same shout as before, and just adding. Mm. Your friend was smart, why can't you be? I yep. now try to intimidate. Alright, roll your intimidation with advantage, please. That was an 18. Ooh, yes. The ogre brushes both of the spiders off his body, and then he looks at Blagothus, and he says, Eh, if friend go, I go! And he begins oh, swinging God. his chain in Blagothus' direction. He throws oh. the spiders off. <laughs> I was gonna say, how is everyone looking for health right now? Uh, 16... And 14! What, wait, no. 56 now. I, I think at some point we may have to consider bringing in backup. Because none of us are in good shape right now. And I don't <clears> know <throat> how much health... Yes. They can. I use a bonus action to talk to my wyvern and summon him? Yes. Ah, yes, summoning my wyvern is a bonus action. Please it is. do. Like um, <laughs> do I have to mount him? Or can he be a... Uh, you don't have to mount him, you can I mean, just have him at theory combat. Good idea, cause... Oh, actually... You're not... Yeah, I mount him. Alright. No, does that cost an action though to mount him after I've called him? Nope, you can summon him and mount him. Yeah, I think I might need to do that. I might yeah. need to yeah, try and be the... Yeah, heavy hitter because it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. You hear Bluebeard say... Yeah. I'm on me way! And then mm. a few seconds later, he swoops in through one of the holes at the top of the tower. Knock him down to the ground. Hooray, now we, both, now we have an aerial attack with our own. He says, now let's take yeah. down this land, lover. Now, let's hope I can survive. I've still got to go through every bonus action that he has after someone attacks. But... And then the enemy yes. turn. I mean, technically you do, you can have, um... Bluebeard takes some hits as well. At the end of your at the end of your turn, he swings his morning star at Bartleby on Nargul's shoulder. Oh shit! And he hits. Oof. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> and as Bartleby gets flung off Nargul's shoulder and smashes into the stone wall behind him, he is down. Oh shit! He makes makes fails his first death save. Shit. Okay. It is Bartleby's turn now. So he makes well, his I, first I thought I was before Bartleby. No, Bartleby's at the end of the round. Yeah, oh, Bartleby's oh, yeah, after the end of the round. Yep. 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 He goes back round. That's right, yep, never mind. Bartleby passes, passes his first death save. One and one. Okay. It's Reaver's Reaver. turn. That's right. Come she on, Reaver. Fires, Hit him again. She fires her bow at Blagothus. Please do some serious damage, because this is getting ridiculous. How, how do we knock him out of flight? You think at some point he would have at least tried to roll a yeah. and she save? And she misses, unfortunately. Uh. At the end of her turn, he swings at Dan Cooper with his morning star. You do realize you have ogres that are betraying you. Surely you can take your 
<laughs> he hits Dan Cooper. Oh shit. 20 points of damage and Dan Cooper is down. Fuck. He passes his first death save. Okay. Nargul, it's your turn. Ugh, what do we do to um break his concentration? Good lord. Alright, I'm going to tell you what breaks concentration. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point we need help. Because <laughs> he's poisoned yeah. and acid damage, good lord. <laughs> yeah, when I said, yeah like, he's in constant pain. Up, when I said yes. get, you know, get back up, I didn't, well, I kind of half meant a dragon, I didn't mean the wyvern. <laughs> Yes, uh, that, I, will, uh, I will now get him to take some acid damage. And poison. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, he hasn't actually taken any so yeah. far from what we've I'm seen. Roll, I'm going to roll the other two that he was owed. Got them. So he takes seven damage. He's now going to do a con check to maintain his uh, concentration. So it is poison. Oh, shit. Passes. And of course he passes, right? Okay, Nargul, you're up. You have to... If you deal damage, you can break his concentration. That's what we've been oh, doing. Good. I know, but, but the first round, he had guaranteed concentration. Yeah. Alright, well, I still have a couple of attacks, so I can't hit him with my axe yet, so I throw a javelin at him. Alright, roll to hit. Uh, uh, that is a 22. That's a hit. Roll for damage. Okay, what's my javelin at? Uh, 1d6 plus 1. bastard have? It's five, six plus six. That's twelve. Oh, and wow. and no, fourteen because I'm raging. Fourteen. Okay, let's make his concentration check. Which he passes, but you can go again. <laughs> yeah, I can go another two times. Fuck you, you yep. son of a bitch. Hurl <laughs> another javelin. Yep. Roll your roll to hit. Please. That's an eighteen. Ooh, that's a hit. Roll for damage. Oh, God, that sucks. That's... One plus one plus... So that's eight. Eight. But still, still might be enough to break his concentration. Oh, thank Christ. Yes! You broke his concentration. Oh. He swears oh, yeah. in giant and then falls down onto the webbing below. Drawing an attack of opportunity from both of the ogres. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them hits him, the other does not. Uh, take what we can get. Yeah, I'll take it. 12 points of damage, and now he has to do a death save or fall prone. Passes. He manages to not fall prone. Come okay, to Nargle. Nargle. Yeah, you can hit him with your, your great axe. Ah, uh, that is a non nat 20. To hit, roll for damage. Okay, where's my d8 score? I go 2d8, that's 2, 8, so 10, and 2d6s, so 11, and 17, uh, 17 plus 6 plus 2, that is 25. And now he has to do a uh, Ooh, saving throw. He does. He falls prone. And he's fine, but he's still taking a lot of damage and looking worse for web. Watches of blood appearing on his cloak. And now he's okay. webbed. And <laughs> yep. At the end of his turn, he casts Shatter. Oh, fuck you. I want you and Angus and Milo to do dex saves, please. Look, no, I thought Shatter was con. Oh, yeah, con. Yes, oh, con. Shatter is con. Uh, con is... Six. Yes, that is six. Oh, uh, that, thank that is nineteen. God. I got an eight, uh, nineteen. Jesus Christ. Nineteen club. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I actually That's passed one. Three of you. Oh. Okay. How much? So how so much? You all take seven points of damage. You all take seven, seven points of damage because you passed. Actually, uh, Milo, you take four points of damage. Oh, thank and God. And Dan Cooper and Bartleby are dead. Oh, oh, dead. What? what oh, they're yeah. dead. Yeah, they yes. were down. Yeah, they were yeah. down. Oh, oh shit. shit. And Bartleby are both dead. Well, now we know where some of the money's <coughs> going. Oh, shit. Fuck. 
Okay. Uh, it is Dan Cooper's turn. He is yeah. dead. It is the enemy's <laughs> turn. Rub it in, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it is Dan Cooper's turn. He's dead. Two ogres swing their chains at Blagothas. Oh, so this is insane. Both of them miss. Fake. <laughs> Fighters rush towards Blagothus. I can see Two, why this three, is an endgame campaign, uh, endgame dungeon. Yes. The three spiders each spit acid at Blagothus. And only one of them hits. Blagothus takes damage and he must make a constitution save. Sorry. He passes. Okay. It's Milo's turn. Am I within oh, twenty? Sorry, I forgot to make. I forgot to make Blagothus's turn. Well, well, Blagothus makes say, Where eight. am I in all of this? Because I'm sure it's gonna be my turn somewhere. Mm. Oh yeah, it's your yeah, turn okay. right after. Let me see. Ah, it's uh, your turn now, Angus. Then I'll then I'll get Blagothus to take his. Good, because I'm in a really bad bloody mood now because we just lost two people at once. So yep. I'm gonna go and throw a fourth level guiding bolt. At All this right. piece of shit, which is a, uh, is it, 76. <laughs> yes. Uh, make a ranged spell attack. Uh, yeah, that's also true. 24. <laughs> Oof. Ooh, that's a hit. All right. Roll Give your... me a second. I gotta calculate all this. Because that's a lot of high number. Holy shit. Well, this is gonna be fun. Uh, that's gonna be... Do I add wisdom to that? Yes, you do. Ah, huh. well in that case, that's 40 points of damage. Oh my god! Ooh. You and see you some of his flesh steer and burn away, just that, and he just shouts. Just like hammer at him, and just this massive, ungodlike, holy thing just flies straight at him. He hunches over, struggling to maintain his footing. And then, <clears throat> at the end of your turn, he swings his morning star at Nargle. Oh. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, we're fucked. Nargle, you take 50 points of damage. He's down. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god, yeah, I'm down. I was at 49. He's yep, alright. Make your first death save. Fuck. Okay, that's a fail, but I'll use my legendary reaction from the mask and make it a pass. Very well. You pass your first death save. Okay. Fucked. It is Blagothus' turn. Fuck. Blagothus looks at the floor beside on the floor beneath him, and he raises his foot as if thinking of crushing him. But then he turns to Angus and swings with his morning star. God damn it. And the you deflect it. Just barely. Jesus Christ. God, I'm not looking forward to the Duke. He then swings his morning star at Angus again. And once <clears throat> again, you just managed to parry it. Milo, <sighs> it is your turn. Am I technically within 20 feet? I'm not sure. I think I am. Because I was in I'm the square behind yes, Angus. You are. Yeah, please, yes, you love are. of God, because he has. He to really fuck this guy because he currently has disadvantage on. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, yeah, if you go to attack him now, whoa, you, Jesus. you throw at him, you have advantage. Mm -hmm. We are down three people. I am nearly, nearly down myself. Yep. And I can't see that we're really putting much of a dent into him at this point, because he just keeps... I'm going to make... I'm going to use my first attack to make Bluebeard use his sting attack, which has a reach of 10 feet. Very um, well. Yep. You may uh, roll the attack roll for that. Yep. Can you get advantage because of uh, Guiding Bolt? Oh, so I do get advantage? Yeah. Yep. That is... Uh, what do I use for that? Uh, oh, that's a... Ah, uh, you use... You use yeah. yeah, melee weapon attack yep. plus 7 to hit, so that's 21. That's a hit, roll your damage. Uh, what is damage? Damage is 2d6. 
And why did I stack all my D6s like that? <clears throat> oh, Archie, what's the matter, buddy? Big That's yoink. eight damage. And now he must save a yep. constitution throw of DC 15. Yes, let's see. He fails! Oh, hell yeah! Yes. 76 oh. damage! Oh, How much? 76. 76. Oh, fuck yes. Please. Please kill this piece of shit. 26 damage? Okay. Bluebeard takes to the air and he says, Anchors away! and plunges his tail <laughs> into Blagothus' chest. Blagothus' skin grows pale. He gasps for breath and then he wrenches the stinger out. He's beginning to bleed from his eyes. Oh, He's on would, death's door. Would Bluebeard. He's still standing. Because um, Bluebeard gets multi attack. Yes, is that one of my think... attack actions or is that both of my attack actions? It's. Uh, it's multi-attack. But multi-attack doesn't apply for... Okay, yeah. Uh, well then, I attack with both my whips instead. Alright, go yep. ahead. Roll um, I use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark. Yep. Uh, no, that was Slayer's Prey. Right, yeah. Now I get 2d6. Please do. Please, please mess this prick up, because you still get advantage, because... So yep, until so... pretty much until... Yeah, my next turn... That's an 18 and a 19. Both of yes. those are hit. Roll for damage. For okay. God's sake, finish him the God, fuck this off. is going to take me ages to try and work this out. <laughs> so my elongated was in my main hand. Yep. yep. Which is a d8. 7 by itself. Plus 4. Plus 1. Plus a d8 of damage. Which is an 8. So that's 8 for... You work it out, I don't care. Because I'm too excited to yep. try and work this out. Um, and now my chain whip is 1d6. Which is a 6. Now I roll 4d6s. 26 so far. And that's my extra bonus. Which was... 14. 26 and 40 is 40. That's everything, I believe. All right. Here's what happens. Riding upon, riding upon Bluebeard, you fly above Blagothus's head, and then you fashion fashion both of your whips into lassoes. And as you go past, you loop both of them around his neck, and then you keep going, <laughs> and you pull. You can hear him choking. Keep pulling, laddie, says Bluebeard. Keep pulling and pulling and pulling. Blagothus reaches one hand to his neck to try and to try and remove them, and then he can't quite make it. His hand drops, and his body falls limp, and with oh. a crack, he falls to the floor. Right. I have exactly one revivify on me, so I'm going to quickly bring Bartleby back. Yep. While you bring Bartleby back, I walk over to Nagu and just tap him on the shoulder. Oh my god. I, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <sighs> Holy shit. What a bitch. Yep. Yeah. I, mean, I burnt my last revivify to bring back Bartleby. I was on 10 health. I was on 17. <laughs> Fuck. It makes sense that you... If, you know, this actually seems really appropriate. <laughs> I was the one that killed the vampire. You got to kill the giant, and Nagel got to kill his mum. This was poetic for everybody, but yep. fuck me! <laughs> wow. now, that combat, now that combat is over, would you like to search the throne room? Yeah, yes. Sure, why the fuck not? Sure. Please let there be diamond dust somewhere. I'll settle for, like, a really good goddamn shield or something. Yeah, anything I, I, I would like to drink two paper. of my potions, thank you. <laughs> I am die. Oh. We have the castle now, alright? Like, we win, there's no more combat. <laughs> uh, no, no, normal potions are just uh, 2D. Actually, no, we get we get a rest now, don't we? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, that's. I know, there's not going to be any more combat. So you, <laughs> you do a quick sweep of the throne oh. room and you head upstairs to Blagothus' to Blagothus's bedroom. Jeez. And you see... A large wooden chest at the foot of his gigantic bed. Reaper leans over and she deftly locks 
and you push open the large chest. Here is what you find inside. You find a large bag containing a handful of pure diamonds. About a thousand GPs worth. Or alternatively, five doses of diamond dust. Can, can, can we just say that we did this within a minute and revive Dan? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can turn up in a vault. I think I had enough room of, enough to use more supplies, it's just I only have a gold slot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. We could... Um... Do you have... We can sell the diamonds and make up the... Uh, 1,000 one GP worth of diamonds, which you don't need at the moment because you have diamond dust. Um, since you're out of combat at the end of the session, I'll let you revive Dan. Yeah. Yay, everyone's hey. broke out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh. god. That was brutal. At least that time he died nobly. And not yeah. Additionally, with the... First the fact that both him and Dan yeah. say yes. that yes. Balby at the Probably same time. You, so. you hear Moradin's voice. You hear Moradin's voice in your ears. And he says, Ah, you know what to do, lad. Repay a good deed, and he grants you one extra spell slot. Oh, damn! <laughs> I'm just sort of sitting there with, like, near with tears in my eyes from the exertion and Mardin granting me a boon to bring him back. <laughs> just, uh... Alright, did we find anything else apart from the diamonds in that chest? Yes, you do. Uh, yes, there are three other things. First of all... A control rod of some sort, covered in giantish runes. And obviously be for the stone golems outside. Actually, it simply states on it, it simply says on it in giant, in dwarven, it reads Fortress Control, and oh. in giant, it reads Esclerotta's Tomb. Oh, what? Ooh. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. And two more things. First being a rape uh, the first one being a rapier. Which uh you identify the rapier and it is a luck blade rapier. Oh god. Oh I think he Danny boy just got himself an upgrade. I yeah. think he earned that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the. Made a plus boy. one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. He also gains a plus one bonus to saving throws. And he can. Not to mention if he rolls a one... shit roll, he can re roll. So basically, he's getting the lucky feet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Which he kind of needs. The, um... third, the third item is a large suit of what appears to be mithril armor oh okay. would you like Hello. to identify this yes yes i would all right you cast identify and this is an armor oh. of menda oh there we go well hello there it is Far larger than you, but as it passes into your hands, you notice it immediately blinks and changes into a dwarven sized Ooh. suit of armor. That's That's medium great. armor, though. That... Ooh. That While is... you're wearing it, your AC will go down, but very soon we will have a way to put your AC back up again. Yes. Um, so I already have resistance to poison damage, so how does this work? Does this... So you are now immune to poison damage. Oh! <laughs> You also yeah. have to spare the dying that you may uh, cast as a bonus. Already, but that's oh. fine. I can actually no, I can just grab a different cantrip. Uh, what's spare oh, the dying? Uh, Instantly stabilizes someone who's down. Yeah. Oh. Basically, if you zero hit points, I stabilize you instead of. Ah, oh, okay, Kia. Yeah, yeah. But so I can actually can... get myself an extra cantrip now. To... Yes, but you can cast it as a bonus action instead of an action. Oh, that's useful. Additionally, the armor holds three <coughs> charges. So when you kill another creature through a spell or ability, you may expend as many charges as you want. Each charge increases the healing by 1d6. The armor regains all spent charges after a long rest. Jeez, imagine a fourth level healing word. 
Yeah. Mm. With using all three charges. Yeah. yeah. That that could like save us from a situation we were just in. <laughs> we were getting terrifically beaten up. Yeah. I will be definitely taking a snapshot of that. So. Um. So and what so, my, what would that put my um AC then? Uh. At the so moment. It's uh, the AC, AC is 16 plus your dex modifier. So, this just puts you at 16. And if you have your shield, 18. Okay, so it drops me down by one then. Yeah. So, with your shield, 18. With without, your, 18? without your shield, 16. So you've got a plus two shield, remember? Huh. Oh dear. Yeah, so with shield, 18. Without shield, 16. And dex, negative dex modifiers don't decrease your AC. Thank God. Oh, good. Uh, I'm not looking forward yeah. to having less AC, but you know, as you said, they're getting caught up soon. I'll, yeah. Uh, well, it's only I'll down by now. one, so... Yeah. Well, technically, it's... Yeah, if I'm using my shield, it's technically down by one. Normally, it just means I'll have to work on one-handed attacks from now on. Mm. Yes. Until you get a certain other shield. Uh, the yippy whippy shield. Yeah. <laughs> Name. Yeah, okay. You you barely you barely resurrected Bartleby before he immediately grabs the control rod and he goes, Oh, I know we can take this to the room of the carvings. Uh you're awfully sprightly for someone who literally just died. How was the uh I was gonna say you'd think you'd be in tears again after finding the book again. <laughs> yes <laughs> he, looks at, he looks at you, his he looks at you, his eyes glimmering. And he says, I was granted a boon. The gods saw me, and they granted me the fortune to gaze upon the contents of age. <laughs> tear rolls down his eyes. Meanwhile, beside him, Van Cooper simply shrugs and says, Hey, we didn't even get to do a warm up. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry about that. Uh, fun facts. Uh... You know, you only get one, one free pass. He says, and they all laugh. He says, and all of my bandmates laughed at me for dying in such a he, he bows his head <laughs> noble manner. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, considering the last two times he's died, one was by my hand, and the second time was saving me. <laughs> yes, it's cosmic. <laughs> and so, with the control rod in hand, you make your way out of the out of oh, oh, yeah. throne. I was going to say, tell the um, two ogres that are with us to tell the rest of the um, thing that we've taken the castle and they now serve us. They both give you a salute and then rush downstairs. Do you do? I'm just sitting there going, oh, thank God, because I'm not in the mood to fight anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, head to Ethelrotter's okay. tower and walk up to where her name is carved into the wall and Bartleby touches it with the control rod. <coughs> instantly, instantly, a powerful surge of magic spills through the room. You are instantly teleported to a room underneath the base of the tower. It's the same dimensions as the room above and almost bare, save for a stone slab in the very center where several runes in Dwarven are carved. Ooh. You walk up and you examine the runes. One says alarm, one says all clear, one says anchor, one says cast off, one says drift. A bunch of them say north, south, east, west. There's more rise, sink, spin, veil, unveil, storm, <clears throat> and calm. Clearly, oh these are the, God. clearly, these are the commands for the Cloud Castle. My the God. only Wait. which can make it rise. If these are in Dwarven, that means only I or Nagel can actually use it properly. Yep. Yes. There is well, but then. one... There is but one... Uh, there is but one rune which you do not understand. It simply reads Widdershins. Yeah. We don't touch that. Don't touch it. Do not touch it. <laughs> we do not touch it until we come back better geared. <laughs> better geared, I, healed wait. up, and prepared. Wait, what do you mean? What is? I don't know what, what it does, but I'm not ready for any surprises. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but, uh, from reading these runes, you un 
understanding upon conferring with Bartleby that this is how you operate the castle. All one needs to do is touch the desired command with the control rod and the castle will carry out the command. You can cause it to fly in any direction. You can cause it to rise, sink, cast off from the ground, anchor to the ground, drift on the wind effectively under its own control, veil it with a thick fog so that no one will be able to see it, unveil it, call us a lightning storm to serve as a defense mechanism, cause the storm to calm, or call an alarm, or end an alarm. The only one that you do not understand is, of course, Winter Shins. Well, we'll look into that later, but for now, I believe we have a village to get back to. Wait, yes. Didn't, people. didn't you say there was, like, uh, there would have been more, uh, more gold in GP? Like, well, we obviously have to find it first. Because I do believe you said there was like about like ten thousand gold. Well. <laughs> yes, you obviously have to. I may have overestimated. Oh. Maybe more <laughs> accurately what you actually found, but you do have some uh, more we gold. Still have the rest of the castle to check um, anyway, so there might be more. As you, as you, as you move to press the uh, press the rod on the exit room to go back where you came, you hear a female voice speak in giant speak in common you all hear it she whispers she whispers finally you have freed me from my husband's servitude yeah. <laughs> um you're very welcome would you be okay what was her name uh es esclarota es esclarota she says yes and it is my immortal spirit that <clears throat> But that powers the magic of this cloud castle. Oh, now we're just participating in slavery. <laughs> she, says, she says, no, no, not at all. My husband is forcing me to commit terrible acts, to use my power Jesus, for evil. This guy was a real shitbag. You have granted me freedom, and for that, I will remain within this cloud castle, empowering it until it is no longer of use to you. Huh. Oh. Well, thank you very much, and we're happy to have been able to help you, I suppose. Huh. Well, this is a new one. We have a castle run by the spirit of the wife of the man we just killed. That's... Yes. Who's well, not she... actually angry at us. Yeah, no, because he was forcing her to use her spirit to serve okay. as a place so what else can we find like obviously we like, search like, the rest period to the search, search the of the castle reveals uh no more treasures however you do have a contingent of ogres eight of them Yay. who serve as crew for the castle in addition to two stone giants and two golems and, stone, <laughs> and and yes, two golems which can be manipulated with the control rod and activated and deactivated at your whim. The giants had served Blagothus out of fear, and now that they are free, they would like to part with you. And so when you when you when you lower the castle back down on the outskirts of Parnast and anchor to the ground, the two stone giants Thank you for freeing them from their servitude and depart. They say that wherever stone giants are, you will have friends. Oh, yes, thank God! Fantastic. Um, um, because we didn't actually use the wyverns to distract. Um, are they still hanging around the? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yes, they are. Can we have a contingent of wyverns just living here? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's in, <laughs> and in fact, as the castle as the castle anchors down onto the ground, the black wyvern that Nargal was riding flops down and shoots in through the back of the stable, joining the copper and red varieties inside. Does, have a does feeling the red that... one that we freed first come back as well? No, he's just oh, gone. He, he gone. Right That's we okay, we still feeling. have three. We have, have three. a feeling we'll though. Take... Technically, it's four, actually. Well, yes. You're just you can... being greedy now. <laughs> you can they're not with mine. 
They're not mine. Right. They're sorry, sorry, let's let's sorry. let's let sorry. Dale finish. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You confer with Bluebeard, who speaks to the Wivens, and then he turns to you, he says, Arr, they throw their lot in with our crew, so long as there be ample grub. Well, they're allowed to go and scavenge as much as they want. Well, obviously. They're, we're not gonna <laughs> chain them up. Yeah, <laughs> just as long as they don't hurt anyone good, then yeah. Oh, yes. range. No, uh, sentient, no, um, intelligent creatures. In no innocence. Innocence. No innocence. <laughs> yes, that one. He, he turns towards the other whip. He turns towards the other creatures, and he says, "I you hear that." The captain says, "Welcome aboard." No, the stable is a pigsty. Get to work. <laughs> start swabbing them. This is great. Oh, I don't know. Are they going to have oh. a better life now? <laughs> I was going to say, "All hail Milo O T Leaf, captain of the Blyven Brigade." <laughs> <laughs> I when was originally you... just gonna ask for a herd of flock of sheep, but this is <laughs> so much a, better. A goddamn horde of wife and instead. <laughs> when you anchor the, gonna... when oh, you sorry. anchor the castle back in Parnass, and walk yeah. out, walk triumphantly out of the Where's gate, that in where, mm. where, uh, assem the, you see the villagers assembling, uh, just as dusk begins to fall in the village square. And as you descend, they cheer. They give a hearty cheer. And then the farming peasant woman steps forward and she bows her head. And she says, Aye, when Lady Resmere fell, the cultists felt it. She says, We took our chance. We grabbed whatever we could find. And we fought back. And we ran them out of our town. <laughs> Ah, that's what I like to hear. He says, and in thanks for your help, we present to you. She gestures her arm, and you see two men come out of the tavern, carrying between them a cart filled with the tavern with the tavern keeper's stash. That was 4K, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, everyone's still good with the plan, plan with um. Uh, giving 2k to the town yes oh, absolutely especially since they seem to have done our work for us yeah i was gonna say was there anything else apart from the the gold mix i know oh obviously there was no just the there. gold and nargles ring yep just gold gemstones and nargles ring fair enough fair enough i just like to check you did they ran the cult out of town but they only did it because you inspired Lady Resmia, her death demoralized all of the cultists who <coughs> fled, un at, who under the as the members revolted towards them fled into the night. Their only hope to find Imrith herself and reunite under her command. The cult itself not dead. As long as Imrith is dead, so does the cult. But you have dealt it a serious blow. Damn you, offer, you separate the gold into 2,000 gold, take half of it and file it away into Bartleby's bag of holding, and leave the rest in the cart. You then bow, say, this is for the town, to cover the damage and the heartache that the cult have done. Build your town and once again be strong, strong enough to fight against those who would... And with this... You all get a cheer as the heroes of Parnas. They hold a great feast for you that night, and you are the guest of honor. And for decades following on from this, the Sungov, the heroes who saved Parnas, who inspired the villagers of Parnas to rise up against the cultists and take charge of their own destiny. Huh. End of today's session. You now have some downtime. Now have some downtime as you have the uh, cloud castle. You have about a week of downtime. Uh, so would you like to spend any of that gold on your uh, guild hall? Uh, so how much? All up. Eight thousand three hundred. Yep. How much would it cost to fully updo the um? Fully upgrade the uh. Gold hall, it will cost two thousand. 
Okay, so that's 6,300 all up. Give me two seconds to just divide that up. That's between the six of us, correct? Yep. Yep. Divide by six equals everyone gets 1,050 gold. Yikes! Nice. Man, I can that's... accept that. Um, and that's right. with the guild hall being fully upgraded. Yes. Yep. Awesome. That's 1,640. You upgrade the guild hall, and here's what you add to it. Upgraded treasury. The guild hall's treasury is fortified and upgraded, granting a plus two bonus when rolling for income. You recruit an additional veteran. Expanded living quarters. Guild hall's living quarters are expanded and a number of new amenities are added. They have a plus one bonus when rolling for income and recruit an additional veteran mage. Fully stocked armory. An armory and equipment workshop added to the guild hall, granting a plus one bonus when rolling for income. You recruit an additional veteran NPC and gain the ability to work the forge in the guild hall. Yes. Ooh. Spellcaster's Ooh. Laboratory, an alchemical laboratory and arcane library are added to the guild hall, granting a plus bonus for income. You recruit an additional two mages. <sighs> and may use the library to conduct research. So, you now have five veterans, five mages, and gain a plus five bonus when rolling for income Ooh. for the guild hall. And you will roll for income at the start of next session. So you said plus five for income? Yep, plus five on the income roll. And you'll get to roll that next session. Fair enough. So is that a separate income from the um No, the that's when we rolled the, the D twenty we then had Okay plus the five, yes. Yep. Yeah. So whenever we roll plus five. Yep. Yep. Oh. And with that the guild hall has been restored to it is over the next week. Restored to its former glory with Angus and Nargle supervising. Nargle himself assisting with the renovations. I know, I feel like Bartleby <laughs> would definitely be overseeing the library. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bartleby is overseeing the library and curating a list of books that he wants there, hand, each of them hand picked for his own purposes. And so, over the course of that week, the Guild Hall is restored and with the Cloud Castle allowing quick travel across the Sword Coast. You are able to get to the Guild Hall and back in a matter of a day, which means the Bartleby Express, well, perhaps it has uh, exhausted its use. So I would like Angus to please make a Smith's Tools check. My, um, I'll pour drink. During, that, during that 24 hours, can I start reading? My book? Yes, you can, yes. Um, that's, a, that's a 20 not nat. 20 not nat, yep. Uh, well, I didn't actually write the book down. You managed to convert the... You managed to convert the Bartleby Express into a mobile bar. <laughs> it can still function as a tank when need be, but the inside is fully decked out and ready to function as a bar. Given that the Cloud Castle provides every knee... Every transportation needs you will ever have hmm. and the yeah, guild hall see this whole nice thing of me um, like putting signs up on the outside and everything mm -hmm. and then just as a final act take out my crossbow which I've had many an argument with and just hang it over the top of the bar <laughs> <laughs> yep and then you hammer out the sign just above the door the broken crossbow <laughs> <laughs> brilliant and you park it in the courtyard of the cloud castle pride of place Right in the center, where you happily serve, where you happily serve drinks to the ogres and other guild members that serve as crew on your cloud castle over the They're coming week. They're paying for this. Huh? They're paying for this, right? Yes, they are. Damn providing re providing refresh. This was good. They all still there? Hello? Uh, uh, so Milo, oh. you seek to, you wish to read the uh, book as your downtime action? Yeah, may as well. Yep, okay, so you gain plus two to charisma. 
and oh. the book then loses its magic and turns into a normal tone. So is that like a permanent? <clears throat> yep, it's permanent nice. charisma boost. So now I have plus two charisma. <laughs> yep, Nargul, uh, Nargul, Dan, and Angus may attune to their newly acquired weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, armor, but yes. Yes. And Bartleby, once the library is complete, buries himself within its halls for the rest of the week. What he is reading, what he is searching, you can only take a guess at, but you have a bad feeling. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm going to add a Bartleby token to the... I'm going to... Wait, I'm going to get to do a arc check. Wrong channel. Sorry, going to do it in general. I'm going to get... A uh, check. He passes, and I will add an additional Bartleby token to his creation. Oh dear. Oh no. He's slightly stronger. Shit. And with that, we are done today. The side quests are finally completed. Huzzah! We, we can return to the Temple of the Old Father and start upon it, continue upon the main quest, which only has a bit left to go. This was an intense goddamn session. Yep. Yes. Mm. And an extra oh. long marathon one since uh Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well yeah. Uh, I'll I'll be Thank back. I'm just gonna end the stream. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for coming Thanks everybody. For stream. Thanks for coming. Alright guys, well there you go. Holy shit. Well and I have a uh, well I had a mother and I have a brother. My god. Well I'm not gonna spend much um lingering on. <coughs> uh, I would like for us to go on a Twitch raid, um, my friend Lady Marmalade, I'm going to put the link in here, she is on Twitch, so, oh yeah, Blue, no, people died, but they got brought back, uh, I want everyone to go to that, that link with the hashtag Sabaton Leam Raid, and, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 7 of Call of Cthulhu. Until then, see you over for raid time. Have a good one, guys.